uh, good morning everyone i dr manish joshi co coordinator of this online program uh, which is ai city rgbb teacher training program on the topic application of finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics using ansys in recent innovations in mechanical engineering being organized at technocrats institute of technology excellence uh, bhopal welcome you all on this fourth day of this program it's a pleasure for me to introduce our uh, first speaker today dr manoj chokse sir who's going to talk to us about finite element model updating but before that let me take the privilege to give you all a brief introduction of uh, dr manoj chokse sir dr manoj chokse sir is presently working as an associate professor in the department of mechanical engineering at sjs its indore he completed his btech in mechanical engineering from mits gwalior in 1998 he completed his mtech in mechanical engineering from manit bhopal in 2001 and then went on to complete his phd in mechanical engineering uh, from iit delhi in 2012 he has more than 20 research papers in well known international and national uh, journals of repute his research areas include rotor dynamics finite element analysis finite element model updating vibration engineering model based fault identification conditioning monitoring etc today he'll be delivering a technical session on finite element model updating Uh, may now very humbly request Dr. Manoj Chokse sir to kindly start his session, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Manish sir, for introducing you, sir. me. Okay. Uh, okay, I start share my screen. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, my screen is visible to you. Uh, yes, sir. It is about. It is about to start. Yes, it is visible now. So, I am uh, audible to you, all participants. Uh, a very good morning to you. A warm good morning to you, all. uh topic of my presentation today is checking accuracy of results of finite element analysis and uh, in this uh, you will also come to know about uh, finite element model updating this topic uh, okay how do you uh, update how do we update finite element models uh, uh based on the experimental data so uh, i'm grateful uh, uh, to tit gopal that uh, they invited me uh, to deliver uh, this talk in this prestigious you know uh, short term training program because uh, the topics are really good the speakers are so qualified uh, and i i should congratulate uh, the organizers that they have you know uh, taken pain in arranging uh, such useful lectures for the participants so to be on lighter mode i, I would share this screen uh, uh, this is saying by charles uh, dickens wo kehte hain ki ye duniya uski hai jo haste hue pure aatmavishwas ke sath se jeetna nikla hai jo haste hue pure aatmavishwas ke sath se jeetna nikla hai matlab hum log pad rahe hain learn kar rahe hain aap bhi sab to apni jagah hai lekin hamesha khush rahe hain haste rahe confidence rahe hamesha आत्मविश्वास से पूर्ण रहे हमेशा ये हमें अपनी लाइफ में ये ऐसा ऐसे जीना चाहिए अपनी लाइफ को ये दुनिया उसकी है जो हंसते हुए पूरे आत्मविश्वास के साथ इसे जीतने निकला है सो बी ऑन लाइटर मोड बिकॉज आई विल यू नो ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन यू थिंग्स इन एन इजी वे बिकॉज दिस सब्जेक्ट इज इट्स क्वाइट मैथमेटिकल फाइनेट एलिमेंट एनालिसिस जो सब्जेक्ट काफी मैथमेटिकल है अच्छा मैं एक बात पूछना चाहता हूं कि सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स हिंदी समझते हैं क्या बिकॉज़ आई वांट टू यूज़ सम नेक्स्ट मोड ऑफ लैंग्वेज इन दिस इफ समवन हैज यू नो प्रॉब्लम इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग हिंदी देन आई विल नॉट यूज़ हिंदी ओके अदरवाइज आई वुड आई वुड लाइक टू यूज़ हिंदी आल्सो इन माय पीपीटी अगर किसी को प्रॉब्लम है तो बता सकते हैं आई थिंक यू कैन गो फॉर मिक्स लैंग्वेज सर मिक्स लैंग्वेज ना आई थिंक इट विल नॉट बी अ प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ या या आई आई बिलीव दैट Uh, that uh, the yes sir output is there uh, more effective output is there i believe that so nowadays uh, aict and all these uh, our government is also uh, 
focusing so much on the regional languages local languages so uh, we should you know i believe that and uh, i have felt that we should uh, go for that okay so hum dekhe agar ways to check accuracy of finite element analysis results you see that uh, so many uh, areas are there where this finite element method is used hum kitni jagah use karte hain finite element method ko uh, modeling karte hain so diverse applications of this area not only in mechanical engineering civil engineering i think in most of the disciplines of engineering uh, we have so many applications biomechanics biomedical engineering तो सभी जगह हम मॉडल्स यूज करते हैं फाइनेट एलिमेंट मॉडल्स यूज करते हैं आ, लेकिन आ, हम जो मॉडल बना रहे हैं एक्चुअली व्हाट वी आर डूइंग वी आर यू नो ट्राइंग टू मॉडल सम फिजिकल फिनोमिना हम कोई भी फिजिकल फिनोमिना जो हो रहा है आ, जैसे कि किसी बार पर स्ट्रेस है बीम पर स्ट्रेस है हम उनको मॉडल कर रहे हैं आ, जो कंपोनेंट है उसको मॉडल करते हैं स्ट्रक्चर को मॉडल करते हैं एंड देन वी अप्लाई द बाउंड्री कंडीशन Uh, and then we apply the loading and then we see the stresses and deflections so uh, always our objective is to you know simulate some physical phenomena koi bhi ek actual phenomena ho raha hai usko hum uh, simulate karte hain to hamara objective kya hona chahiye finite element analysis ka finite element analysis ka objective kya hona chahiye hamara hamara finite element analysis ka objective ye hona chahiye ki hum jo bhi physical process simulate kar rahe hain इसी फिजिकल प्रॉब्लम को हम मॉडल कर रहे हैं सिमुलेट कर रहे हैं उसके रिजल्ट ऐसे हो कि एक्चुअल एक्चुअल स्ट्रक्चर पर जो रिजल्ट्स हैं उससे मैच हो ठीक है आ, लेकिन कई कई बार एनालिस करते हैं हम तो हम यू नो एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट से वेलिडेट नहीं करते हैं रिजल्ट्स को दैट इज नॉट नाइस सो व्हेन वी आर रिलाइंग ऑन फाइनल एलिमेंट मॉडल व्हाट आर द थिंग्स वी शुड यू नो चेक बिफोर रिलाइंग ऑन द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ फाइनल एलिमेंट एनालिसिस हम फाइनल एलिमेंट एनालिसिस या फाइनल एलिमेंट मेथड के रिजल्ट्स के ऊपर विश्वास करें उसके पहले हमें क्या निश्चित कर लेना चाहिए कि हम उस मॉडल पर या उसके रिजल्ट्स पर विश्वास करें तो हमें क्या करना चाहिए तो यही मेरे टॉपिक है यही मेरा ऑब्जेक्टिव है आपसे डिस्कस करना इसी बात को ठीक है सो देर आर थ्री वेज आई है रिटर्न हियर कि अगर हम और आपको पता ही है आप सभी जानते होंगे आप यू आर अटेंडिंग दिस टॉपिक on fem and cfd so you should know that when we model any problem by finite element method we actually divide divide the uh, structure or the model into a number of elements hum sir kai sare elements mein model ko divide karte hain us par hum equations likhte hain elements par elements par equations likhte hain aur elements ko assemble karte hain assemble karne ke baad overall hame assembled matrices milte hain we apply the boundary conditions बाउंड्री कंडीशन अप्लाई करते हैं हम एंड देन यू नो हम सॉल्व करते हैं सॉल्व करने के हमारे रिजल्ट मिलते हैं सो अलग अलग तरह के एनालिसिस होते हैं दैट वी विल सी इन वन ऑफ द स्लाइड्स हम एक स्लाइड में देखेंगे लेकिन तीन बातें मैंने लिखी हैं जिनकी मदद से हम हम फेथ बढ़ा सकते हैं अपने मॉडल पर यू नो अदरवाइज तो क्या होता है कि आपको पता नहीं होता है क्या कर रहे हैं कई बार लोगों को और रिजल्ट हैं हम उनको रिलाई कर सकते हैं नहीं तो फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट थिंग and this is convergence check and you also said grid public uh, mass independence test ye kya hai wo hame uh, ye perform karna chahiye iske pehle ki hum finite element method ke results ko uh, hum use kare hum further you know design mein humko convergence check lagana hi chahiye <coughs> So what is this convergence check? <coughs> uh, do anyone know uh, how many elements should be considered? Uh, you know, जैसे कि बताया कि finite element method में आप किसी भी model को कई सारे elements में divide करते हैं मान लीजिए आपकी अगर एक beam है जिस पर आप analysis कर रहे हैं उसकी length अगर मान लीजिए वन meter है तो हम उसको कितने elements में divide करें How many elements should be considered? फाइव एलिमेंट्स टेन एलिमेंट्स फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी हम कितने एलिमेंट्स लें ये हमें कैसे पता पड़ेगा आप जानते हैं ये बात कि हम कितने एलिमेंट्स लें क्योंकि आप अगर बहुत कम एलिमेंट्स लेते हैं तो हो सकता है कि आपके जो रिजल्ट है फाइव एलिमेंट एनालिस के रिलायबल ना हो ठीक है और जब उससे ज्यादा एलिमेंट्स लेंगे अगर हम तो कॉम्पिटिशन टाइम बढ़ जाएगा एनालिसिस का तो हमें जिस उतने ही एलिमेंट्स लेना चाहिए जितने की हमें जरूरत है So that the results are accurate 
गलत ना हो रिजल्ट्स और ना ही कंपटीशन टाइम बढ़े ओके सो इन कंपटीशन चेक भी डिटरमाइन हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स आर रिक्वायर्ड इन ए मॉडल तो एंश्योर दैट द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ एन एनालिसिस आर नॉट अफेक्टेड बाय चेंजिंग द साइज ऑफ द मैश मतलब हमें इतने एलिमेंट्स लेना चाहिए कि हम उससे ज्यादा अगर एलिमेंट्स लें तो रिजल्ट्स कांस्टेंट रहे रिजल्ट्स चेंज ना ठीक है यू सी के हम अगर फाइनाइट एलिमेंट मेथड में किसी एक डेफिनेट नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स से कम लेंगे तो रिजल्ट्स जो है वो अलग अलग आएंगे नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स अलग अलग लेंगे तो अलग अलग एलिमेंट्स आएंगे फॉर एग्जांपल हम अगर मान लें कि एक बीम के लिए वन मीटर की बीम के लिए पचास एलिमेंट लेने हैं तभी कन्वर्जेंस होता है आप उससे कम एलिमेंट्स लेंगे चालीस लेंगे फोर्टी लेंगे आप एलिमेंट थर्टी लेंगे ट्वेंटी लेंगे तो रिजल्ट वेरी होंगे बट इफ द रिजल्ट आर कन्वर्जिंग इट फिफ्टी नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट You take hundred elements. You take one fifty. You take two hundred elements. There will not be uh, much change. Very very small change means uh, that degree we can uh, ensure that uh, that the results variation will should be of the order of ten to minus two, ten to minus three. The order का convergence चाहिए आपको ten to minus two के order का चाहिए. उसके accordingly uh, convergence check हम लगा सकते हैं. ठीक है. तो कितने elements चाहिए? Convergence check तो हमें लगाना ही चाहिए. किसी भी एनालिस्ट को जो कि फाइनल एलिमेंट मेथड पर वर्क कर रहे हैं अगर तो कन्वर्जेंस चेक लगाए बिना कभी भी रिजल्ट्स पर लाई नहीं करना चाहिए ओके uh, okay, आप अगर अपना काम कर रहे हैं अगर पीजी से अपनी पीजी कर रहे हैं मतलब uh, कई बार ऐसा होता है कि हम जब उनसे पूछ लेते हैं भाई वहां में कन्वर्जेंस चेक लगाए तो वो आंसर नहीं दे पाते और जिन्होंने किया होता है वो कॉन्टेंटली आंसर करते हैं तो कन्वर्जेंस चेक इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल ड्रीन और मेस इंडिपेंडेंस टेस्ट इन सी एम डी हम इसको मेस इंडिपेंडेंस टेस्ट या एफीएम सॉफ्टवेयर में मेस इंडिपेंडेंस टेस्ट भी बोलते हैं कि आपकी मेस पर डिपेंडेंट ना हो आपका एनालिसिस मेस इंडिपेंडेंस टेस्ट या ग्रिड इंडिपेंडेंस टेस्ट जो ग्रिड बना रहे हैं जो मेस बना रहे हैं उसकी मेस पर आपका एनालिसिस डिपेंडेंट नहीं होना चाहिए अगर मेस का साइज एक डेफिनेट मेस से हम अगर बड़ा कर देंगे एलिमेंट्स का साइज छोटा कर देंगे तो रिजल्ट में अंतर नहीं आना चाहिए इंडिपेंडेंट होना चाहिए मेस से so this this test is necessary <coughs> and in this system response हम किसका किस, किसके लिए कन्वर्जेंस चेक करें फॉर एग्जाम्पल हम सिस्टम रिस्पॉन्स स्ट्रेस ले रहे हैं हम एक बीम पर हम देख रहे हैं स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेस कन्वर्ट हो रही है फिफ्टी नंबर के एलिमेंट्स पर स्ट्रेस कन्वर्ट हो रही है डिफॉर्मेशन कन्वर्ट हो रहा है दैट शुड नॉट चेंज आफ्टर दैट डेफिनेट नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स ठीक है तो सिस्टम रिस्पॉन्स विल कन्वर्ट टू ए रिपीटेबल सोल्यूशन With decreasing element size, हम element size एक different limit के बाद अगर कम करते जाएंगे तो solution repeat होगा results change नहीं होंगे this is the thing that you should understand convergence change <coughs> then convert comparison comparison with analytical results this is one thing कई बार when someone is learning this subject find FEM अगर जब learn ही कर रहे हैं learning stage में then how will we fare in this method so what we can do what the students can do or what um, anyone can do is that uh, they may start with some simple uh, models that uh, of the subject and then we can validate our results with the analytical analytically obtained results but now this method fem is uh, applied for complex problems for the problems here we cannot uh, here we cannot have the analytical solution हमें जिन स्ट्रक्चर्स के लिए एनालिटिकल सॉल्यूशन अवेलेबल नहीं होता है तो ही हम देन वी देन वी रिजॉर्ट टू और सीएफडी अदरवाइज तो हमें एनालिटिकली आप रिजल्ट्स निकाल लें तो दिस दिस मेथड लर्निंग फेज में आप देखें अगर तो आप इस इसकी मदद से आप सब्जेक्ट को समझ सकते हैं ना थर्ड थिंग इज नाउ यू दिस फर्स्ट स्टेप इज यू नो ऑलवेज ने यू शुड नेवर स्किप दिस स्टेप फर्स्ट स्टेप second step is you know if you are learning in learning phase of this subject and third is what comparison with experimental results even after the convergence check what we are doing we are modeling we are uh, taking some actual problem hum kuch actual problem ko le rahe hain maan lijiye ek beam liya aapne 1 meter ki us pe aapne kuch cross section us pe aapne kuch load lagaya 1 meter ka load lagaya aapne iska fm analysis kiya कुछ स्ट्रेसेस आई टोटल मेगा पास्कल लेकिन किसी एक पॉइंट पर लेकिन जब आपने एक्सपेरिमेंटली मेजर की स्ट्रेसेस तो आ रही हैं कुछ थ्री हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल उसी स्ट्रक्चर पर वही लेंथ है वही क्रॉस सेक्शन है वही लोडिंग है तो ये अंतर कहाँ से आया सो व्हाट वी आर डूइंग एफ एन एफ हम क्या हम एफ में करते हैं क्या हम मॉडलिंग कर रहे हैं योर मॉडलिंग मटेरियल मटेरियल मॉडलिंग कर रहे हैं 
मटेरियल मॉडलिंग कैसे कर रहे हैं मटेरियल की फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी मॉडल कर रहे हैं तो यंग्स मॉडल से मॉडल कर रहे हैं मटेरियल की डेंसिटी मॉडल कर रहे हैं तो आप मास डेंसिटी से मॉडल कर रहे हैं और सबसे जरूरी चीज जो जो सपोर्ट है सपोर्ट को आप मान रहे हैं फिक्स ठीक है एफ में लेकिन वो फिक्स नहीं है अगर कुछ फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी हो तो आपके एफ पी एम में रिजल्ट आ रहे हैं टू हंड्रेड मेगा पास कर यहाँ पे आ जाएंगे आपके हंड्रेड मेगा पास कर या वन फिफ्टी मेगा पास कर मतलब बिकॉज हम अगर देखें एफ में तो मटेरियल मॉडलिंग मटेरियल फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी मॉडल करना मटेरियल मास डेंसिटी मटेरियल डेंसिटी को मास को मॉडल करना ये काफी एक्यूरेटली हम मॉडल कर पाते हैं बिकॉज दिस थिंग्स आर वेरी वेल नोन वेरी एक्यूरेटली नोन यंग मॉडल हमें मटेरियल का बहुत ही इसके पहले की हम एफ पी एम के रिजल्ट पर विश्वास करें फेस करें हमें टॉपिक में है ही आपका शॉर्ट एंड ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम का तो इसके बारे में थोड़ा डिस्कस कर लेते हैं देखिए हम एसएस की बात कर रहे हैं अगर एस एच देर आर सो मेनी सॉफ्टवेयर यू कैन यू नो यूज एनी वन सॉफ्टवेयर लाइक सॉलिड एज सॉलिड वर्क यू नो के टी एंड अदर सॉफ्ट स्ट्रक्चर एंड एनालिसिस मोर फेमस मोर इट इज मोर यूज मोर कॉमनली यूज for analysis as a software is more commonly used for analysis sometimes uh, people use uh, solid uh, solid models in other softwares like ktr and then they import that uh, model into the analysis for analysis or even there uh, different softwares have different you know features like some software will have very good modeling capabilities like a uh, solid works some software will have very good capabilities for meshing discretization like hypermesh and some softwares like ansys have very good capabilities for analysis but in all ansys has all the capabilities but it is more specialized for analysis so ansys apdl uh, you can use ansys apdl ansys parametric design language then second is ansys workbench ansys workbench kya hai ansys apdl ko hi alag form mein aapne develop kiya because in ansys apdl user interface jo hai सॉफ्टवेयर के साथ यूजर की दैट इज नॉट यू नो सो यूजर फ्रेंडली हमें काफी चीजें याद रखना पड़ती है इस एपीडीएल में बात याद रखना पड़ता है हम इस बात को फॉलो कर रहे हैं आप एक बार भूल जाएंगे तो आपको याद करने में दिक्कत आएगी क्या है आपको लिख कर रखना पड़ेगा सर तो ऐसे uh, एपीडीएल में ये दिक्कत है लेकिन वहां पर भी कोडिंग हो जाती है आप जो भी एनालिस करते हैं सब कोड डेवलप हो जाता है देन यू कैन रिपीट दैट कोड और आप अगर यूजर फ्रेंडली वे में अगर आप एनालिस करते हैं एसएस एपीडीएल में आपको बहुत सारी चीजें याद रखनी होती है तो बट एसएस वर्कबेंच में कोर यूजर भी बनाया गया लाइक अदर सॉफ्टवेयर जो भी थे कैट सॉफ्टवेयर से उनकी तरह वर्कबेंच यूजर फ्रेंडली बनाया गया एंड जस्ट यू सी ऑन सम ब्लॉग आप देखते हैं वहीं पर आपको पता पड़ जाता है कि यहां से मुझे मैश करना है यहां से मुझे मटेरियल लेना है यहां से मुझे एनालिस करना है व्हाट वेरियस थिंग्स यू कैन डू आप सबको सभी कुछ वहां पर विजिबल होता है सो फ्रेंडली लेकिन आप देखें आपको याद करना पड़ता है उसके फायदे भी थे वो उसके फायदे ये थे कि आप एस एस एपीडीएल में जब काम करते हैं तो फिजिकल इंसाइट प्रॉब्लम पर काफी स्ट्रॉन्ग होती है जबकि एस एस वर्कमेंच में आपका इतना कंट्रोल 
फिजिकल इंसाइट जो अंदर आप एनालिस कर रहे हैं उसके ऊपर इतना कंट्रोल नहीं होता कई बार हमें एलिमेंट्स के बारे में पता नहीं पड़ता एक्सेल वर्क में बाई डिफॉल्ट दॉफ्टवेयर विल कंसिडर सम एलिमेंट एंड नॉट नो विच एलिमेंट इट इज टेकिंग और यू हैव टू नो चेक इट पर्टिकुलरली बट इन एसएस एपीडी इन एसएस एपीडी एल क्या करते हैं खुद से ही हम हमारे पास ऑप्शन है कि हम क्या एलिमेंट कंसिडर कर रहे हैं यू सिलेक्ट द एलिमेंट यू सिलेक्ट वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एलिमेंट्स यू डिफाइन द बाउंड्री कंडीशन ऑल दोस थिंग्स आर वेरी यू नो गुड इनसाइट और एसएस वर्क में इज नॉट सम एंटायरली डिफरेंट सॉफ्टवेयर ओके द कोडिंग इट इज जस्ट पुटिंग द एसएस एपीडी इन सम यूजर फ्रेंडली फॉर्म in this bird bench everything is you know being performed in that this is a basic language to only other dusre uh, software se i think i am audible manish sir yes sir okay. thank you so uh, other softwares are there like nastran hai hyperbox hai aur ye sabhi softwares ready ready softwares hain jinme ki hame koi code nahi likhna hota hai aur hum selections karke थ्रू वेरियस सिलेक्शन हम प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व करते हैं आई थिंक मैं आपको समझा यूर गेटिंग पार्टिसिपेंट्स यू कैन आस्क मी क्वेश्चन इससे मुझे पता पड़े कि आप लोग सुन रहे कि ऑनलाइन लर्निंग में तो हमें कुछ पता नहीं होगा यू दैट थिंग इज यू कैन आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन इन बिटवीन टू एक दो क्वेश्चन आएंगे तो थोड़ा इंटरेक्टिव होगा अगर आपको कोई क्वेश्चन पूछना है किसी को तो आप बीच में क्वेश्चन पुटअप कर सकते हैं अपना सर आपने ये बताया था कि वन मीटर में कितने में मिनिमम एलिमेंट कितने लेने होते हैं सर ये क्राइटेरिया वो कैसे तो एलिमेंट्स हम कितने लें ये हमें डिसाइड करना होता है कितने एलिमेंट्स लें मान लीजिए आपने कैंटिलीवर मीन पर टेन एलिमेंट्स लिए ठीक है वन मीटर में टेन एलिमेंट जीरो पॉइंट वन मीटर एक एलिमेंट हो गया आपने लेफ्ट हैंड साइड को फिक्स कर दिया सपोज फ्री एंड पर आपने पॉइंट आउट लगाया सपोज कीजिए आपको टू हंड्रेड मेगा पास चलाई फिर आप एलिमेंट नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट हम डबल कर दिए अब आपको पता नहीं है कि टेन एलिमेंट्स जो रिजल्ट्स आ रहे हैं ट्वेल्ड मेगा पास कर क्योंकि हमारे पास कोई एनालिटिकल सोल्यूशन में नहीं ये मानकर चल रहे हैं क्योंकि हमें पास एनालिटिकल सोल्यूशन होता नहीं है एक्चुअल प्रॉब्लम के लिए ठीक है तो आपने टेन एलिमेंट्स की तो रिजल्ट आया टू हंड्रेड मेगा पास कर आपने एलिमेंट्स किए डबल तो आपने देखा रिजल्ट हो गए वन फिफ्टी मेगा पास कर स्ट्रेसिस के इतना अंतर आया आप कौन सा रिजल्ट सही है टेन एलिमेंट्स वाला सही है कि ट्वेंटी एलिमेंट्स वाला सही है फिर आपने एलिमेंट्स किए फोर्टी एलिमेंट्स आपका रिजल्ट आया हंड्रेड मेगा पास कर ठीक है लेकिन जब 40 एलिमेंट्स से आपने एट्टी किए तो आपका हंड्रेड मेगा पास कर रहा मेगा पास कर रहा तो हियर यू विल कम टू नो दैट व्हेन यू आर कंसीडरिंग टेन एलिमेंट्स जब कंसीडर कर रहे थे तो बोर्ड सही नहीं थे क्योंकि उस पर टू हंड्रेड उस पर मैथ इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं हो रही है तो आपने ट्वेंटी एलिमेंट्स किए तो वन फिफ्टी मेगा पास स्ट्रेस हुई तब भी आपके रिजल्ट जो है आपने लेकिन जब आपने एलिमेंट्स फोर्टी कर दिए 40 से 80 किए तो दोनों 40 से 80 के बीच में रिजल्ट्स में कोई चेंज नहीं आ रहा है ऑलमोस्ट नेगलिजिबल चेंज आ रहा है देन यू विल से दैट द रिजल्ट्स आर कन्वर्जिंग एट 40 नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स समझ रहे हैं बात आप यस सर ओके वेरी आई एम हैप्पी दैट यू आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन ओके मैं कैन आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन इन बिटवीन क्योंकि पर्पस ये है कि जितना भी हम कवर करें स्लाइड्स वो आपको समझ आ जाए 50 स्लाइड कवर कर सकते हो समझ नहीं आए तो वो पर्पस नहीं होता है लर्निंग का ठीक है तो हम और आगे चलें अगर तो हम एसएस में क्या क्या एनालिसिस कर पाते हैं आप देखें एसएस में हम स्टैटिक एनालिसिस मॉडल एनालिसिस हार्मोनिक ट्रांजिएंट स्पेक्ट्रम आइगन बकलिंग सबस्टेंट सो और ये सीएफडी पर एनालिसिस कर पाते हैं ये तो स्ट्रक्चरल एनालिसिस की बात कर रहे हैं हम यहाँ पर मोस्टली तो इनको अगर हम समझें स्टैटिक एनालिसिस क्या होता है या मॉडल एम ओ डी एल मॉडल एनालिसिस क्या होता है आप जानते हैं मॉडल एनालिसिस क्या होता है Anyone can answer this question. Model M O T A L model analysis क्या होता है? Yes sir, जब vibration study करते हैं, तो उसमें mode shapes को mode shapes का फॉर्म mode shapes बनते हैं अलग अलग तो उसको study. Thank you. Thanks for your answer. Model analysis हम जब करते हैं, M M देखिए कई बार ये शुरू में ऑब्जेक्ट का स्पेलिंग ऑफ M O D L M O D L मॉडल मॉडल एनालिसिस ठीक है और जब मॉडल M O D E L मॉडल जब F E M फाइंड एलिमेंट मॉडल में M O D E L होता है और ये बनी है स्पेलिंग मॉडल से M O D मॉड से बनी है जो वाइब्रेशन मॉड होते हैं ना उससे M O D E L मॉडल बनाया है सो इफ वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसीज एंड मॉड सेप्स ऑफ एनी स्ट्रक्चर देन वी कैरी आउट दिस एनालिसिस मॉडल एनालिसिस ठीक है 
सिंपली फ्री वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस होता है इसमें हम कोई भी फोर्स नहीं लगाते स्टेटिक एनालिसिस में हम फोर्स लगाते हैं बाउंड्री कंडीशन लगाते हैं मॉडल एनालिसिस में हम कोई भी फोर्स नहीं लगाते हैं स्ट्रक्चर मॉडल किया इस बाउंड्री कंडीशन लगाई और सॉल्व करते हैं उसे मैच करने के बाद हार्मोनिक एनालिसिस इज वन फोर्स एनालिसिस फोर्स वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस हार्मोनिक एनालिसिस इज फोर्स वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस हार्मोनिक एनालिसिस में हम कुछ भी हार्मोनिक फोर्स लगाते हैं ओके हार्मोनिक फोर्स अलग अलग पॉइंट्स पर लगाकर हम एनालिसिस कर सकते हैं ठीक है ट्रांजिएंट एनालिसिस यू नो अगर हम कुछ भी ट्रांजिएंट एनालिसिस हम करते हैं तो सो हार्मोनिक एनालिसिस तो क्या होगा कि आपकी वेबफॉर्म जो होगी फोर्स की वेबफॉर्म हार्मोनिक होगी किसी भी स्ट्रक्चर पर हमने अगर फोर्स लगाया ये बीम है तो मुझे कुछ फोर्स लगाना है अगर कुछ ही फोर्स लगाता हूं मैं तो ये हार्मोनिक है अगर एफ साइन ओमेगा टी एफ कोसोम इस तो हम हार्मोनिक एनालिसिस करेंगे लेकिन अगर ये फोर्स अगर ट्रांजिट हो जाता है लाइक दिस इस तरह से कुछ कुछ फोर्स आया एक फोर्स फोर्स शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन ड्यूरेशन ऑफ टाइम अगर कुछ फोर्स आता है तो ट्रांजिट एनालिसिस करते हैं ठीक है और हमें कई सारे हार्मोनिक एक्शन है पीरियडिक इट इज पीरियडिक मोशन तो अभी हम ट्रांजिएंट एनालिसिस करते हैं या हमें अगर टाइम वेब फॉर्म देखना है क्योंकि हार्मोनिक एनालिसिस में हम टाइम वेब फॉर्म नहीं देख पाते हैं अगर हमें टाइम वेब फॉर्म देखना है हार्मोनिक एनालिसिस पर ही तो हम ट्रांजिएंट एनालिसिस करते हैं सो इन वेरियस वे इज ट्रांजिएंट एनालिसिस ओके स्पेक्ट्रम एनालिसिस करें अगर हम स्पेक्ट्रम एनालिसिस तो फ्रीक्वेंसी एनालिसिस करते हैं अगर हम फ्रीक्वेंसी एनालिसिस करेंगे अगर किसी भी स्ट्रक्चर पर आपको फ्रीक्वेंसी कंपोनेंट्स देखना है फोर्स के या रिस्पॉन्स के तो हम फ्रीक्वेंसी एनालिसिस करते हैं स्पेक्ट्रम एनालिसिस करते हैं आइगन पकलिंग एनालिसिस करते हैं अगर हम आप यू नो कॉलम स्ट्रट्स कॉलम स्ट्रट्स आपने पढ़े हुए कॉलम्स का जो एनालिसिस करते हैं हम दैट इज नॉट स्टैटिक एनालिसिस आप जानते हैं कॉलम्स स्ट्रट्स का जो एनालिसिस करते हैं आप इट इज नॉट स्टैटिक एनालिसिस ओके इट इज सम डिफरेंट एनालिसिस क्योंकि उसका जो स्टैटिक एनालिसिस जो फेलियर होता है कंपोनेंट्स का जनरली वो ग्रेजुअल होता है ओके मेटल मटेरियल तो सडन भी होगा ठीक है लेकिन इट इज नॉट स्टडी एनालिसिस आई एन बकलिंग एनालिसिस सम डिफरेंट एनालिसिस इसमें क्वासी स्टडी एनालिसिस है इसको हम इसमें जो फेलियर होता है सडन हो जाता है अगर आइगन बकलिंग एनालिसिस करना है आपको बकलिंग लोड निकालना है बकलिंग बकलिंग लोड निकालना है किसी स्ट्रक्चर पर कॉलम पर <laughs> तो आप आइगन बकलिंग एनालिसिस कर सकते हैं सब स्ट्रक्चरिंग एनालिसिस में कई बार हमें क्या होता है कि कई किसी एक स्ट्रक्चर को हम अलग अलग कंपोनेंट्स बनाते हैं उनको सब स्ट्रक्चर से बोलते हैं फिर उनको कंबाइन एनालिस करते हैं अगर हम तो सब स्ट्रक्चरिंग बोलते हैं इसको ठीक है सो ये एक एस एस ए पी की ही विंडो है मॉडलिंग करते हैं प्रोजेसर में हम मॉडलिंग करते हैं सोल्यूशन में हम सोल्यूशन कैरी आउट करते हैं तो हम अब हम मैंने आपको तीन तरीके बताए थे पहला था कन्वर्जेंस चेक जरूरी है करना किसी भी एफ एनालिसिस पर ठीक है दूसरा ये बताया था आपको कि आप एनालिटिकल रिजल्ट्स चेक कर सकते हैं अगर हम लर्निंग फेज में हैं सॉफ्टवेयर के तो हम एनालिटिकली जो एनालिटिकल रिजल्ट्स हैं आपको काफी इजीली मिल जाते हैं अपन प्रॉब्लम्स को मॉडल करो उनके रिजल्ट्स निकालो एफ पर और एनालिटिकल रिजल्ट से आप कोरिलेट करो देन यू विल हैव कॉन्फिडेंस कि यस यू हैव द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट आपको आई है ये भी कॉन्फिडेंस आता है हमको यहाँ से अगर हम इस तरह से कंपेरिजन करते हैं आप ये कर चुके हैं ना तो थर्ड स्टेज हम थर्ड पार्ट डिस्कस करेंगे इस में ठीक है तो स्टेटिक रोटर सिस्टम हमें ये हमारे पास एक रोटर है ये रोटेटिंग मशीन है किसी एक रोटेटिंग मशीन को मॉडल करना है तो वो तीन डिस्क लगी हुई है डिस्क वन डिस्क टू डिस्क थ्री ये एग्जांपल इस पेपर से लिया है इन दोनों पेपर्स में ये एग्जांपल है तो और ये दिस रोटर इज सपोर्टेड ऑन टू बियरिंग्स दो बियरिंग्स पर सपोर्टेड है लेफ्ट साइड बियरिंग एंड राइट साइड बियरिंग आप कहेंगे कि ये बियरिंग पर सपोर्टेड है तो ये यहाँ पर ये स्टिफनेस स्ट्रिंग क्यों लगा दी डेम्पर क्यों लगा दिया जानते हैं आपने हमने ऐसा क्यों किया कैन एन यू आंसर कोई आंसर कर सकता है क्या कि हमने बेरिंग बेरिंग की जगह ये डैम्पर स्प्रिंग डैम्पर सिस्टम क्यों लगा दिया बिकॉज़ अ वाइब्रेशन कंट्रोल करने के लिए रोटेटिंग के लिए ओके वाइब्रेशन इन अ वाइब्रेशन मॉडल वी कैन रिप्रेजेंट बेरिंग एज अ डैम्पर एंड स्प्रिंग बिकॉज़ इट हैज बोथ स्टिफनेस एज वेल एज द फ्रिक्शन बिकॉज़ ऑफ फ्रिक्शन इट्स अ डैम्पर ओके थैंक्स फॉर योर आंसर लेकिन हम देखें अगर ये स्प्रिंग्स जो लगाई है हमने वाइब्रेशन कंट्रोल करने के लिए नहीं लगाई है 
एक्चुअली यहाँ पर बियरिंग है और बियरिंग को हम मॉडल कैसे करें बियरिंग क्या प्रोवाइड करता है बियरिंग प्रोवाइड करता है सपोर्ट आप हवा में तो रख नहीं सकते हैं रोटर को आपको किस कोई सपोर्ट देना होगा तो हम बियरिंग सपोर्ट देते हैं उसको एंटी फ्रिक्शन बियरिंग हो या जनरल बियरिंग हो कोई भी बियरिंग हो तो हम बियरिंग एक फिजिकल एलिमेंट है उसको हम जब मॉडल करते हैं एफ में क्योंकि वो सपोर्ट प्रोवाइड करता है सपोर्ट प्रोवाइड करता है फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी रहती है बियरिंग की ये बियरिंग फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी बियरिंग की फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी हम कैसे मॉडल करेंगे स्टिफनेस से डायरेक्शन में जो उसकी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी है बियरिंग की कैसे एड सेट है और डायरेक्शन में जो बियरिंग है की फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी होके बाय बार इट इज जस्ट मॉडलिंग बियरिंग लेफ्ट साइड पे वर्टिकल और हॉर्जेंटल सपोर्ट के लिए जो स्टिफनेस है के बाय बाय और कैसे एडसेट राइट साइड में भी हमने के बाय बाय और कैसे एडसेट इसकी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी दे दी ठीक है अब नाउ जब हम इस किसी भी स्ट्रक्चर जब वाइब्रेट होता है आप इसको कुछ वाइब्रेशन देंगे अगर तो देट वाइब्रेशन विल डाई आउट आप इसको इम्पैक्ट कर दें अगर कुछ वाइब्रेशन होंगे वेयर देट एनर्जी ऑफ वाइब्रेशन इज गेटिंग डिसिपेटेड डिसिपेट कहाँ होती है एनर्जी तो इन डेम्पर्स में होती है तो अगर हमें एनर्जी डिसिपेटिंग मैकेनिज्म बनाना है मॉडल करना है तो हम डेम्पर्स बेरिंग में बेरिंग्स में डैम्पिंग भी होती है रोलिंग एलिमेंट बेरिंग में बहुत कम डैम्पिंग होती है वैसे इसलिए हम लोग एंटी फ्रिक्शन बेरिंग बोलते हैं कि फिर भी कुछ कुछ तो होती है डैम्पिंग ठीक है वो डैम्पिंग हम कैसे निकालें या इस बेरिंग की कितनी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी है ये हम कैसे निकालें क्योंकि देखिए सपोर्ट जो होते हैं जब आप बोलते हैं सिंपल सपोर्ट फिक्स सपोर्ट फिक्स सपोर्ट तो आप लोग कम्प्लीटली कंस्टेंट कर लिया आपने देखिए डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम जो होती है आप देखें अगर किसी भी पॉइंट की डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिक्स होती है जब हम इस पॉइंट को मॉडल कर रहे हैं अगर हम इस पॉइंट को मॉडल कर रहे हैं तो इस पॉइंट पर क्या है y डायरेक्शन z डायरेक्शन दिस इज द x डायरेक्शन तो x डायरेक्शन के अबाउट तो स्पिन होगा रोटर का ठीक है जब आप बोलते हैं फिक्स सपोर्ट तो हम बोलते हैं y डायरेक्शन और z डायरेक्शन में कोई भी जब सिंपल सपोर्ट बोलते हैं तो आप बोलते हैं y और z डायरेक्शन में कोई भी डिस्प्लेसमेंट नहीं है सिंपल सपोर्ट में फिक्स सपोर्ट में आप बोलते हैं इनके अबाउट कोई रोटेशन भी नहीं है फिक्स सपोर्ट में तो ये सिंपल सपोर्ट होगा फिक्स सपोर्ट होगा इनकी वैल्यूज क्या होंगे यही क्वेश्चन है ये सब को एड्रेस करेंगे कि हम कैसे सपोर्ट सपोर्ट का मॉडल कैसे करें एपीएन में इसको हम डिस्कस करेंगे लेकिन यहाँ पर हमने इसको पैरामीटर्स को लिया है समझने के लिए के वाई वाई के जेड जेड की वैल्यू हमने ये ले ली सी वाई वाई सी जेड जेड की वैल्यू हमने ले ली और कुछ डिस्क वन डिस्क टू डिस्क थ्री कुछ मास मैंने लिखे नहीं यहाँ पर कुछ मास लिए हैं और इनके साथ एनालिसिस किया हमने हम जस्ट चेक करना चाहते हैं कि हमारे जो रिजल्ट्स हैं एनालिटिकली रिजल्ट एनालिटिकल रिजल्ट से मैच होते हैं कि नहीं ठीक है स्ट्रेस एनालिसिस और डिफ्लेक्स एनालिसिस के यहीं पर हम समझेंगे कि कन्वर्जेंस चेक कैसे परफॉर्म करते हैं ठीक है कन्वर्जेंस चेक भी समझ लेंगे और एनालिटिकल uh, रिजल्ट से हम वैलिडेट भी कर लेंगे एंड थर्ड जो पार्ट रहेगा एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट वाला वो हम एट द एंड हम उसको देख लेंगे तो आप देखें अगर जब हम इसको एस एस में हमने मॉडल किया है एस एस एपी डी एल में जब मॉडल कर रहे हैं शार्ट को तो ये इसकी लेंथ को मॉडल किया ट्वेल्थ थर्टीन नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स लिए हैं हमने इसमें वन टू नो दी आर नोट नंबर्स थर्टीन नोट्स लिए हैं तो ट्वेल्व एलिमेंट्स हैं ट्वेल्व एलिमेंट्स लिए जो बियरिंग सपोर्ट है वो यहाँ पे इस तरह से जब हम एस में देखेंगे तो इस तरह से स्प्रिंग नहीं देखेंगे आपको है ना वो कंस्टेंट कर दिया उसे कुछ नोटेशन होंगे वो देखेंगे आपको तो यहाँ पर कंस्टेंट किया हुआ है इसको बियरिंग सपोर्ट दिए हुए जो डिस्क हम मॉडल कर रहे हैं एक्चुअली डिस्क को हम मास ट्वेंटी वन एलिमेंट से मॉडल किया है डिस्क को हमने मास मास एलिमेंट से डिस्क को मॉडल किया डिस्क भी आपको दिखेंगे नहीं लेकिन यहाँ पर मास ट्वेंटी वन इज ए पॉइंट एलिमेंट है मास ट्वेंटी वन जो होता है एस में एक पॉइंट एलिमेंट होता है तो यहाँ पर लिया पॉइंट टू पर पॉइंट फाइव पर और पॉइंट टेन पर नोट टेन पर मास ट्वेंटी वन एलिमेंट लिया और बीम को हमने किया बीम बन एट्टी एलिमेंट बीम बन एट्टी एट बीम बीम बन एट्टी एट एलिमेंट बीम बन एट्टी एट बन एट्टी एट एलिमेंट बहुत ही अच्छा एलिमेंट है मतलब ये बड़ा बेसिक टाइप का एलिमेंट है और ये बीम बन एट्टी एलिमेंट इज ए टू नोटेड एलिमेंट बीम बन एट्टी एट एलिमेंट जो है एस एस में टू नोटेड एलिमेंट है लेकिन ये दोनों नोट्स पर पर नोट इसकी सिक्स डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम कंसिडर करता है बीम बन एट्टी एलिमेंट है सिक्स डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम पर नोट यहाँ पर भी छह डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम है और यहाँ पर भी सिक्स डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम टोटल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम बन एट्टी एट एलिमेंट कितनी हो जाती है एक बीम बन एट्टी एट एलिमेंट की टोटल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम हो जाती है आपको अगर एक ही वर्टिकल प्लेन में ही अगर आपको मॉडल करना है बीम को 
if you want to see just vertical deflection and vertical uh, rotation about this z axis so remaining 4 degrees of freedom ko constraint kar do so what uh, it is y z x ye translation hai aur theta y hai na theta z aur theta x ye rotation hai iske so if you say that you are uh, analyzing the beam in this vertical plane and then you are interested in this y deflection to so y rakhenge deflection rakhenge z aur x deflection ko constant kar denge zero zero fit kar denge aap define kar denge aur rotation about z axis hai to isko lenge theta z ko non zero aur y ko non zero lenge baki z x theta y theta x ko zero put kar denge theek hai to isme humne is tarah se analysis kiya is beam ka to hum dekhe iske results isme koi question hai aapka any question till now ओके, सो हम देखें अगर हमने हम कैसे करते हैं इसे डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम कैसे कंस्टेंट करते हैं तो ये विंडो आती है इसे इसमें आपके ऑप्शंस होते हैं यू एक्स यू वाई यू जेड और ट्रांसलेशन अलॉन्ग थ्री एक्सिस रोड एक्स रोड वाई रोड रोड वाई रोड जेड विजिबल नहीं है ये भी आता है तो हम इसमें यू वाई यूजेड को जीरो पुट कर देंगे यहाँ से सेलेक्ट कर लेंगे मल्टीपल सिलेक्शन हो जाते हैं यहाँ से यू वाई भी यू जेड भी रोटेशन अबाउट एक्स रोटेशन अबाउट जेड वाई ये हम फिक्स कर लेंगे इसको और कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू में जीरो पुट कर देंगे यहाँ पर अप्लाई करते हैं तो वो कॉन्स्टेंट कर देते हैं चार डिग्री फ्रीडम को दो ही फ्री रहेंगी बाकी चार कॉन्स्टेंट हो जाएंगे ठीक है इस तरह से हम कॉन्स्टेंट करते हैं ठीक है सो अब देखें हम अगर ये स्लाइड देखें अगर आप ये कन्वर्जन चेक की स्लाइड है जो हमने देखिए बीम जो है टोटल लेंथ जो है इसकी आप देखेंगे अगर इसकी लेंथ जो है ये मिलीमीटर में टू हंड्रेड थ्री हंड्रेड फाइव हंड्रेड थ्री हंड्रेड तो टोटल एट हंड्रेड इलेवन हंड्रेड थर्टीन हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर लेंथ है वन पॉइंट थ्री मीटर लेंथ है टोटल शाफ्ट की वन पॉइंट थ्री मीटर जो हमने इसमें जब हमने इसमें जीरो पॉइंट थ्री एलिमेंट लिए मतलब एलिमेंट लेंथ जब जीरो पॉइंट थ्री मीटर ली एलिमेंट लेंथ की बात कर रहे हैं नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं जो हमने इस वन पॉइंट थ्री मीटर के बीम के लिए जिसमें तीन डिस्क हैं हमने जीरो पॉइंट थ्री मीटर लेंथ ली तो रिजल्ट आए ये स्ट्रेसिस के मीटर पर मीटर स्क्वायर में थर्टी फोर थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड मीटर पर मीटर स्क्वायर ठीक है लोड काफ़ी कम है इसलिए वैल्यूज कम आ रही है स्ट्रेसिस की फिर जीरो पॉइंट वन की तो इसमें वेरिएशन इतना आ गया तो मतलब आपने जो पहला एलिमेंट साइज लिया था जीरो पॉइंट थ्री मीटर इट वॉज नॉट करेक्ट आपको ये समझ में आया क्यों क्योंकि इट इज नॉट मैस इज नॉट इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द साइज ऑफ द एलिमेंट ग्रेड इज नॉट इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द साइज ऑफ द एलिमेंट इसलिए हम बोलते हैं मैस इंडिपेंडेंट टेस्ट लगाना है हमको मैस शुड भी इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द साइज ऑफ द एलिमेंट मैस शुड भी इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द साइज ऑफ द एलिमेंट तो हमने जब इसमें जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव लेंथ की एलिमेंट की तो भी इसमें चेंज आया फिर जब जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो वन मीटर लेंथ की तो हमें इस चीज नहीं मिली थर्टी फोर थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड और जब जीरो पॉइंट उसकी और हाफ हमने एलिमेंट साइज और हाफ कर दिया अगर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो 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 फाइव मीटर लेंथ एलिमेंट की की जब हमने देन यू की इसी दैट इन दोनों साइज ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स के लिए या नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स के लिए देर इज नॉट चेंज देर इज नो चेंज ऑलमोस्ट नो चेंज ऑफ द बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस हम बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस देख रहे हैं और किसी एक पॉइंट पर किसी भी एक पॉइंट पर हम बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस देख रहे हैं यहाँ पर साइज ऑफ द एलिमेंट इन मीटर्स हम राइट टू लेफ्ट मूव कर रहे हैं एलिमेंट्स पर सो यू से दैट व्हेन देयर इज होरिजेंटल लाइन दैट दैट वी से दैट द द मैस इज कन्वर्जिंग एट 0.001 एलिमेंट्स हम इसी नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट को लेंगे इसको भी नहीं लेंगे ज्यादा भी नहीं लेना है इतने अप्रोप्रिएट होते नहीं लेना है तो हम 0.001 मीटर लेंथ ले लेंगे एलिमेंट को एनालाइज कर लेंगे आप अब बेंडिंग आपने जो कन्वर्जेंस किया चेक वो किस पर किया बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस पर चेक किया जो भी कन्वर्जेंस चेक किया हमने कन्वर्जेंस चेक किया हमने बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस पर ठीक आप यहाँ पर आप डिफॉर्मेशन भी ले सकते हैं डिफ्लेक्शन डेल्टा ऑफ द बीम एट एनी पॉइंट आप नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी भी ले सकते हैं बीम पर किसी पॉइंट पर आप कोई भी दूसरा पैरामीटर ले सकते हैं प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस ले लें कुछ भी पैरामीटर लेना है आप उस पर कन्वर्जेंस चेक करें एक रिजल्ट को मिल जाएगा तो होगा एक्सपेक्टेड ओके एनी क्वेश्चन इन दिस any question from any side anyone okay so moving further aap dekhiye yahan pe comparison kiya hai analytical results se 
फिक्स फिक्स सपोर्ट लिए हमने बीम के अभी इसको हमने दोनों ही एंड पर फिक्स माना है इस एंड पर भी फिक्स माना है इसको इस एंड पर भी फिक्स माना है ठीक है तो फिक्स फिक्स सपोर्ट अगर लेते हैं हम तो बेंडिंग मोमेंट भी निकाला है यहाँ पर आप देखें बेंडिंग मोमेंट निकाला है सेकेंड कॉलम में ठीक है और अलग अलग लेंथ पर जीरो लेंथ पर क्या है स्ट्रेस जीरो पॉइंट टू मीटर लेंथ पर लेफ्ट साइड से जीरो पॉइंट फाइव मीटर वन मीटर वन पॉइंट थ्री मीटर मीटर फाइव पॉइंट्स कंसिडर किए हैं स्ट्रेसेस के लिए और बेंडिंग मोमेंट के लिए तो बेंडिंग मोमेंट की वैल्यू यहाँ पर मीटर मीटर में दी हुई है स्ट्रेस की वैल्यू दी है ये थोरिटिकल कैलकुलेशन और आपने जो भी पढ़ा स्ट्रेस ऑफ मटेरियल में बीम बेंडिंग फॉर्मूले से आपने स्ट्रेस निकाली ठीक है वो ये स्ट्रेसेस है ये स्ट्रेस है और डायमीटर बता रहे हैं आप डायमीटर ठीक है और ये एनालिसिस की वैल्यूज निकाली है यहाँ पर बेंडिंग मोमेंट की वैल्यूज निकाली है स्ट्रेस की वैल्यूज निकाली है ठीक है और यहाँ पर जो है परसेंटेज एरर निकाल ली है बेंडिंग मोमेंट में परसेंटेज एरर और परसेंटेज परसेंटेज एरर इन स्ट्रेसेस तो आप देखिए एरर है एरर इज लेस देन यू नो फोर परसेंट एरर है स्ट्रेसेस में परसेंटेज एरर इतना कम है ठीक है हो सकता है आप और रिफाइन करें तो और भी इसमें जो है स्ट्रेस कम हो जाए अब हम रिजल्ट चेक करते हैं फिक्स फिक्स बीम है फिक्स फिक्स बीम में हमने स्ट्रेसेस का प्लॉट किया कंट्रोल प्लॉट ये ये तो आप सब देख आप जानते होंगे आई थिंक आपने अगर एंडिस किया कंट्रोल प्लॉट्स को स्टडी करना ठीक है फिक्स फिक्स बीम में मोटर्स जनरली क्या होता है आप में लोगों में से काफ़ी सारे फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स भी हैं जब हम एनालिस करते हैं तो स्टूडेंट्स को हम बोल सकते हैं भाई तुम एफ एम एनालिस कर रहे हो तो पहले सिंपल बीम पर सिंपल स्ट्रक्चर से एफ एम करके बताओ और उसके एनालिटिकल रिजल्ट से वेलीट करके बताओ तो आप कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रॉब्लम लेना इतना आप करो लर्निंग फेज में पहले तो एक दो महीने हमें स्टूडेंट्स को कह सकते हैं कि भाई आप ये इतना करो एनालिस की सिंपल बीम सिंपल स्ट्रक्चर पर आप एनालिस करके वेलीट करें रिजल्ट को रिफ्लेक्शन का कंट्रोल प्लॉट है ठीक है ये सिर्फ अगर हम सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम लेते हैं तो वैल्यूज ही आ रही है पॉपुलेशन ही आ रहा है इस सिंपली सपोर्टेड में तो एरर काफ़ी ऑलमोस्ट जीरो है एक्स फिक्स में कुछ एरर आ रही थी मे भी हमें शायद और कन्वर्ट करना पड़ता एलिमेंट शायद उसमें एरर कम हो सकती थी तो इस तरह से हम कन्वर्टेशन चेक लगाते हैं सर uh, मेरा एक क्वेश्चन है uh, अगर ये थियोरिकल वैल्यूज और एनालिसिस वैल्यूज अगर कंपेयर करते हैं तो उसमें एरर सर कितना कंसिडरेबल मतलब uh, कि हम कि सही है कि एरर कितना कंसिडरेबल रहता है सर आपका क्वेश्चन uh, बढ़िया है बिल्कुल मेरे uh, कि हम ये कह सकते हैं व्हेन यू आर यू नो कंपेयरिंग टू रिजल्ट्स यू कैन से दैट आई विल कन्वर्ट रिजल्ट्स टू टू ऑर्डर ऑफ 10 टू माइनस 2 और 10 टू माइनस 1 आप कितने डेसिमल प्लेस तक कन्वर्ट करना चाहते हो इट इज अप टू यू टेबल लेकिन डेसिमल प्लेस तक तो जाना चाहिए हमें कन्वर्जेंस के सर uh, एक चीज़ और पूछनी थी जैसे ये थियोरेटिकल वैल्यूज और एनालिसिस वैल्यूज में ये uh, ये जरूरी है हर वक्त थियोरेटिकल वैल्यूज हमारे uh, मतलब मोर देन जो एनसिस की वैल्यूज आ रहे हैं उससे ज़्यादा ही हो या कम हो ये देखिए क्या है थियोरेटिकल uh, वैल्यूज हम निकालते हैं ना uh, तो आप जो थोरेटिकल वैल्यूज जो हैं और सिमिलर वैल्यूज में ऐसा कोई रिलेशन नहीं है कि कम हो या ज़्यादा ठीक है मान लीजिए आपने एक बीम है इसी केस में देखें अगर अगर एक बीम एक्चुअल में आप फिक्स सपोर्ट है लेकिन आपने उसको मॉडल कर दिया सिंपल सपोर्ट के अनुसार एफ ई एम में तो आपके रिजल्ट कम साइड लोअर साइड पर आएंगे समझ रहे हैं ना सिंपल सपोर्ट है मैं मॉडल कर दिया और है फिक्स सपोर्ट तो एक्चुअल में स्ट्रेस ज़्यादा होगी लेकिन आप जो एनालिस करेंगे एफ से उसमें आएगी कम ऑन द अदर हैंड आपने फिक्स सपोर्ट से मॉडल कर दिया लेकिन वो सपोर्ट ना तो फिक्स ना सिंपल सपोर्ट फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी है तो आपके एफ पी एम में स्ट्रेस वैल्यूज ज्यादा आएंगी एफ एम की समझ रहे हैं बात आप यस सर है ना तो कुछ भी हो सकता है ऐसा कोई फिक्स नहीं है कम आएंगी या ज्यादा आएंगी ठीक है वो आपको जज करना होता है एक्चुअली हमें हम जब भी एनालिस करते हैं तो हमें जो हम जिस स्ट्रक्चर पर एनालिस कर रहे हैं उसका स्ट्रक्चर का आइडिया होना चाहिए 
ठीक है स्ट्रक्चर को हमें देखना चाहिए आ, आप जिस भी प्रॉब्लम को कर रहे हैं सॉल्व वगैरह वो अवेलेबल है स्ट्रक्चर और कोई एग्जिस्टिंग मशीन पर अगर आप एनालिस कर रहे हैं तो हमको उस मशीन को देखना चाहिए उसमें कहाँ पर कहाँ पर कैसे ज्वाइंट्स हैं क्या क्या हो सकते हैं क्या पॉसिबिलिटीज हैं उस समय फिजिकल इंसाइट आता है स्ट्रक्चर का एंड देन इफ यू मॉडल द स्ट्रक्चर देन आपकी एक्सपेक्टेशन ज़्यादा होगी कि आपके रिजल्ट क्लोजर हों एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट के एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट को ही हम हमें सही मानते हैं वही सही है एफ एम रिजल्ट को हम के लिए बेंच मार्क होते हैं मेजर रिजल्ट मेजर जो करते हैं रिजल्ट बेंच मार्क होते हैं एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट के लिए ठीक है तो वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस हम करें एनालिसिस तो हम एक एग्जाम्पल लेते हैं मॉडल एनालिसिस का एग्जाम्पल लिया होगा आई थिंक हम ओके ठीक है तो हम इतने की एनालिस कर सकते हैं ये बताया अब हम थोड़ा फोकस करते हैं वाइब्रेशन पर स्पेसिस स्टडी एनालिस का एग्जाम्पल बताया था मैंने हम वाइब्रेशन पर फोकस करें अगर तो वाइब्रेशन जो मैकेनिकल फिनोमिना आप जानते हैं सर टू एंड फ्रो मोशन होता है ठीक है लाइक हेयर दिस शार्ट इज ऑसिलेटिंग बैक एंड फोर्थ ठीक है सच एनिमेस यू कैन ऑप्टेन एनालिसिस और जब हम स्टूडेंट्स को हम जब थीज कराते हैं मॉडर्न एनालिसिस पर या वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस पर दिस वुड एनकरेज स्टूडेंट्स टू यू नो रिकॉर्ड दिज एनिमेस इन दियर प्रेजेंटेशंस हमें उनको बोलना चाहिए कि आप इनकी ए फाइल बन जाती हैं तो आप ए फाइल्स रिकॉर्ड करिए आपने जो भी क्योंकि वो दिखा देते हैं जस्ट कंप्यूटर प्लॉट दिखा देंगे उससे ना वो ठीक है अपनी जगह लेकिन साथ में एनिमेशन भी दिखाएं अगर वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस से वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस पर काम कर रहे हैं तो एनिमेशन दिखाएं कि उस स्ट्रक्चर का एनिमेशन कितना कैसा है मोशन कैसा है मॉडल रिस्पॉन्स कैसा है मॉडल शिप्स कैसे हैं एनिमेशन में दिखाना चाहिए सो वाइब्रेशन सर बहुत डिजायरेबल एंड अनडिजायरेबल आप लोग समझते हैं ये बात अब अगर आप लोगों ने देखा हो टेकोमा ब्रिज का एग्जांपल हमेशा दिया जाता है ये ब्रिज बनाया गया था और नवंबर सेवन नवंबर सेवन नाइनटीन फोर्टीज में फोर्टी को उस समय का थर्ड लार्जेस्ट सस्पेंशन ब्रिज था और काफ़ी एक्सपेक्टेशन थी ब्रिज से काफ़ी मेहनत से बनाया गया था और लेकिन जैसे कि एक टाइटेनिक ब्रिज टाइटेनिक शिप का एक मान मानते हैं कि कैसे फेलियर हो गया उसका उस समय बड़ा अचरज हुआ था इसी तरह से टेकोमा ब्रिज का भी एक बड़ा अचरज हुआ था लोगों को कि कैसे इसका फेलियर हो गया इस तरह से अचानक थ्री मंथ्स के ऑपरेशन में ही ये ब्रिज टूट कर दो पार्ट हो गए थे इसके एम्पलीटेशन ब्रिज फोर्टीन फीट और उस जमाने में तो हुआ क्या था एक्चुअली फेल कैसे हुआ था ये इसको देखें अगर तो रेजोनेंस कंडीशन को भी रिस्पॉन्सिबल मानते हैं कि जो ब्रिज अगर माने कि ये पॉइंट जो है ये ब्रिज है जो आपको स्क्वेयर दिख रहा है दिस इज ब्रिज विंड विंड फ्लो वाइब्रेशन तो होते ही स्ट्रक्चर्स में सिविल स्ट्रक्चर्स में काफ़ी तो विंड वॉज फ्लोइंग अक्रॉस दिस लाइक फ्रॉम हियर ओके इस डायरेक्शन से विंड फ्लो हो रहा है और विंड फ्लो जब हो रहा है इस, 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 इसके थ्रू तो यहाँ पर सोल्स ये ऐसे ना ये सोल्स फॉर्म हो जाते हैं ऐसे ये सोल्स दिख रहे हैं ना ये ये जो एयर दिख रही है तो पास हो गई यहाँ पर ये एयर पास हो गई लेकिन यहाँ पे ये सोल्स इनको बोलते हैं एस डब्ल्यू आई आर एल ये सोल्स फॉर्म हो रहे थे तो ये सोल्स की जो फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ एक्साइटेशन थी वो इस ब्रिज की नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी से मैच हो गई एक्साइटेशन फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ दिस सोल्स मैच विद द नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ दिस ब्रिज एंड इट रिजल्टेड इन हैवी ऑसिलेशन और उस जमाने में सरप्राइजिंगली उस जमाने में इसके वीडियोज हैं रिकॉर्डिंग है ये वाइब्रेशन काफ़ी समय तक हुए कुछ ऐसा नहीं कि अचानक वाइब्रेशन हुए फेलियर हो गया कुछ समय तक ऑसिलेशन हुए थे आप देखें अगर वीडियो में आप देखें उस समय का ये वीडियो है आप लोगों ने देखा हुआ होगा आई थिंक ये वाला वीडियो कि नहीं देखा मुझे पता नहीं यहाँ पर आपको बता देता हूँ यस सर देखा हुआ देखा हुआ है ना ठीक है तो इसका हम स्किप कर देते हैं उसे ठीक है आप लोगों ने देखा हुआ है ओके 
ठीक है इसको हम स्किप करते हैं आप लोगों ने देखा हुआ है तो ये वीडियो पीपीटी पर ही जाए ठीक है तो नेक्स्ट स्लाइड में हम देखें फेलियर से वाइब्रेशन फेलियर की एग्जाम्पल है फेलियर ऑफ रोटेटिंग मशीन सडन फेलियर हो जाता है वाइब्रेशन के कारण व्हाट इज मॉडल एनालिसिस मॉडल एनालिसिस में आपने बताई दिया कि हम नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी में मॉडशिप्स निकालते हैं मॉडशिप्स uh, क्या होते हैं डिस्प्लेसमेंट बटन होते हैं एक ये वीडियो uh, है ऑनलाइन अवेलेबल है वीडियो मॉडशिप्स का इसको हम उसका प्लेट मॉडशिप्स अगर आपने देखे इस तरह के स्ट्रक्चर आप लोगों ने देखे होंगे इस तरह के एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेटअप इस तरह के एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेटअप हमारे यहाँ लेब्स में हम डेवलप कर सकते हैं प्रोक्योर कर सकते हैं मॉडल एनालिसिस पर ये बहुत ही अच्छा एक्सपेरिमेंट है प्लेट मॉडशिप का आपने देखा हुआ है क्या देखिए कैसे मॉडशिप बनते हैं सर वीडियो इज नॉट विजिबल है अच्छा वीडियो इज नॉट विजिबल टू यू स्क्रीन ओके ठीक है शेयर नहीं हो पाया सर ओके 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 ठीक है वो स्क्रीन शेयर नहीं है पीपीडी शेयर किया इसलिए यस अब उसको रोक करके आप लोगों ने देखे होंगे वैसे आप लोग जानते हैं अगर प्लेट मॉडशिप्स मॉडशिप पर बहुत अच्छा एक एक्सपेरिमेंट सेटअप बनता है प्लेट मॉडशिप निकालने का शेखर एक्साइटर होता है उसमें आप फ्रीक्वेंसी एक्साइटेशन चेंज करते हैं और उससे हमें अलग 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 जो है वो मिलते हैं मॉडशिप मिलते हैं और उससे स्टूडेंट्स को वाइब्रेशन मॉड्स की कंसेप्ट क्लियर होती है तो यहाँ पर देखें अगर ये रिजोनेंट पीक वन एनी अदर रिजोनेंट पीक ये ये एक फोर्स रिस्पॉन्स कर रहे कि अगर हम तो अलग अलग जो है रिजोनेंट पीक्स जो है अलग अलग मोड से वो रिस्पॉन्ड करते हैं लाइक दिस इज द फर्स्ट मोड फर्स्ट बैंडिंग मोड दिस सेकेंड बैंडिंग मोड लाइक दिस थर्ड बैंडिंग मोड टॉर्च एंड टॉर्क मोड भी है फोर्थ बैंडिंग मोड तो मोड से मीन डिस्प्लेसमेंट पैटर्न आप लोग ये कॉन्सेप्ट समझते हैं तो हम इसको आगे बढ़ाएं अगर क्विकली तो मॉडल एनालिसिस मॉडल एनालिसिस इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स ठीक है तो तरह से मॉडल एनालिसिस कैरी आउट करते हैं थेरेटिकल मॉडल एनालिसिस एंड एक्सपेरिमेंटल मॉडल एनालिसिस तो थेरेटिकल मॉडल एनालिसिस में आप इक्वेशंस ऑफ मोशन लिखकर एनालिसिस करें या एफईएम पर एनालिसिस करते हैं उसको भी थेरेटिकल मॉडल एनालिसिस या न्यूमेरिक थेरेटिकल मॉडल एनालिसिस या फाइनाइट एलिमेंट मॉडल एनालिसिस भी कहते हैं या न्यूमेरिकल मॉडल एनालिसिस भी कहते हैं These are put, uh, all are put under the category of theoretical model analysis, right? Right. Or if we go to experimental model analysis, is one technique. Because I have told you earlier that we are right. Who is right? Who is right? Experimental results are right. Okay. So we experimentally measurement from how to measure the nature of the frequency, how to measure the motion. This we learn in this. एक्सपेरिमेंटल मॉडल एनालिसिस या मॉडल टेस्टिंग भी जिसे हम बोलते हैं वो डी एल मॉडल टेस्टिंग भी कहते हैं इसे इसमें हम ये फाइंड आउट करते हैं ठीक है सो ये मैंने आपको बता दिया अब देखें हम एक्सपेरिमेंटली हम मॉडल टेस्टिंग कैसे करते हैं तो आप देख रहे हैं अलग अलग स्ट्रक्चर से एक कार कार डोर है इस पर हम वाइब्रेशन टेस्ट कर रहे हैं यहाँ पर हम एक लॉन्ग टेनिस रैकेट है उस पर मॉडल टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं यहाँ पर एक बेसबॉल रैकेट है इस पर मॉडल टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं यहाँ पर कुछ ब्लेड्स हैं लाइक विंड टर्वाइन की कुछ से कुछ ब्लेड लग रही है यहाँ पर ये रोटेटिंग कंपोनेंट्स है ये इस पर हम मॉडल टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं तो मॉडल टेस्टिंग में हम क्या निकालते हैं वी फाइंड आउट नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज इन मॉड सेप्स देखिए नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज तो आप बहुत क्विकली निकाल सकते हैं एक मेजरमेंट पर हम यहाँ पर आप देख रहे हैं यहाँ पर एक्सेलोमीटर कनेक्टेड है यहाँ पर ये तीन डिवाइस दिख रही है एक्सेलोमीटर्स ठीक है और ये है एक्साइटर अब हम हमें अगर किसी भी स्ट्रक्चर पर आ, उसकी प्रॉपर्टीज निकालना है उसकी क्वालिटीज निकालना है उसकी करेक्टरिस्टिक निकालना है तो कैसे निकालेंगे हमें उसे एक्साइट करना होगा लाइक मैं एग्जाम्पल देता हूँ यहाँ पर आपको अगर इफ यू मीट संबंध अगर आप चीजें मिलते हैं आप को अगर उसके नेचर के बारे में पता करना है उसकी क्या खूबियां हैं क्या उसके पॉइंट्स हैं उसके बारे में पता करना है तो व्हाट यू यू विल डू यू विल आस्क क्वेश्चंस आप क्वेश्चंस रेज करेंगे उससे एंड जो रिस्पांस करेगा व्यक्ति उससे आपको पता पड़ेगा कि इसकी क्या क्वालिटीज है क्या खूबियां हैं इसी तरह से अगर हमें इस मशीन से इस डोर से अगर हमें पूछना है कि तो तुम्हारी क्या खूबियां हैं तुम्हारी क्या क्वालिटी है तुम्हारी क्या करेक्टरिस्टिक्स हमें इसको क्वेश्चन पूछना पड़ेगा हम क्वेश्चन कैसे पूछते हैं उसको एक्साइट करते हैं 
तो ये शेखर एक्साइटेड से हम इस डोर को एक्साइट करते हैं इससे हम हारमोनिक एक्साइटेशन दे सकते हैं यहाँ पर हम फोर्स इनपुट करते हैं बस ना एक फोर्स इंसर्ट करते हैं हारमोनिक फॉर्म में हो सकता है पीरियडिक फॉर्म में हो सकता है रेंडम फॉर्म में हो सकता है ट्रांसजेंट फॉर्म में हो सकता है किसी भी फॉर्म में हम फोर्स इनपुट करते हैं उस फोर्स को हम मेजर करते हैं ठीक है और यहाँ पर हम उस फोर्स के कारण अलग अलग पॉइंट्स पर क्या रिस्पॉन्स है वो हम मेजर कर लेते हैं उसको हम बोलते हैं फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स कर एक ही फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स कर हम नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी से निकाल सकते हैं किसी भी स्ट्रक्चर की किसी भी स्ट्रक्चर की हम कई सारी नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी से निकाल सकते हैं ठीक है अगर आप थियरी देखें तो ये कंटिन्यूस बॉडी है सो कंटिन्यूस बॉडी का जो फ्रीक्वेंसी होता है नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी दो इनफाइनाइट वो इनफाइनाइट होता है हां तो अभी यहां पे जो फ्रीक्वेंसी मिल रही है सो वो तो एक ही मिलेगी अगर हमने हां ठीक है हम कौन सी फाइंड कर रहे हैं मतलब रियलिटी में इनफाइनाइट नेचर फ्रीक्वेंसी होगी हां कंटिन्यूस बॉडी क्योंकि अच्छा क्वेश्चन है आपका देखिए बड़ा अच्छा क्वेश्चन है हम एक्चुअल स्ट्रक्चर को हम मॉडल करते हैं एवरी स्ट्रक्चर इज कंटिन्यूस हर कोई स्ट्रक्चर कंटिन्यूस होता है ठीक है ये तो हम सब जानते हैं अब कंटिन्यूस सिस्टम की डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम इनफाइनाइट होती हैं ये भी जानते हैं लेकिन हम जब मॉडल करते हैं सिंगल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम से मॉडल करेंगे तो हमें एक ही नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी मिलेगी और मल्टी डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम मॉडल से करेंगे मल्टी डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम से मॉडल करेंगे तो हमें कई सारी नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी मिलेंगी अब हम जब एफ में मॉडल करते हैं तो एफ एम मल्टी डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम मॉडलिंग है ना और उसमें हम जितनी डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम होंगी स्ट्रक्चर की उतनी ही नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी हमें आ, मिल जाती हैं स्ट्रक्चर की ठीक है अब यहाँ पर आपका क्वेश्चन बड़ा वैलिड है कि हमें कौन सी नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी मिलेगी तो हम जो एनालाइजर होता है हम उसमें सेट करते हैं कि हमें कितनी रेंज तक नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी चाहिए हम वहाँ पर कहेंगे वन थाउजेंड इज द मैक्सिमम लिमिट तो वन थाउजेंड तक की हमें फ्रिक्वेंसी शो कर देगा और 1000 थाउजेंड में उसका फंडामेंटल मोड तो आएगा ही मतलब पहला मोड तो मेजर होगा ही और 1000 थाउजेंड के अंदर उसके अगर दो तीन चार जितने भी मोड आ रहे होंगे इतनी सारी नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी मेजर की जाएंगी ठीक है ओके सर तो वही कर रहे हैं तो देखिए क्या है कि हमने फ्रीक्वेंसी एक फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स कर से हमको नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी बहुत सारी मिल जाती है लेकिन अगर हमें मॉडशिप चाहिए मॉडशिप क्या है अब मॉडशिप तो एक ही स्ट्रक्चर पर आपको चाहिए कि इस बेस बॉल बेट का कैसा कैसा डिस्प्लेसमेंट होगा अलग अलग पॉइंट्स पर तो आपको उतने पॉइंट्स लेना पड़ेंगे तो हमें कई सारे पॉइंट्स सिलेक्ट करने पड़ते हैं उन सभी पर हमें रिस्पॉन्स लेना पड़ता है ठीक है और आप देख रहे हैं यहाँ पर बेस बॉल बेट पर अलग अलग पॉइंट्स हैं यहाँ पर व्हाइट डॉट देख रहे हैं तो व्हाइट डॉट पर अलग अलग डिस्क्रिट मशीन कर रखी है हमने यहाँ रिस्पॉन्स लेते हैं ये इम्पैक्ट हमारे से एक्साइट कर रहे हैं तो हम मॉडल टेस्टिंग में कई सारे तरीके हैं मॉडल टेस्टिंग के ठीक है तो हम इम्पैक्ट हमारे टेस्टिंग के बारे में आप मैं आपको बताता हूँ एप्लीकेशन तो बहुत हैं ब्रॉड एप्लीकेशन से आप इंडस्ट्री में जाएंगे तो आप जहाँ भी वाइब्रेशन टेस्ट पर काम होता है तो ये इक्विपमेंट काम आते हैं एयरक्राफ्ट ऑटोमोटिव इंडस्ट्री कंज्यूमर प्रोडक्ट्स आप देख रहे हैं सारे वेराइटी है कंज्यूमर प्रोडक्ट्स में मॉडल टेस्टिंग हो रही है अब ब्रीफ केस देखो ब्रीफ केस भी मॉडल टेस्ट करते हैं स्ट्रक्चर टेस्ट करते हैं तो होल कार पर आप होल बॉडी टेस्ट करते हैं उसकी वेरेबिलिटी निकालने के लिए तो इन इंस्ट्रूमेंट का काफ़ी यूज होता है सिविल स्ट्रक्चर स्पोर्ट्स इक्विपमेंट सभी में इसका एप्लीकेशन है अब हम देखें अगर हमें एक बीम पर मॉडल टेस्टिंग करना है बीम पर हमें मॉडल टेस्टिंग करना है एक बीम है मैंने आपको बताया कि अगर मुझे केवल नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी निकालना है तो तो जस्ट देखिए क्या किया है मैंने यहाँ पर अच्छा ये शेखर एक्साइटर वाला है ठीक है ठीक है ये शेखर एक्साइटर लगाया है यहाँ पर इस पॉइंट पर और अलग अलग पॉइंट से मैंने एक्सलोमीटर लगाए अब क्योंकि मुझे मॉडसअप चाहिए डिस्प्लेसमेंट मीटर चाहिए तो मुझे इतने एक्सलोमीटर लगाना पड़ेंगे ठीक है उसका एक अल्टरनेट सोल्यूशन ये हम बताएंगे आपको ठीक है कि हम कम एक्सलोमीटर एक सिंगल एक्सलोमीटर के साथ कैसे वर्क कर सकते हैं लेकिन आप एक्साइड कर रहे हैं एक ही पॉइंट पर और आपको अलग अलग पॉइंट से रिस्पॉन्स चाहिए तो हम उतने हमने एक्सलोमीटर लगा दिया हमारे पास है तो इनका जो आउटपुट होता है हम यहाँ से एनालाइजर में डाल देते हैं केबल से और जो जो फोर्स लगा रहे हैं उसको मेजर करते हुए हम एनालाइजर से एनालाइजर में इनपुट कर देते हैं और एनालाइजर एनालिस करते हैं तो एनालाइजर क्या करते हैं ये साउंड आया ना ये हमने जो इसमें फोर्स इनपुट दिया रैंडम सिग्नल वाइट नाइस एक्साइटेशन अब देखिए बहुत ही डिटेल टॉपिक है ऐसे तो हम पूरा नहीं कवर कर पाएंगे लेकिन आप इतना समझ लीजिए कि जो रेंडम एक्साइटेशन होता है वाइट नाइस एक्साइटेशन होता है ये ब्रॉडबैंड एक्साइटेशन होता है ये बहुत एक, एक लंबी
आपको बताऊं मैं अगर कॉन्सेप्ट बताऊं अगर मैं आपको देखिए अगर हम इसको इस बीम को अगर मैं हार्मोनिक एक्साइटेशन दूंगा तो इसका एक सिंगल फ्रिक्वेंसी पर रिस्पॉन्स आएगा ठीक है लेकिन हम इसको, इसको अगर वाइट नॉइस एक्साइटेशन देंगे तो इस सिंगल फ्रिक्वेंसी का जो एफिफ्टी बनता है ऐसा बनता है सिंगल पीक लेकिन मैं इस बीम को अगर मैं वाइट मेजर करते हैं शेकर एक्साइटर की हेल्प से ठीक अब इम्पैक्ट एक्साइटेशन से हम कैसे करते हैं ये काम ये मैं आपको बताता हूँ ठीक है देखिए शेकर एक्साइटर का डिसएडवांटेज क्या है कि ये हैवी होता है उसको मूव करना एक पॉइंट से एक दूसरे पॉइंट पर मूव करना डिफिकल्ट होता है तो इसका अल्टरनेट सोल्यूशन है कि हम इम्पैक्ट हेमर यूज करें इम्पैक्ट से हम अलग अलग पॉइंट पर एक्साइट कर सकते हैं इसको मूव कर सकते हैं बहुत ईजिली और हम इससे मॉडल टेस्टिंग कर सकते हैं ठीक है तो क्या करते हैं इसमें आप देखें कितने सारे एप्लीकेशन कि रोटर शॉफ्ट पर मॉडल टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं इम्पैक्ट हेमर से ये है ना किसी फिंस पर कर रहे हैं ठीक है यहाँ पर किसी स्ट्रक्चर पर कर रहे हैं ये एयरक्राफ्ट बिंग पर कर रहे हैं तो अलग अलग तरीके के स्ट्रक्चर पर बहुत ही कॉमन यूज है अगर आप देखें वाइब्रेशन टेस्टिंग में इम्पैक्ट हेमर का इम्पैक्ट हेमर से हम जब एक्साइड करते हैं तो हमें क्या करते हैं कि हम हिट करते हैं जैसे टिक किया ना ये वो हमने एक पॉइंट पर रिस्पॉन्स मेजर किया यहाँ पर अब हमें बहुत सारे एक्सीटर नहीं लगाना हमने एक्सीटर एक ही लगाया हम रिस्पॉन्स एक्साइटेशन पोजिशन चेंज कर रहे हैं यहाँ हेट किया फिर थर्ड पॉइंट पे हेट किया ऐसे हेट करते जाएंगे ये और हमें रिस्पॉन्स मिलता जाएगा और इसके बाद बस ये इस तरह से हम इसमें हमने मॉडशेप रिकॉर्ड कर लिए ठीक है क्योंकि आपके लिमिटेड एक्सीटर एक ही एक्सीटर उससे भी काम चल जाएगा हम उससे भी हम मॉडशेप एफ आर एफ फ्रिक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स फंक्शन रिकॉर्ड करते हैं फिर एनालाइजर में हम मॉडशेप निकालते हैं ओके यहाँ पे कोई क्वेश्चन हो तो मॉडल एनालिसिस के बारे में बता दिया मैंने आपको अब ये डोमेन अलग अलग होते हैं वाइब्रेशन टेस्टिंग करते हैं तो टाइम डोमेन फ्रिक्वेंसी डोमेन मॉडल डोमेन देखो टाइम डोमेन फ्रिक्वेंसी डोमेन और मॉडल डोमेन मॉडल डोमेन मतलब हम मॉडशेप में बात कर रहे हैं मॉडल डोमेन एम ओ डी एल मॉडल डोमेन तो अलग अलग डोमेन में अलग अलग तरह से एनालिस करते हैं लाइक दिस इज द टाइम डोमेन में हम कैसे सिग्नल चेंज हो रहा है फ्रिक्वेंसी डोमेन में सिग्नल कैसे चेंज हो रहा है अलग अलग मॉड्स ओके और मॉडल डोमेन में हम मॉड वन के लिए कुछ मॉडल है मॉड टू के लिए कुछ मॉडल है मॉड थ्री के लिए मॉड्स की बात करते हैं वॉट इज द नीड ऑफ मॉडल एनालिसिस कई काफी सारे एप्लीकेशन हैं तो यार हम एडमिट करते जाए Ensuring structural integrity requires knowledge of dynamic characteristics. आपको जानते हैं अगर रेजोनेंस कंडीशन से अवॉइड करना है मशीन को रेजोनेंस ना हो और उसके लिए आपको मॉडल टेस्टिंग करना होगी नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी निकालना होगी जिससे कि आप रेजोनेंट कंडीशन को अवॉइड कर सको ठीक है मॉडल एनालिसिस हेल्थ इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग सिस्टम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सिस्टम की आपको कैरेक्टरिस्टिक निकालना है उसकी क्या खूबियाँ हैं उसके क्या क्वालिटीज़ हैं उसके क्या वैल्यूज़ हैं फ्रिक्वेंसीज की ये निकालना है अगर आपको तो हम मॉडल एनालिसिस परफॉर्म करते हैं पॉसिबल रेजिडेंस रेजिडेंस बता दिया मैंने आपको डायनेमिक डिजाइन एक टॉपिक है अभी अपने आप में एक रिसर्च एरिया है फाइनल एलिमेंट मॉडल ऑपरेटिंग रिसर्च टॉपिक है एक लाइक डायनेमिक डिजाइन आपका एक रिसर्च टॉपिक है कोई एक स्ट्रक्चर है उसको हमें मॉडिफाई करना है अपनी रिक्वायरमेंट के हिसाब से फॉर एग्जाम्पल जीरो जीवन मशीन उस उसमें कुछ ऐसे चेंजेस हुए कि इट इज यू नो कमिंग अंडर रेजोनेंट कंडीशन नाउ वी नीड सम 
मॉडिफिकेशन लेकिन मॉडिफिकेशन कैसे करें एक्चुअल मशीन पे हम मास एड कर करके देखेंगे एड कर करके देखेंगे तो बहुत टाइम लगा लगेगा तो हम क्या करें एफ मॉडल जो रिलायबल एफ मॉडल है उस पर हम चेंजेस करके देखें कि इसमें कैसे चेंजेस आ रहे हैं हमारे रिक्वायरमेंट के हिसाब से प्रैक्टिस कहाँ आ रही है कहाँ नहीं आ रही ये देख लें तो डायनेमिक डिजाइन डिजाइन फॉर वाइब्रेशन इस फील्ड में भी इसका एप्लीकेशन है मशीन पर तो हम कैसे जो है इसको रिस्पॉन्स कैसा मिलता है हमें चेक करना है तो ये स्ट्रक्चरल हेल्थ मॉनिटरिंग कंडीशन मॉनिटरिंग में भी हम मॉडल एनालिसिस को देखते हैं क्योंकि जब फॉल्ट्स आते हैं किसी भी मशीन में तो फॉल्ट्स के कारण जो फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी होती है मशीन की लोकली या ग्लोबली जैसे भी है वो चेंज होती है और जब स्टिफनेस चेंज होगी तो नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज चेंज होगी नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज में जो चेंज आ रहा है उसको इंडिकेटर मानकर हम फॉल्ट्स को भी मॉनिटर कर सकते हैं बाई यूजिंग मॉडल एनालिसिस ठीक है तो हम यहाँ चले अगर तो एक रोटो टेस्ट है ये रोटो टेस्ट पर एक्सपेरिमेंट्स कंडक्ट किए हैं एफ एम फाइनेट एलिमेंट मॉडल अपडेटिंग के बारे में मैं आपको बताता हूँ यहाँ पर एक स्टडी है एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टडी है उसकी हेल्प से दिस इज वन रोटर आई आई टी दिल्ली में ये रोटर ने यूज किया था और दिस रोटर इज सपोर्टेड ऑन टू बियरिंग्स लेफ्ट साइड बियरिंग एंड राइट साइड बियरिंग ठीक है बीच में एक डिस्क है जिसमें होल्स हैं हम एम्बुलेंस वहाँ से एड कर सकते हैं इसमें ये एक डी सी मोटर है डी सी मोटर से एक कपलिंग है कपलिंग के थ्रू इसको कनेक्ट किया हुआ है एंड वी कैन रन दिस मशीन एट डिफरेंट आर पी एम्स तो जैसे आज मैंने आपको बताया था कि बियरिंग को हम कैसे मॉडल करते हैं स्प्रिंग टेम्पर सिस्टम से मॉडल करते हैं तो हमने इस स्प्रिंग को मॉडल किया हेलिकल स्प्रिंग हेलिकल डैम्पर टॉर्शनल स्प्रिंग टॉर्शनल डैम्पर हमने आपको बताया था कि किसी भी पॉइंट की डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम जो होती है वो ये होती है सिक्स ठीक अब जब हम इसे बीम मॉडल कर रहे हैं इसको तो इसका जो वर्टिकल मोशन होगा उसको सपोर्ट करने के लिए हेलिकल स्प्रिंग लेकिन जो एंगुलर मोशन होगा इस क्रॉस सेक्शन का इस क्रॉस सेक्शन के सपोर्ट्स में नाइजर भी फिक्स और इसका जो रोटेशन होगा उसको मॉडल करना है तो मैं एंगुलर स्प्रिंग से मॉडल करता हूँ इस तरह की स्प्रिंग से एंगुलर स्प्रिंग और एंगुलर डेम्पर ठीक है तो के वाई बाई सी वाई बाई के वाई बाई थीटा सी वाई बाई थीटा इस तरह से हमने मॉडल किया ये समझ में आया हम स्पायरल स्प्रिंग से क्यों मॉडल कर रहे हैं क्योंकि जो बीम है जिनको सपोर्ट हुआ उसको एंगुलर डिफॉर्मेशन को क्या रजिस्टर कर रहा है एंगुलर डिफॉर्मेशन को जो रजिस्टेंस मिल रहा है डेट वी आर मॉडलिंग बाय एंगुलर और टॉर्सनल और स्पाइरल स्प्रिंग एंड द एनर्जी डिसिपेशन इन दैट स्प्रिंग एंगुलर स्प्रिंग वी आर मॉडलिंग बाय स्पाइरल डेम्पर ठीक है तो सारा डाटा दिया हुआ है यहाँ पर क्या क्या लेते हुए पेपर का डाटा है फाइनल एलिमेंट मैच किया एफ ई मैच किया मेजरमेंट पॉइंट्स लिए बेरिंग पॉइंट्स लिए यहाँ पर नोट नंबर्स पता है किन किन पॉइंट्स पर हम व्हाट इज द रेड कंपोनेंट इन द प्रीवियस फिगर व्हिच कंपोनेंट द रेड कलर कंपोनेंट व्हिच इज अराउंड द रोटर हां दैट रेड कंपोनेंट एक्चुअली दिस बीम वाज बीइंग यूज्ड फॉर टू कंडक्ट सम दिस स्टैटिक वाज इज वाज बीइंग यूज्ड टू कंडक्ट सम कंट्रोल एक्सपेरिमेंट्स ऑन रोटर कुछ कंट्रोल के एक्सपेरिमेंट्स से एक्टिव वाइब्रेशन कंट्रोल पर कुछ एक्सपेरिमेंट हो रहे थे तो उसके लिए मैग्नेटिक मैग्नेट्स लगी हुई है यहां पर ये ओके okay. ये मैग्नेट्स हैं और एक्टिव वाइब्रेशन कंट्रोल पर एक एक्सपेरिमेंट हो रहा था वहाँ पर एक ब्रेक चल रहा था तो उसमें कुछ वाइब्रेशन कनेक्ट करते थे कि उसमें क्या था कि जैसे ही वाइब्रेशन किसी डायरेक्शन में बढ़ेंगे अगर तो एक्टिव वाइब्रेशन कंट्रोल के थ्रू इसमें मैग्नेट्स में ऐसे फोर्स होंगे डेवलप अगेंस्ट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ वाइब्रेशन तो उस वाइब्रेशन को वो रिड्यूस कर देंगे okay. एक्टिव वाइब्रेशन कंट्रोल पर एक एक्सपेरिमेंट था उसके लिए मैगनेट्स लगाए हुए थे लेकिन ये जो हमने मैं जो आपको एक्सपेरिमेंट कर रहा हूँ इसमें इसका एप्लीकेशन नहीं है ठीक है इसमें इसका एप्लीकेशन नहीं है तो ये एफ ई एम मैश है ये हमने ट्वेंटी एट नंबर नोट्स लिए हैं या ट्वेंटी सेवन नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स हैं ट्वेंटी एट नंबर ऑफ नोट्स हैं ये 
तो इस तरह से मैं इसकी और जो पॉइंट है मेजरमेंट पॉइंट को रेड कलर में सो किया है यहाँ पर मेजरमेंट पॉइंट रेड जो एस पी एम एस के जो पॉइंट है वो क्योंकि हम मेजरमेंट पॉइंट सभी जगह नहीं ले सकते कई बार हम यहाँ पर डिस्क के ऊपर मेजरमेंट पॉइंट नहीं ले पाएंगे क्योंकि हम कैसे सेंसर को माउंट करेंगे और कैसे हम रोटर वाइब्रेशन नॉन कॉन्टेक्ट सेंसर से कैसे मेजर करते हैं मैं आपको बताता हूँ तो ये जो है बीम पर ये पैरामीटर लिए इनिशियल ठीक है और ये इनिशियल पैरामीटर लिए मास लिया इसका डिस्क का मास तो मेजर कर लिया था डिस्क पर मास से निकाल लिया और बाकी जो पैरामीटर्स हैं इसके डिस्क को मॉडल कर लिया था हमने सॉलिड सॉलिड वर्क सॉफ्टवेयर में इसको मॉडल करके इसके पोलर मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया मास डायमीटर मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ये सब निकाल लिए थे और इनिशियली भी स्टार्टेड बिकॉज वी डू नॉट नो एनी रिजल्ट इनिशियली कि ये जो बीरिंग है ये कितनी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी प्रोवाइड कर रही है और कितना डैम्पिंग प्रोवाइड कर रही है हम कुछ नहीं जानते तो कुछ टू स्टार्ट विथ सब डेटा जो भी लिटरेचर से अवेलेबल है वहाँ से हमने ले लिया था शॉर्ट मटेरियल डैम्पिंग भी का भी एक तरीका है शॉर्ट मटेरियल डैम्पिंग को मॉडल करने का हमने ये फैक्टर लिया है उसके लिए मटेरियल डैम्पिंग को मॉडल करने का ये तरीका है वो फैक्टर लिया तो अब ये वैल्यू सही है कि नहीं ऑल दिस वैल्यूज आर करेक्ट और नॉट उसके लिए हम क्या करें तो हमने क्या किया कि इस का एफ रिजल्ट निकाले और इसी स्ट्रक्चर पर हमने पूरा मेजरमेंट किया एक्चुअल स्ट्रक्चर पर तो जो मेजर्ड रिजल्ट आए आई एन वैल्यूज के मॉडल टेस्टिंग की थी हमने इम्पैक्ट हेमर से तो जो मेजर्ड आई एन वैल्यूज आई हैं देखिए आई एन वैल्यूज क्या होती है आप मैथमेटिक्स में किसी भी हम आई एन वैल्यूज फ्रिक्वेंसी होती है नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी और आई एन मेटर्स से हमें मॉडशेप पता पड़ते हैं ठीक है तो जो इमेजरी पार्ट ऑफ द आई एन वैल्यू है दैट गिव्स अस द नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी और जो रियल पार्ट ऑफ द आई एन वैल्यू है दैट गिव्स अस द डैम्पिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन ठीक आप देखेंगे फिर इनिशियल एफ ई मॉडल जो है हमने जो पहले इनिशियल जो मॉडल है हमारा यहाँ पर ट्वेंटी थ्री नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी यहाँ पर आई फोर्टी थ्री और डैम्पिंग यहाँ पर आई तो काफी ज्यादा वेरिएशन है एरर भी काफी हाई एटी टू परसेंट तक एरर है नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज में ठीक है और डैम्पिंग में तो बहुत ही ज्यादा एरर है अब इसको हम अपडेट करें <coughs> यहाँ पे क्या पता पड़ रहा है कि आपकी जो एफ एम मॉडल से नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी फ्रिक्वेंसी वो हायर साइड है मतलब हमने जो फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी है हमारी एक्चुअल में वो काफी फ्लेक्सिबल स्ट्रक्चर है वो हमने काफी उसमें हायर साइड हायर साइड वैल्यूज मानी हुई है पैरामीटर्स की तो इसको इसके हम कुछ पैरामीटर सेलेक्ट करेंगे आपने देखिए पैरामीटर्स हमने सेलेक्ट किए कुछ लाइक इसकी जो एंगुलर स्टिफनेस थी वाई डायरेक्शन में और जेड डायरेक्शन में और जो एंगुलर डैम्पिंग थी वाई और जेड डायरेक्शन में और जो शॉर्ट मटेरियल डैम्पिंग इनको हमने पैरामीटर्स को सेलेक्ट किया जो जो डायरेक्ट स्टिफनेस थी डायरेक्ट डैम्पिंग थी एक सेंसिटिविटी एनालिस होता है सेंसिटिविटी एनालिस करते हैं हम उसे हमें पता पड़ता है कि कौन से पैरामीटर को हमें सेलेक्ट करना चाहिए अपडेटिंग के लिए और कौन से पैरामीटर को नहीं करना चाहिए और कई बार हम जो स्ट्रक्चर होता है उससे भी हमें आइडिया लग जाता है कि हमें क्या पैरामीटर सेलेक्ट करना चाहिए हम कई बार एनालिस करते हैं उससे भी हमें आइडिया लग जाता है कि किस पैरामीटर में रन हो सकती है और किस पैरामीटर में रन नहीं हो सकती है तो ये सिलेक्शन ऑफ पैरामीटर्स इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट है इसका ये पैरामीटर सेलेक्ट किए अब देखिए फाइंड एलिमेंट मॉडल अपडेटिंग अपने आप में एक एंटायर एंटायरली एक सब्जेक्ट है ये है ना इस पर बुक्स भी हैं उसकी थ्योरी में तो मैं नहीं जाए जाएंगे नहीं लेकिन उसका जो कंसेप्ट है वो मैं आपको बताता हूँ क्या है क्या है कि हमें क्या पता है ये ये कॉलम पता है कि नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी ये मॉडल से आ रही और ये क्या है एक्चुअल में है तो इनका डिफरेंस लिए हुए एंड दैट डिफरेंस ऑफ द नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन उसको मुझे मिनिमाइज करना है उस डिफरेंस को लाइक like ऑप्टिमाइजेशन का प्रॉब्लम है उसको मिनिमाइज करने की प्रोसेस में हम जो है इस डिफरेंस को मिनिमाइज करने की प्रोसेस में एक डेफिनेट एलोग्रेशन डेवलप करते हैं और इसमें हम एक्ट्रेशन वाइज पहले एक्ट्रेशन में इतना रहते सेकेंड एंड बेस्ट ऑन दिस दैट वी विल फाइंड आउट वॉट चेंजेस शुड बी मेड इन दिस पैरामीटर्स जो पैरामीटर हैं इनमें हम क्या चेंज करें उन डिफरेंस को मिनिमाइज करने के लिए यह हमें मिलता जाता है ईच इट्रेशन वाइज तो नंबर ऑफ इट्रेशन को हमने लिया है एक्स एक्सेस पर और वाई एक्सेस पर लिया है परसेंटेज करेक्शन हम पैरामीटर में कितना परसेंटेज करेक्शन करें इसमें भी कन्वर्ज होना चाहिए रिजल्ट जहाँ पर कन्वर्ज होंगे वहाँ पर हम पैरामीटर मान लेते हैं कि हमें इतना परसेंट चेंज करना है <coughs> तो हमें पता पड़ता है इस तरह के ग्राफ से इस तरह के एनालिस से कि हमें किसी की किस किस पैरामीटर में लाइक के थीटा वाई वाई ये जो पांचों पैरामीटर हैं हमें इनमें कितना कितना चेंज करना पड़ेगा सो दैट दैट डिफरेंस बिटवीन दो नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज मेजर्ड एंड एफ मॉडल फ्रिक्वेंसीज आर मिनिमाइज बिफोर अपडेटिंग पैरामीटर हमने ये लिए थे आफ्टर अपडेटिंग पैरामीटर हमने ये लिए अब देखें अब देखेंगे अपडेटिंग के बाद जो पैरामीटर मि
अब पहले तो ये बहुत हायर साइड आ रही थी देखिए अब फोर्टी की रेंज में आ रही थी अब काफी कम हो गई है एरर अब देखिए परसेंटेज एरर तो नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज में लेस देन थ्री परसेंट है नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज में <coughs> लेकिन डैम्पिंग में एरर है डैम्पिंग में लोअर मोड में एरर कम है ठीक है लेकिन हायर मोड्स में एरर बढ़ती जा रही है इसका कारण क्या है इसका <coughs> कारण ये है फिर कि फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी को तो हम बहुत अच्छे से मॉडल कर पाते हैं आज आज भी आज तक जो है हम फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी स्ट्रक्चर की फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी को हम बहुत अच्छे से मॉडल कर पाते हैं चाहे वो यंग्स मॉडल्स के थ्रू हो शाफ्ट की कंटिन्यूम फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी हो चाहे बेरिंग की फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी जैसे हमने देखा है यहाँ पर लेकिन डैम्पिंग मॉडलिंग इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट डैम्पिंग के अलग अलग तरह के मॉडल्स होते हैं और इस पर काम चलता रहता है बहुत सारा रिसर्च वर्क चलता रहता है एंड स्टिल यू कैनॉट से कि एक ही मेकनिक रिस्पॉन्सिबिल डैम्पिंग यू नो एनर्जी लॉस के लिए कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ डैम्पिंग मेटेरियल हमने यहाँ पर क्या कंसिडर किया केवल इसका टेम्पर कंसिडर किया उसके बेसिस पर भी हमने एरर बहुत मिनिमाइज कर लिए उस पर हमें सेटिस्फाई होना चाहिए कि एरर जो थी पहले थ्री थाउजेंड और परसेंट तक थी लेकिन अभी जो एरर है वो आप देखें इस रेंज में एरर है ओके तो नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज में एरर कैसे कन्वर्ट हो रही है देखो आप नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसीज में एरर पहले काफी ज्यादा एरर थी यहाँ पर इस रेंज में लेकिन मिनिमाइज हो गई है कन्वर्ट इन टूवर्ड जीरो डैम्पिंग में एरर्स भी कन्वर्ट हो रही है यहाँ पर अब एक ये किया था एनालिसिस कि ट्रांसियन रिस्पांस हमने मेजर कर लिया था एफ यू मॉडल इनिशियल एफ यू मॉडल का ट्रांसियन रिस्पांस और जो मेजर ट्रांसियन रिस्पांस ब्लैक रेड में है मेजर ट्रांसियन रिस्पांस रेड में है और ब्लैक में है इनिशियल एफ यू मॉडल रिस्पांस तो ये ग्राफ आ रहा है जितना डिफरेंस आ रहा था क्लियरली पता पड़ रहा है कि एफ यू मॉडल जो है गलत है इसके पैरामीटर्स कुछ गलत है जब हमने मॉडल अपडेट किया तो मेजर्ड और अपडेटेड एफ मॉडल का रिस्पांस देखिए वन ओवर द अदर कितने प्रॉपरली मैच हुआ है ये तो दिस गिव्स अस द कॉन्फिडेंस दैट द रिजल्ट्स द नाउ एफ मॉडल इज करेक्ट उसके पैरामीटर्स बराबर सिलेक्ट हो गए हैं और हम उसको आगे डायनेमिक डिजाइन में हो या किसी भी पर्पज के लिए हम उस मॉडल को यूज कर सकते हैं इसी तरह से फ्रिक्वेंस रिस्पॉन्स फंक्शन का प्लॉट देखें यहाँ पर काफी अंतर दिख रहा है पीक्स में ये अंदर देखिए यहाँ ठीक है यहाँ पर अंतर देखें काफी लेकिन एक बार हमने जब अपडेट किया तो देखिए फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पांस फंक्शन कितने ब्यूटीफुली यहाँ पर मैच हो रहे हैं अंतर अंतर पीक्स की वैल्यू पीक्स के जो रिजोनेंस पीक्स में काफी अंतर है लेकिन हाँ क्योंकि डैम्पिंग इतनी सही अपडेट नहीं हुई है इतना बहुत क्लोजली नहीं हुई तो फिर भी क्लोजर आ गए हैं रिजल्ट डैम्पिंग के लिए अब देखिए पीक्स में काफी कम अंतर है पीक्स की वैल्यू में एम्पीड वैल्यूज में काफी कम अंतर पीक्स की फ्रिक्वेंसी वैल्यूज में अंतर काफी कम है तो इस तरह से हाँ हेलो Uh, sir, there is no any uh, practical way to find out the stiffness and the damping coefficient. हाँ, ये practical way तो है मतलब देखिए here actually we are using the updating FPM model and the experiment data. हाँ, हाँ. So uh, we do the coupling and then we find out this thing. So there is no any direct way that uh, we can find out this coefficient. Bearing से coefficient निकाल लेगा ना? Yeah. देखिए डायरेक्ट वे तो है एनालिटिकल तरीके हैं आप देखेंगे अगर बुक्स हैं जिसमें एनालिटिकल मैसेज दिया हुआ है कॉपिशन निकालने का एंटी फ्रिक्शन बेरिंग्स के लिए भी तरीका दिया हुआ है फॉर्मूला फॉर्मूले दिया है और हाइड्रो डाने में जनरल बेरिंग्स होती हैं जनरल बेरिंग के लिए भी फॉर्मूला डाल दिया जनरल बेरिंग के लिए भी फॉर्मूले दिए तो मैथमेटिकली तो हम निकाल पाते हैं ठीक और डायरेक्टली आपको निकालना है तो देखिए एंटी फ्रिक्शन बेरिंग के लिए अगर आप निकालेंगे तो कैलकुलेशन से ही निकालेंगे अदरवाइज दूसरा कोई ऐसा तरीका तो क्योंकि देखिए आप ना स्टिफनेस निकाल रहे हैं तो ये ही तरीका है मेजर्ड एक्सपेरिमेंटल तरीका तो ये है यही है आपके कोई स्प्रिंग हो आपके कोई स्प्रिंग हो तो, तो आप उस पर एक्सपेरिमेंट कंडक्ट कर सकते हैं ठीक है आप अगर कहेंगे कि आप आप बहुत डेलिकेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स को माउंट करके किसी बेरिंग पर आप निकालें इंस्ट्रूमेंट कि इसमें इतना लोड लगा रहे हैं है ना इतना लोड लगा रहे हैं इसमें इतना डिफ्लेक्शन हो रहा है बहुत प्रिसाइज इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन चाहिए ठीक है वो एक तरीका हो सकता है कितना एंगुलर डिफॉर्मेशन आप आप टॉर्क लगाओ बेरिंग पर कुछ है ना उसका कितना एंगुलर डिफॉर्मेशन हुआ वो एक तरीका हो सकता है ठीक है लेकिन ये तरीका ये दिस इज मोर कन्वीनियंट आपको इतना एक्सेस नहीं होता है आपको स्ट्रक्चर में इतना एक्सेस नहीं होता है 
yes but sir the manufacturer hum ko provide kare manufacturer hum ko flexibility is ye provide kare the manufacturer ko dekha nahi gaya hai ki manufacturer is tarah se skip mein damping ki information provide karte hai kya na kya bol rahe hai bataiye the method you show is also good but the major error was to make an experimental setup every time हाँ हाँ देखिए क्या है कि एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेटअप तो आपको अवेलेबल होगा लेकिन इसमें तो इतना आप देखेंगे खर्च अगर एक इम्पैक्ट हेमर है और एक इम्पैक्ट हेमर आप ले लें अगर और एक एक्सलोमीटर ले लें ठीक है और आप ऑसिलोस्को में भी मेजर कर सकते हैं वैसे और एक एन का भी आता है लेब यू सिस्टम आता है लेकिन उसमें ब्लॉक डायग्राम बेस्ट मेथड होते हैं तो वो थोड़ा सा डिफिकल्ट रहता है याद करना है कि एनालाइजर हो आपके पास तो आप ये मेजरमेंट लेना फैसिलिटीज तो चाहिए खैर मेजरमेंट के लिए ये सब फैसिलिटीज लेकिन आप देखिए क्लब कर सकते हैं आप जहाँ भी है ना आजकल आप देखेंगे अगर मेरे मैंने जी एस में कुछ अगर फैसिलिटीज डेवलप करी है यहाँ पर अगर मुझको कुछ इंस्टीट्यूट्स को भी सपोर्ट अगर चाहिए होगा आई एम ओपन और गवर्नमेंट भी चाहती है कि फंडिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स में अगर कोई नियर बाई इंस्टीट्यूट्स को अगर फैसिलिटीज शेयर करना है तो वो हम कर सकते हैं कभी आपको एक्सपेरिमेंट करना है तो वेरी नाइस सर वेरी नाइस बिकॉज इन प्राइवेट कॉलेजेस वी आर इन ट्रैवल काम का फैसिलिटीज दैट इज द मेन प्रॉब्लम काम करना है अगर और काम करने वाले लोग मिलेंगे तो हमेशा हम रेडी हैं करने के लिए है ना आप प्रॉब्लम शेयर कीजिए क्या है एक्सपेरिमेंट कुछ कंडक्ट करना है एक्सपेरिमेंट कंडक्ट करना है तो हम कोलैबोरेट कर सकते हैं कर सकते हैं आपकी हेल्प तो इस तरह से रहता है क्या होता है कि आजकल गवर्नमेंट चाहती है कि जो रिसोर्सेज हम शेयर हों भाई हम एक ही देश में दे रहे हैं रिसोर्सेज शेयर होना चाहिए ठीक है सब लोग काम कर रहे हैं इस तरह से काम करें हम तो ये है भाई ये पीछे इस तरह से हम ये करते हैं इसमें मैच कंक्लूजन्स देखें अगर तो भाई नेशनल टीपल काफ़ी टीचर से अपडेट हुई है डैम्पिंग भी अपडेट हुई है लेकिन डैम्पिंग हायर मॉडल से अगर ज़्यादा थी और डैम्पिंग मॉडल के लिए मॉडलिंग इज वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स सी ना फिर ना डैम्पिंग पर काफ़ी काम भी होता है रिसर्च वर्क का भी होता है तो बता ही दिया सब अभी कितना टाइम बचा है हमारे पास सर वी आर हैविंग वी आर अबाउट टू फिनिश सर ठीक है लंच ब्रेक ऑफ हाफ एन आर इज तो बस मैं इसको ये कैम्बेल डायग्राम बनाया है रोटो डाइम पर एक्चुअली जा रहे हैं हम इसको मैं स्किप कर सकता हूँ एक्चुअली है ना और क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन ले क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन ले सकते हैं इसको तीन चार स्लाइड थी रोटो डाइम वाला पार्ट है एक्चुअली इसके लिए पंद्रह बीस मिनट चाहिए तो हम इसको स्किप कर देते हैं आपका जो लंच टाइम भी मैच होगा कैम्बेल डायग्राम होता है जैसे हम किसी भी रोटेटिंग मशीन के लिए नेचुरल टेक्निक मॉडल निकाल सकते हैं ठीक है तो भाई स्पिन स्पीड देखिए किसी भी स्पिन नॉन स्पिनिंग स्ट्रक्चर की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसीज जो होती हैं वो स्पिन स्पीड पर डिपेंड नहीं करती लेकिन जो रोटेटिंग मशीन होती हैं उनकी नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी स्पीड स्पिन स्पीड पर डिपेंड करती है वही बताया है कि स्पिन स्पीड के साथ अलग अलग मॉड्स में नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसीज कैसे चेंज हो रही है इसको हम बोलते हैं कैम्बल डायग्राम या वॉल स्पीड मैप वो लोग रोटर्स में काम करते हैं रोटर डायनिक्स में काम करते हैं वो लोग ये प्लॉट बनाते हैं एनसेस में एनसेस में ये सब प्लॉट बड़े आराम से बन जाते हैं एनसेस में रोटर डायनिक्स टूल जो है उसमें कैम्बल डायग्राम वाली स्पीड में भी सब बन जाते हैं बड़े आराम से उनके मॉडल भी मिल जाते हैं हमें ठीक है तो इसमें मैंने एक एप्लीकेशन ये था इसका कि जो रोटर रोटर सिस्टम है वही जो रोटर सिस्टम बताया था उसी के अपडेटेड मॉडल को यूज़ करके अनबलेंस फाइंड आउट करना फॉल्ट फाइंड आउट करना मशीन में तो हमने किया था तो मशीन पर नीशियल अनबलेंस जो था वो ये था ठीक है हमने उसको फिर बैलेंस किया मशीन को हमारा अनबेलेंस फाइंड आउट किया फाइंड एलिमेंट मॉडल को यूज़ करके तो रेड कलर जो लाइन दिख रही है अनबैलेंस रॉकेट डिस्क में अनबैलेंस था तो उसमें मास एड किया बैलेंस एंड मास एड किया तो हमने रेड लाइन तक इसको रिस्पांस को लिया है रिस्पांस इन मिलीमीटर इट इज गिवन हियर पॉइंट जीरो जीरो टू फाइव मिलीमीटर तक हम इसमें रिस्पांस एड कर ले आए थे इसको डिस्क का तो हाउ टू यूज अपडेटेड मॉडल फॉर फॉल्ट फाइंडिंग तो ये तभी ऐसे रिजल्ट आए जब हमने मॉडल को अपडेट किया अगर हम बिना अपडेट किए मॉडल को अगर रिजल्ट यूज करते फॉल्ट फाइंडिंग के लिए तो वो पॉसिबल नहीं हो पाता एफ पी एम इज यूज इन मनी एरिया इंजीनियरिंग फॉर स्टेटिंग एज वेल एज प्लानिंग वगैरह ये कंक्लूजन है ओवरऑल है ना काफी जगह सारी जगह आप एफ पी एम यूज करते हो कन्वर्जेंस चेक जरूर आपको लगाना होता है हमेशा आप देखिए करिए कन्वर्जेंस चेक स्टूडेंट्स को भी हमें हमेशा बोलना चाहिए कन्वर्जेंस चेक के बिना एफ पी एम की चीज़ें लाना बात मेरे पास कन्वर्जेंस चेक जरूर बताओ ये तो मुझे हमारे हमको पी जी स्टूडेंट्स को बोलना चाहिए ये बात उनको पता होना चाहिए इसकी इम्पोर्टेंस मॉडल शुड बी चेक्ड इन द लाइट ऑफ 
एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट्स एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट्स अगर निकाल सकते हैं तो बढ़िया है वो ठीक इन केस ऑफ डिविएशन ऑफ एपीएम रिजल्ट्स विद मेजर्ड रिजल्ट्स द मॉडल शुड बी अपडेटेड हमें मॉडल अपडेट करना चाहिए सो दैट्स इट सो थैंक यू वेरी मच सर Uh, if there is any query further query from participant side then they may ask we have 2 minutes anyone uh, most uh, of the participants have already interacted sir, with you sir during the session i think they are satisfied sir one question is this sir uh, yeah please ask uh sir uh, can we go for uh, publication uh, means can we publish a paper means uh, uh, with uh, theoretical value and if you will uh, do a an analysis I means ansys value and uh, theoretical one means is it necessary we have to go for mm -hmm. experimental one only uh bilkul sahi baat hai sir aap dekhiye zaruri nahi hai experimental work karna aise bahut sare log hain jo keval acha charcha jo nikalte hain simulation work सिमुलेशन पर बस ये कि आप जो प्रॉब्लम ले रहे हैं रिसर्च गैप आपको होना चाहिए कुछ रिसर्च गैप आप रखें अगर तो आप केवल सिमुलेशन करके भी बहुत अच्छे पब्लिकेशन ला सकते हैं केवल सिमुलेशन वो बहुत एसीआई एसीआई जर्नल्स में हाई इम्पैक्ट फैक्टर जर्नल जितने भी बड़े बड़े जर्नल्स हैं आप मैकेनिकल सिस्टम एंड सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग देख लें जर्नल ऑफ साउंड एंड वाइब्रेशन है इसमें जरूरी नहीं कि हमेशा एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट हो बट ठीक है एनकरेज वो चाहते हैं एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट वर्क हो लेकिन और सिमुलेशन भी है और रिसर्च गैप है कुछ ना आपका सिमुलेशन वर्क रिसर्च गैप पर बेस्ड है रिसर्च गैप्स पर तो फिर आपका पेपर पब्लिश होने की पॉसिबिलिटी अच्छी होती है सर यहां पे अगर अंडर ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट को कोई एक प्रोजेक्ट देना हो हां रिलेटेड टू वाइब्रेशन सो आपका कोई सजेशन की अभी हम किस पे वर्क कर सकते हैं एट कॉलेज लेवल अंडर ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स को अगर आपको प्रोजेक्ट देना है एपीएम पर ठीक है सबसे पहले तो उनको आप बोलना कि भाई आप जो है एपीएम पर आप उनको बोलना कि देखिए अंडर अंडर ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स को हम क्या एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं कि उनको लर्निंग हो है ना और ऐसे हम बहुत हाई वो रिसर्च गैप लेकर आएंगे स्टूडेंट्स को ठीक है टाइम भी नहीं होता है उतना हां तो हां और उनको हम पहले बोलेंगे भाई तुम एपीएम अच्छे से सीख लो वैलिडेशन करके लाओ और फिर उनके इंटरेस्ट पूछो कोई वो अगर प्रॉब्लम लेते हैं है ना हम क्या कर सकते हैं अब बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम जो आप आपके सब्जेक्ट में है ना लाइक कोई भी आप मैथमेटिक्स ले लें आप उस पर एनालिस करा लें है ना आप किसी स्ट्रक्चर पर एनालिसिस करा लें आप डिजाइन डिजाइन करते हैं जो आप डिजाइन करते हैं काफी लोग करते हैं लेकिन वो वाली प्रॉब्लम ले सकते हैं आप वाली प्रॉब्लम ले सकते हैं और स्टूडेंट्स को भी बोलना चाहिए लिटरेचर पर बेस्ड हमें प्रॉब्लम करना चाहिए और जो भी प्रॉब्लम लें उसको वेलिडेट करें ठीक है ना आप मुझसे डिस्कस करना बाद में मुझे कुछ अगर और आप मुझसे फोन पर बात कर सकते हैं मैं आपको सजेस्ट कर सकता हूँ प्रोग्राम और कुछ भी ठीक है ओके सर ठीक है आप सर मेरा कॉन्टेक्ट शेयर कर देना यस सर यस सर सर है ना एक्जेक्टली प्रॉब्लम में आपको कुछ क्लिक कई बार अभी याद नहीं आ रही है आपको बता भी सकता हूँ प्रॉब्लम किस तरह की प्रॉब्लम लेना चाहिए ठीक है सो इट वाज वेरी नाइस कि आप लोगों ने क्वेश्चंस पूछे क्योंकि ऑनलाइन आज रियली वेरी बेनिफिशियल टॉक सर हां एक्चुअली दिस पोर्शन कुड नॉट बी कवर्ड बाय अर्लियर स्पीकर सर हां बाकी लोगों ने बेसिक फंडामेंटल्स और बाकी सीएफटी का भी बैकग्राउंड दे दिया था जी जी थोड़ा सा पार्ट अभी मिसिंग था बहुत ही अच्छा वैल्यू एडिशन हो गया है सर एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू प्रपोज फॉर्मल वोट ऑफ थैंक्स thank you very much sir for delivering your excellent informative talk in our teacher training program your way of teaching was really very simple and effective you selected sir. very very important topic of finite element method that is finite element model updating and ways to check accuracy of fea results uh, as we know that outputs of any innovative research method tool are very very important it must be cross verified with standard experimental results and must be closer to the actual value so you explained these topics in very systematic manner i am sure that participants must have learned all these topics covered by you and benefited immensely by attending your expert talk on behalf of technocrats group of institution and 
organizing team of Technocrat Institute of Technology Excellence, I express my deep regard and gratitude to you for accepting our invitation and delivering very informative and excellent talk in our FDP teacher training program. Thank you very much, sir. One second. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, welcome, uh, sir. And thank you, sir. Thanks for the thank invitation. Okay. Nice session, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank, you. thank you. Good session. Thank you. thank you very much for thank you. thank you. All the participants are requested to rejoin at 1.20, 1.25 for next session. Next session is again very informative. It is uh, it will be taken by one senior scientist of MP, Dr. Sanjay, Sanjay Panthi, sir. So it is it is again related to FEM, uh, finite element simulation of manufacturing processes. So please join online. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, so I leave now. It's, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's time. Thank yes, sir. Okay, okay Manish, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Great session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Khan, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very good afternoon to everyone present. Uh, this is Dr. Manish yep. Joshi, the co-coordinator of this online AICT RGPV teacher training program on the topic application of finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics using ANSYS in recent innovations in mechanical engineering, uh, being organized at the Technocrates Institute of Technology Excellence Bhopal. Welcome you once again. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you all our next speaker today, Dr. Sanjay Panthi, sir who is going to talk to us about applications of FEA in sheet metal forming. But before that, let me take the privilege to give you a small introduction of uh, Dr. Sanjay Panthi, sir. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Panthi, sir, is presently working as principal scientist in the CAD and simulation division at CSIR, Advanced Materials and Process Research Institute, Bhopal, that is uh, very well known as AMPRI. He's completed his BTEC in uh, civil engineering in 1998 from SATA Vidisha, uh, master's in environmental engineering in 2000, and PhD in analysis of sheet metal forming process using finite element method from RGPP Bhopal in 2010. So I received the junior research fellowship and senior research fellowship from CSIR for pursuing his PhD research work as well. Sir has more than 35 SCI and Scopus Index uh, research papers to his credit. His specialization is simulation and modeling, material testing, mechanical characterization, and ANN, etc. Today, sir, will be delivering a technical session on application of finite element analysis in sheet metal forming. May I very humbly request uh, Dr. Sanjay Panthi, sir, to kindly start this session, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Manish, sir, for a nice you, introduction. Thank you, sir. And first of all, I would like to thank for the organizers, Duviri uh, sir and Josie sir for inviting me for this lecture. And Thank good you. afternoon, all the participants. So today I have to give lecture on that uh, some finite element analysis or the application of the finite element analysis, particularly in the sheet metal forming processes. So may I share the screen, Matt? Yes, sir. Yes. So the topic uh, that was given by organizers to me that the application of the finite element analysis in the sheet metal forming process. Uh, myself, Dr. Sanjay Panthi, working as a principal scientist in the CSIR MPRI, as uh, Manish sir already told during the introduction. So it is one of the laboratory of the CSIR that is situated in the MP. So it is the only the one laboratory of the CSR, which is in the MP and the uh, Chhattisgarh. So previously that was, it is known as a regional research laboratory. So in the 2006 around name has changed and now it is known as MPRI, that is the Advanced Materials and Processes Research Institute. So this is the general overview uh, 
my presentation so in this presentation just i will give the some brief uh, introduction of the manufacturing process which major which have the major part of the metal forming process so that includes the bulk the formation process and the sheet metal working process so i am giving the brief introduction uh, the, the theoretical or the general information about the this process then uh, i have some slides on the finite element analysis so that is not the because uh, it is not my the uh, lecture part so i will give only the four five slides the basic of the fem basic advantages and the application of part of the finite element analysis then i will uh, show some of the research work that we have carried out uh, at my laboratory and the stretch planning process sheet metal bending and planing process deep drawing process and if time permit then i will so also show some results on the electromagnetic forming that is also the advanced manufacturing process that is generally used using nowadays uh, in the sheet metal forming as well as for the joining for the similar and the dissimilar materials so now it, that the electromagnetic forming is a, that the advanced uh, technique that is using in the various manufacturing industries so it is my the overview of the presentation so in the first that the manufacturing process if we generally see that the man, in the manufacturing process we generally get a uh, material that is generally shapeless or the simple geometry that material we have to convert into the useful part that may be applicable for the users or the industries so when we manufacture these parts so that has a some condition or that they should have or that they should fulfill the certain condition like they should have the shape that is the required shape size accuracy and the tolerance that should be the within the permissible limit and the appearance should be good and the properties so properties into both mechanical as well as the physical so these properties should be satisfied by that component that have manufactured so manufacturing processes has a wide variety of the methods so we can classify these manufacturing process into the some four to five categories based on that their characterization or so we can classify these manufacturing process so you can say we can say that it is the first process in which we generally use the casting to make some components or to make something got for the further processing so melt extrusion die casting and placing of the metal powder these are the some of the methods that comes under the primary shaping process that comes under the second the metal forming process so any process that involves the plastic deformation plastic deformation means that beyond the elastic elasticity comes under the metal forming process so any process that involves the plastic deformation comes under the metal forming process then the metal cutting processes so cutting processes also we can say comes under the metal forming process because it also involves the plastic deformation so such as the sawing turning milling and the branching where a new shape is generated by the removing materials so it is the cutting process then the some of the treatment or the metallurgical parts involved in the manufacturing process so metal treatment processes such as the heat treatment anodizing and surface hardening where the part remains essentially unchanged in shape but undergo change in the properties or the appearance according to the requirement of the product or the user so to improve the property we generally carry out this heat treatment and the other processes the joining processes so joining comes under uh, it includes the mechanical joining as well as the metallurgical joining so mechanical uh, joining is generally used for in the fabrication industry by using the riveting shrink fitting or the mechanical assembly while the metallurgical metallurgical joining uh, 
uh, includes the welding and the diffusion point. So these are the general classification of the manufacturing process. So my work that is the sheet metal forming comes under the metal forming process. So I will discuss some more about the metal forming process. So metal pro forming process. So I have already told that it comes any process that can, that involves the plastic deformation comes under the metal forming a process. So it has the tools that generally call the die or the punch sometimes. So punch is generally uh, take part into the deformation of the material into the die. And the matter takes a shape determined by the geometry of the die. So these are the metal forming. And these are the some components uh, which are manufactured by the process of the metal forming. So these are the some four or five components you can see. So now if we divide the metal forming process, so that actually involves the plastic deformation. But it has also the different types of the process. So it can be divided into major two parts, the, the bulk metal forming and the sheet metal forming. So there is a difference between the bulk metal and the sheet metal forming. In the bulk metal forming, generally the surface area to volume ratio is very low, while in the sheet metal forming, it is just opposite and the surface area to volume ratio is high. In the bulk metal forming, generally the initial plate or the initial material have the thickness more than the 6 mm. While in the sheet metal forming, it is uh, generally the 0.4 mm to the 6 mm. And uh, in the bulk metal forming, generally the mostly processes are the uh, rolling, forging, extrusion, drawing, are generally used to convert the material into the design set. While in the sheet metal forming, drawing, cutting, bending, these are the process used to manufacture the components. So if uh, we see from the material point of the view or the material property of the point of view. So if we uh, if generally see that the material have the elastic and the plastic part both. Are. So in the bulk metal forming, we, that uh, elastic, elastic recovery is negligible because the major deformation takes place in the plasticity or the major change in the uh, area of the, that the component. While in the sheet metal forming, that the elastic recovery, that is the very important because it affects a lot of during the manufacturing. And the spring back, that is the uh, one uh, failure, we can see failure or the drawback in the sheet metal forming, that is highly depends on the elasticity of the material. That depends on the elastic recovery of the material. So bulk metal forming generally uh, um, carried out in the hot, warm and the cold condition. While the mostly uh, sheet metal forming processes uh, carried out on the cold working conditions. Here is the uh, third one difference is the significant change in the cross section. That is the thickness or the bit and the shape. So it is the uh, very much change in the cross section while in the sheet metal forming only the shape get going to the change and not the cross section of the uh, initial sheet. So it is the major difference and the production rate slow while in the production rate is the higher and faster in the sheet metal forming. So these are the major difference between the bulk metal forming and the sheet metal forming that comes under the metal forming process. So these are the sum uh, of the process that the rolling, forging, extrusion, drawing comes under the bulk metal forming process. So it is the some uh, basic of the rolling that the compression process to reduce the thickness of a slab by a pair of the rolls. So here the uh, material thickness is reduced by using the roller uh, during the manufacturing. So these are the some components which we can convert by or we can manufacture by the rolling process. These are the some examples here. So, so bloom, slabs, flats, slab is converted to the plates and the bloom or the initial board comes in structure shape. So this is the rolling process. Forging, forging is generally use the compressive force to deform the materials. 
So compression process performing between a set of the opposite types. So these are the some components that are manufactured by the forging extrusion in which we generally reduce the cross section area by squeezing the metal between the types. So this is the some simple one component by the component that is manufactured by the extrusion and the wire drawing to reduce the size of the wire or the used in the various applications. So drawing and pulling while in the extrusion we push the material while in the drawing or the wire drawing we generally pull the material to get the final product. Sheet metal forming. So in the sheet metal now comes to the sheet metal forming method. So in sheet metal forming process an initially simple part that is the sheet blank is plastically deformed between tools to obtain the desired final configuration. So in the uh, bulk metal forming, that is the initially the, it may be the shape of the rod or the slab, but here is the initial material in the sheet blank. So in the sheet metal working, forming are related operation performed on the metal sheets, steps and the coils. So often it is also called the press working because the presses perform these operations. Parts are called the stamping and the easel tooling at the punch and the die in this process. So this sheet metal manufacturing process is generally applied in various industries. It may, uh, if you see the uh, automobile industries that the bumper or the bonnet and the so many sheet parts are involved in the automobiles and the trucks, airplanes, railway cars and locomotive farm and construction equipment. So wherever the sheet involved, so you will see that in every industries, I think so, we use the sheet metal forming process to manufacture the components. So it can be broadly uh, classified or they divided into the more uh, major four categories that is cutting, bending, drawing and the sheet metal operation that not performed on the faces. They are also the some processes which is not performed on the face. So cutting, there is some network issue i think there is some technical issue from sir's side you can write in chat box I think Sir has lost his connection. Please bear with us. We're trying to solve the problem.
हेलो यस द्विवेदी सर सॉरी ड्यू टू द नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम So now am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. So shearing, blanking, and the punching. Uh, these are the some cutting processes generally used in the sheet metal industries. So shearing in the shearing the sheet metal cutting operations along. Again, there is some technical issue. Sir, 
So your screen is visible with this, but there is no audio. Now am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the screen, okay. the screen is also visible, sir. Now it's okay. Yes, sir. Please continue. So in the explosive forming, we generally use the explosive to manufacture the components. So explosive charges cause a shock wave whose energy is transmitted to the force part into the cavity. These are the, the, I'm just telling about the basic or the general information about these processes, which are generally used, using nowadays. And that the electromagnetic forming in which we generally use the mechanical force of an electromagnetic field induced in the birth part by the energized coil. So in this process, we use the high energy that is discharged and that one electromagnetic field is developed that creates the force and that causes the for, uh, deformation of the sheet. So it is generally using nowadays and the uh, very advanced topic which is working, uh, which are using in the different area. So now comes to the defects in the very sheet metal forming process. So bendability is the one uh, defect in the uh, during the bending. In this, so bendability that is the smallest achievable bending radius without a failure of the materials is improved by the heating. It can be improved by the heating or the application of the hydrostatic pressure. Second comes the crack on the tensile surface. So cracking on the tensile surface depends on the ductility of the materials. So it generally occurs that uh, around the center of the seat, when the ductility is adjusted, so crack exists, or the crack takes place at the center of the seat. Now third one is the spring make in the bending, or the spring and the seat metal bending process. So that it is the major uh, problem in any seat metal uh, bending process. That the spring back, what happens in the spring back increase in included angle of the bend part relative to the included angle of the forming tool. So generally the parts which we are we are going to manufacture have the large area than the angle of the die. So that takes due to the uh, elastic recovery of the materials. So reason for the spring back is the only the elastic recovery of the materials so in the when bending pressure is removed or the bending load is removed elastic energy remains in the bend part causing it to the recover partially towards its original shape so that spring back is majorly depends on the various factors it includes the spring back angle puncture radius die radius die bit bend angle type of materials and the different material properties involved that affect the spring back in the sheet metal forming process. Defects in the drawing process. So wrinkling is the major uh, defects which be occurs in the deep drawing process. It generally comes uh, due to the compressive force, existence of the compressive force in the formation uh, during the forming. So occurs due to the compressive buckling in the circumferential dimension. That is the wrinkling in the flange. 
while the second is the wrinkling in the wall taking place when the wrinkled pulse is uh, flange is drawn into the cup or if the clearance is the very large so these are the some defects in the sheet metal bending and the drawing process so these are the some uh, picture of the failures which generally takes place in the sheet metal forming processes so these are the some advantage of the sheet metal parts that the so excuse, me. Uh, excuse yes. me sir sir yes. there is some problem with your presentation actually we are seeing the uh, the Same. old slide that is explosive forming still yes sir yes sir slide is not changing sir yes sir. slides are not changing okay now i will stop and then again share the yes sir Now I am showing the advantage of the yes, sheet sir. metal part. Yes, sir. 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 This, this is right. Now. Okay. So these are the some advantages of the sheet metal parts that uh, it has the high strength, good dimensional accuracy, good surface finish, relatively low cost, and the full large quantity economical mass production operations are the available. So some variables which affect the sheet metal forming processes. That the metal properties, that the resistance in temperature, that is in the bulk metal form process, ductility of the material, fracture resistance, strain hardening, yield strength, plasticity, and the process variables such as temperature, friction, lubrication, deformation rates. So these are generally the basic uh, information about the sheet metal and the metal forming processes. now next i'll show some why it requires the fem now so how will we design these components so how will we use uh, which process will we use to manufacture these components so basic question comes the how will you design these components which we have seen in the previous slide so generally we see uh, we use the three approaches for in the designing this is the analytical methods or the analytical uh, uh, formulas available or the second is the numerical methods and the third is the experimental methods so these are the basic approaches we generally use in the designing of these components so there is some difference between the in these three methods in the analytical methods we get results the 100 percent with the accuracy of the 100 percent it is the classical approach that very old one but it gives only the one results that comes in the closed form solution because one equation will be available so it will give definitely for the one uh, answer or the one uh, design so analytical uh, method has the some limitation that has the applicable only for the simple problems you can apply this analytical approach for the simple problems you cannot apply it for the complex problems and the, so it is the basic uh, drawback of the analytical so you cannot apply this analytical tools to the complex geometries second comes to the numerical methods so it is the mathematical representation of the physical problems so it involves the mathematical representation of the physical problems. So it always gives the approximation uh, or the approximate results because it depends on the various assumptions. So it always gives the approximate results. So it applicable even if the physical prototype not available. available. So if you imagine any uh, drawing or the uh, component, so you can apply by help of the numerical methods by using the mathematical presentation 
So uh, the real life complicated problems, you can apply it for any complicated problems and the results cannot be believed. That is the one, uh, that is also one drawback in the numerical methods. So that is the results cannot be believed blindly. So you have to verify or the validate these results by the experimental approach or the some analytical approach. So numerical methods generally involves the finite element method, CFD that the fluid dynamics. So these are the different numerical methods nowadays available. So we can use these methods in the design. Third approach comes the experimental methods. So that is the actual measurement and be generally carried out in the laboratory. So actual measurement, time consuming and the needs the expensive setup. Applicable only if the physical prototype is available. So without physical prototype, you cannot apply the experimental method. While in the numerical methods, you don't have the physical apply, but you can uh, design that problem. Results cannot be believed. Excuse me, sir. Sir, please okay. check the slide once again. The same slides of the advantages of the sheet metal parts I am seeing here. It is requested to please change the slide. Thank you, sir. Better to solve any problem. सर तो आप आपका वीडियो बंद कर दीजिए यानी कि थोड़ा सा आपके नेटवर्क में जरा प्रॉब्लम रहेगा आपका वीडियो बंद कर दीजिए यानी कि ताकि हो 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 जाएगा सर ओके आपका वीडियो बंद कर दो यानी कि स्लाइड आपके नेटवर्क में इशू रहेगा शायद सर वीडियो मेरा ऑलरेडी बंद है सर नहीं नहीं आपका वीडियो बंद कर दीजिए हां सर मेरा वीडियो ऑलरेडी बंद था सर यस सर ये एक बार फिर स्लाइड शेयर करना पड़ेगा लग रहा है तो फिर से चेक कर लीजिए सब चेंज कर ओके ओके आई विल चेंज स्लाइड नंबर 46 आई थिंक सो यू प्लीज नो आई हैव वन फॉर द नेक्स्ट आई थिंक सो एफएम यू डिडंट गेट एनी इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट एफएम नो सर Now it is okay. Yes, it is visible now. So I am yes. just uh, telling about the uh, difference between the analytical methods, numerical methods, and the experimental approach. So these are the some basic difference in these approaches. So in the previous, this we generally uh, design the component by using the, the hand sketching, then produce parts by manufacturing that part and then the structural test or the whatever the test we have to perform that uh, component and the final after final review we generally go again for the first and the hand sketching so this is the procedure generally used in the past nowadays that the due to the fpm or the numerical uh, advancement we generally use the introduce the fpm analysis uh, after cat design so nowadays uh, hand sketching after or the nowadays hand sketching is not also not required so you can directly go for the cat design you, you can go and then take the part the fem analysis and fem after fem analysis you can see the results and again you can change in the cat design and again go for the analysis and after completing the fem when you satisfy then go for the part manufacturing the part and then go for the final test so nowadays we are using the finite element analysis or the any numerical approach in the analysis so if we see in the ap analysis procedure by the software so i'm not telling about the theoretical but it is the procedure that involved in the software so it uh, consists the three steps preprocessor processor and the post processor in the preprocessor we generally uh, define the geometry and define the material properties define the boundary conditions and the pre-processing condition while in the processing condition processor that is the analysis one generate the element shape function calculate uh, some uh, calculate transformation matrix and that there are large matrix analysis is carried out and uh, then after processing we get some results and 
uh, that results we have to check out according to our uh, requirement and the post processing in which we generally see the results in the either form in the tabular form or in the uh, contour forms so in the post processing print of plot contours of the stress components and the prints of plot contours of the displacements so these are the various involved in the uh, steps involved in the fp analysis by the software of any process some of the advantages that uh, of the fpa that is visualization visualization means uh, you can visualize everything in the fpa design cycle time reduce number of prototype is reduced and the optimum time design or the optimum design can also be the reduced by using the fpm the work generally we have uh, we are carrying out or the we have carried out at the empery in the different area uh, by using the finite element analysis so we have uh, used this finite element analysis in the metal forming process blast impact and the crash analysis fracture analysis uh, in the uh, metal form analysis to see the deformation behavior of the form electromagnetic forming and the metal casting so these are the different approaches uh, or the different areas in which we are working or the we have carried out work by using the finite element analysis <laughs> so here is the one uh, of the work that we have uh, carried out uh, so is it now visible the uh, i am showing the introduction of the flanging process and its types no sir actually at present slide no. showing advantages of fe okay so i think so presentation mode it is not working yeah somewhat ha uh, i think so i have to show in this form okay so the other advantage i have shown and work at the empery so that we are working in this area by using the finite element analysis so now i am showing the stage planning process that work has we have carried out by using the fpm so if we see one of the uh, introduction is that flanging process so flanging process in which we generally bend the seat by the 90 degree i think so now it is visible huh? no sir actually screen is not shared i think sir please share again now is it visible yes sir yes sir so visible a, yeah that's so, so now i am introducing the finite element analysis of the flanging process which we have carried out so flanging uh, process uh, in the flanging process we generally bend the seat by the 90 degree to form the flange so it can be categorized by the uh, in the different three methods the straight flanging process in which we bend the seat by the 90 degree second is the stretch flanging process in which we uh, use 
to bend the seed to form the curvature of the bending line in the concave shape and the third one is the string flanging in which we generally uh, use the bending line in to form the component of the convex shape so here is the three different cases as on straight flanging stretch flanging and the string flanging so these are the different uh, application of the flanging process so that is also the stretch flanging is also can be uh, divided into the two major category that stretch flanging without hole so that is the non axisymmetric cases and while the second is the stretch flanging with the hole that is the axisymmetric process in which we can perform that process by using the symmetry so axisymmetric uh, problem so here is the some of the uh, general tool assembly or the application of the this stretch planning process so these are the some uh, application of this uh, process in which we uh, manufacture the components in the automobile or the uh, <laughs> components which we generally used in the daily life the flat sheet corrugated sheet automobile front fender cardos etc so in this uh, study we have to perform uh, the fem analysis to predict the crack analysis and the crack initiation that uh, their uh, stress concentration and their propagation with uh, respect to the different parameters and the thinning and the non thin uh, thickness distribution in the sheet during the deformation so it is the major uh, problem to see this the stress variation in the component so in this study uh, we uh, get different parameters according to the uh, process parameters and the metal parameters so in which we take the blank holding force sheet weight die radius different punch profiles and the different blank profiles to perform the process and see the effect of uh, these parameters on the crack initiation and the propagation in the seed during the deformation as well as the circumferential and the radial stress distribution in the during the forming by the fem so these are the uh, major objective to see the effect of each parameter on the process parameter so to perform the finite element analysis first step we have to require the geometry and the second is the material property so because material property actual material property uh, required in the apm simulation otherwise it always gives the a wrong interpretation or the wrong results so therefore we performed that the tensile test on the sheet metal according to the astm and that properties of the tensile behavior or the tensile uh, material properties uh, and defined in the apm software to carry out the apm simulation so first we performed the tensile test on the sheet which we are going to use in the stretch flanging so we find this some material property mechanical material property and which we use in the apm simulation so it is the very methodology part of the apm analysis and the experimental works involves <laughs> the various steps to carry out the a uh, process so apm modeling so we in this study we use the abacus software to carry out the apm analysis so here you can see the apm model and the cad model of the initial geometry so it is the geometrical dimension of the die which we have used in the fem as well as in the uh, experimentals and the second picture that is it is the shown the fem model of the blank holder and the cad uh, model is also shown so cad model not involve the uh, mass while the fem model uh, generally involve the mass so without massing there is no Uh, use of the model in the FEM. So these are the various uh, geometrical dimensions which we use in the FEM modeling. And the different types of the punch, 
uh, we have used to deform the seed to form the stretch flanging. So here also again the CAD model and the FEM model. So we use the different cylindrical punch, two step punch, three step punch, six step punch and the conical punch and the hemispherical punch. So we use the uh, six type of punch to see the deformation behavior of the seed when we use the different type of the punch in the process. So in the initial, uh, and this is the uh, shape of the blank which we have used to see the effect of uh, width of the blank and the shape of the blank on the deformation behavior of the sheet. So it is under the uh, FEM analysis. So if you have if you have the basic idea, so that it includes the master slave assignment that we have to define the contact between the different components or the different geometry. So in this analysis, we considered that the punch and the die and the blank holder behaved like as a rigid material. That means there will be no deformation in this geometry. While in the blank, we considered that is the uh, deformable body and the, that has the properties which is assigned by the tensile test carried on the material. Friction coefficient, different contact properties were assigned between these parts. So this is the place uh, was used to perform the experiment. Because in the FEM analysis or in any numerical analysis, we have to validate the results with the experimental results. So we have performed in our own lab some experiments to validate the FEM simulation results. So these are the some results. So in the in FE in any FEM analysis, first step is to carry out the mass convergence. So in which we use the different types uh, size of the mass to converge the results to see the converge, uh, convergence by using the different mass density. So in the first step, we divide the blank into the different sizes of the element and take, an, uh, take out the mass convergence criteria. So here we can see the different size effect of size of mass on the convergence of the results. This is the effect of blank holding force on the punch load and the radial strength. So here you can see that the crack is uh, seen in the flanging, that the stretch flange, which takes place during the deformation. Here the path one and the path two, two different paths are the showing. There we result uh, where we uh, draw the radial strength and in the sheet after performing the stretch flanging process. So path one considered for measuring the circumferential and the radial strength, while the path two considered for the measuring the thickness of the sheet along the die profile radius. So these are the some comparison of the FEM simulation and the experimental results. So here we can see the first picture that the uh, crack length we compared the crack length in the FEMs by the FEM simulation and the experimental results. So here is the green picture shows the FEM results while on the right side we perform that uh, experimental to validate the result. So here we can see a very good comparison between the simulation and experimental in terms of the crack length. This is the deformation of the seat at the various steps of the punch displacement. So here we can see that the uh, deformation at the 15%, 30%, 45% and 65%. So here uh, deformation behavior is shown at the different percentage of the punch displacement for the seat width, different seat width, 40 mm, 35 mm, 30 mm, 25 mm. So here we can see the major difference in the behavior of the seat uh, during the deformation. While at the 
lower bit seat that is 20 mm it just behave like the straight flange while for the great or the higher bit seat that the deformation is in the curved shape so these are the some results plotted for the punch force with respect to the punch displacement so as the punch moving onwards the force increases with increase in the punch displacement and after certain times or the after certain displacements it get reduces due to the formation of the crack so these are the some stress uh, thinning and the thinning behavior in the seat which takes place during the simulation so control plot for the seat thickness distribution that we can also measure along the path 1 and the path 2 so these are the some uh, thinning and thinning behavior of the seat for the different width of the seat 25 30 35 and the 40 mm rate uh, uh, bit seat so it is again the different die radius in the first slide we have uh, in the first same picture we said the effect of bit while it is the for the different die radius so this is the different behavior of the seat for the different die radius same results we have plotted and the thinning so here also again the validation of the uh, results for the different shape of the punch so we have performed that uh, experimentation by using the same shape of the punch six shape of the punch and the we use the same six type of punch in the fm simulation and then we compare the results in terms of the crack length for the different punch profile so here we can also see in the graph that the uh, results are quite comparable in the simulation and the experimental results so here in this we can see the deformation of the seat with the for the different punch so here we can see that the contact behavior is different for the different punch profile so because the stretching of the material depends on the profile of the punch so here is the sum if you can see if you are able to see that the line shows some small thin line shows the seat while the and it shows for the different punch profile at the 15% 30% 45% 60% of the punch displacement so here the deformation of seat takes place differently for the different punch profile so that can easily predict by the fem and you can see at each step that behavior of the seat so here we can clearly see the behavior of is very different for the each punch profile so these are the same different for the punch profile for the and the deformation of the seat at the different punch profile these are the some results which we have plotted and the effect of profile on the thickness so these are the some results which we wanted to see to manufacture the stretch flange so these are the some plots which i am not going to details and here again the validation of fm simulation for the different punch profiles in this study we use the different punch profile blank profile not the sorry punch profile is a blank we use the trapezoidal uh, form of the blank and rectangular type of blanks and in that also we have compared the crack crack length with respect to the punch displacement and then we compared the results with the experimental results so in that also we have found the very good results so here so some validation and some experimentation work on the stretch flanging process we have carried out and we can see here that we can use the fem effectively to carry out the stretch flanging process or the in the sheet metal forming process and we can compare the results by the 
uh, experimentals, our own experimental or the published experimental results. So we use that finite element analysis effectively in the process of the stage planning process. Now next is uh, Now next process on that, we have carried out work on the sheet metal bending process. So sheet metal bending or the arc bending process. So here is the major problem in, the, in any bending process is the spring back. So spring back is related to the elastic recovery of the materials. So here in the spring, due to the spring back, the precision in the dimension of a formed component is a major concern in any sheet metal forming process because of the considerable elastic recovery during the unloading. So it is generally related to the unloading. So when the unloading takes place, the elastic recovery of the material takes place and the dimension of the form parts get deflected from the dimension of the die. So we can define the spring back with the safe discrepancy between the fully loaded and the unloaded configuration. So it may introduce the surface distortion and unexpected out of tolerance shape due to the elastic recovery of materials. So during loading and the unloading process, the elastic strength releases and the rational stresses redistribute throughout the sheet thickness. Because in the bending, there is the gradient in the stress distribution. One side it is the tensile, on the another side it is the compression. So due to that, that stress gradient, the residual stresses redistribute and the that redistributes through the sheet thickness reaction, so that produces the spring back. So therefore, the spring due to the spring back, the shape of the die is not going to be the shape of the final part. The key is to design the die so that the spring back actually creates the part you want. So that you have to design die in such a way that after removing the load, you will pro you have to produce the part after spring back which you want. So that is a major problem in the sheet metal bending. So that I have already told the factor affecting the spring back. So in this study, the major objective was to the carry out the finite element simulation of the sheet metal bending or the state flanging process in which we use the different thickness of sheet, radius of the die, sector angle, material properties, and other study. And we use the FEM to find, to see the effect of each parameter on the spring back. So application, as I have already told, in the various automobile, aerospace, railway industry. So in this problem, what happened when the radius of uh, some cylindrical part, in this picture it is the cylindrical parts or the spherical parts. If the radius of the structure is very high or if we generally, if we take the seat and we apply the force at the end and join by means of the bending or the riveting. So after riveting or the bending, there will be the very high residual stresses will be the, there and that may cause the failure of the structures. Therefore, we deform the seat first of the desired radius and then assemble. So it is very useful to bend the seat to manufacture the uh, structure which have the large radius like the pressure vessels and the others and the large pipes. So initially, so if we can save the structure by initially bending the seat, but due to the spring back, it is also not easy to manufacture the component or the seat component of the same radius. 
So here this is steady bus carried out. Like the cylindrical, in the spherical structure also, we have to bend the seat, initially bend the seat of the desired shape. Here in the spherical, one again problem is the radius. That way it is not the uniform radius. In the cylindrical structure, it is the uniform radius, while it is the different at the different end. So we manufacture, we convert the sheet into the different component by using the bending process. So these different parts generally called the segments. So because large components, we can also not form due to the limitation of the press capacity and the large radius of the structure. So we design the die so in such a way that the final radius of the structure, that the RF, should be the initial radius plus the spin back. So we should design the initial die that compensate for the spring back also. So in this study, we have carried out the spring back analysis for the different seat process. So that is the main Objected by the prediction of spring back in the sheet metal bundle. While in the previous that the stretch flanging process, we performed the FEM simulation to predict the crack initiation and their propagation. While in this problem, we are mainly focused on the spring back analysis. So in the finite element analysis, in any problem, we record the geometry, material property, their boundary conditions and the displacement entry and the friction there. So these are the basic requirement to implement the finite element analysis. So here, it is the initial geometry in which we use the uh, punch and the die, if you able to see, and that these are the seat which is capped on the die, and the punch is going to use for the compress the seat. So in this, we use the different type of the die radius and here is the enlarged shape of the die end to move the seat over the die smoothly. So it is the so here if you are I will see it is the two dimensional problems. We have not we have not performed three dimensional because it is the cylindrical part. So we can perform on the 2D. So here you can see the die punch and the sheet with the finite element mass. So these are the material properties used in the FEM simulation. Uh, we used, carried out this work on the steel and the aluminum. So here is the properties of the aluminum that we used in the FEM simulation. These are the different boundary conditions and the displacement radius, how we compress the sheet. And these are the different parameters, thickness of sheet, radius of die, sector angle, material of the sheet, friction, radius of the so to see the effect of each parameter on the spring back. So here is not the fracture or the crack will take place. Here will only the take place will be the spring back. So here is the initial condition or the initial geometry which shows the die, punch and the seat. So now you can see if we see, if we define the displacement to the punch, so deformation will take place. So here is that these are the effective stress contours at the 10% of the punch displacement. Here again, we, this is the condition after 20% of the punch displacement. So after moving the punch, you can see also the variation in the stress, effective stress condition. So this whole process is carried out the two dimensional. So here is that you can see 75% of punch displacement and 90% of it. Here is the condition, the difference of the 100 percent of punch, that means that is the condition when the difference between or the clearance between die and punch equal to the thickness of the seat. So it is the that condition. So after forming, so means that seat, your seat have taken the shape of the die. Now we apply more load to compensate the spring back and compress the seat by the 0.11 mm. And then again, we apply more load 0.2 mm. 
because we want to see the effect of this compression on the spring bed 0.2 mm so we have carried out up to the compression of the 0.28 mm so here we can see in this one picture the effect of forming load at the different stages so if we see the difference if you are able to see that the difference in the sheet radius of the sheet and the radius of the die in the first picture so that is the condition at the when the difference between or uh, the clearance between the die and punch will be was the equal the uh, thickness of the sheet but when we compress the or when we apply the more load so you can see the change in the radius effectively and it is taking of the shape of the die in the third picture and the fourth picture in the fourth picture after compression depth of the 0.28 mm so that is the nearly that sheet has taken the shape of the die so if so you can easily see that the spring back depends on the elastic recovery of the material so when you are going to unloading your sheet that will affect the final part so here is the different phases of the sheet at the different condition of the load so here in this picture also you can easily see so here is the different it is a top one is the punch and the here is the die so when we remove at the different condition so your sheet is going to the converges to the your radius of the die so deform sheet at the different load conditions so here you can see easily the difference in the die radius due to the uh, difference in the radius of the sheet due to the elastic recovery of the materials so here this is the uh, stress distribution in the sheet so as the during the bending it is generally the bent side it is the uh, in the upper side it is the compression while in the lower side it is the tensor so here we can see this clearly the stress contours in the sheet during the deformation so these are the some uh, different graph they are plotted for the different uh, study for the here is the different thickness effect of thickness on the spring back so on the left on the y axis there is the ratio of the rf by ri rf means uh, that is the final radius and the ri that is the initial die radius so you can see that even uh, after release of the load the radius of sheet is going more than the two or three times when we remove the load so, with, so we can see the change in the radius with the compression depth so these are the effect of matching properties on the spring bed we have also carried out this study that the effect of the matching property and uh, in that we have carried out the effect of stern hardening exponent effect of peel stress effect of ants modulus on the spring bed so that is also we found that lot of variation and the lot of uh, dependency of the metal property on the in the spring bed here these are the effect of geometric parameters in that we consider the sector angle different sector angle and the thickness of the sheet the effect of friction that is other thing so these are the effect of elastic strain on the so in the sheet during the deformation so now we have to validate as i told the numerical process involve the that is a requirement of the experimentation to validate the results so we have also performed the some experiments to validate the ap simulation results so we have performed that experiments on this space of the 400 ton and these are the different conditions of the bending of the seats and these are the bend plates of the 5 mm uh, which uh, you can see the bend seat of the seat after the different loading conditions and this is the comparison the aluminum copper brass and the miso validation of on experimental results by the apm so which shows that the 
RF by RI ratio to the with respect to the RF by T as a, a linear relationship. So this is the validation with we have also validated the results with the published experimental results. So this is all about the arc bending in which we predict the spinning back. That is also the another case the state planning process in which also we have performed the process to study the spring back analysis. So here in picture we can see the in start condition and the during deformation and the final. And but when we uh, remove the load, so that the font part get deflected from the die. So that is the due to the spring back or or the elastic recovery of the materials. So this is the major objective as to prediction of the spring back. So these are the different parameters which I used. So here is the one movie. So may I put it on the presentation mode, I think. Is it visible? No, sir. Uh, screen uh, shot. Uh, movie is not showing, huh? Yes, sir. So that okay. So now movie is not showing. So actually, this is the initial condition, and uh, after bending, it shows some. It bent to the 90 degree and then get deflected, and the reverse to the. Uh, so there was some spring back take place. So I think so. It is not able to run the movie here. Okay, so it is the one planning process. So that is also, so planning process is just like this one, which I shown in this process. So that is performed by the FEM simulation and different study was carried out. And the comparison with the published results, results were compared with the uh, literature results. And we have found the effect of different geometrical conditions, effect of matter properties, so it is all about that the prediction of a spring back in the sheet metal bending process. In the previous, we have uh, predicted the crack initiation and the failure in the stress bending process. So, so if I have time, then can I show one more? Deep drawing. Uh, we have to conclude now, sir, because next speaker has already joined, sir. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. I think we there. should give five minutes for query session. Okay, participant will want to interact okay. some query. Okay. Okay, no problem. So, so thank you. All right, I think so. I have shown two problems: so the crack in session and the spring back, which are majorly uh, involved in the sheet metal forming. So, participants, please ask some queries if you have. Excuse me, sir. Uh, okay. Sir, very good afternoon, sir. It's a very good, good presentation, sir. Yeah, and uh, we have got a lot of knowledge about the sheet formation, metal sheet formation. It's a very knowledgeable uh, session. Sir, I want to know, okay. sir, uh, basically, basically, you have told me that uh, we, use, uh, we use a shell type element. So why we use a shell type element, whether it is the best and most suitable elements for the analysis of the deep drawing process? A shell element? Yes, sir. Yeah, actually, it is the, uh, depends on the formation of the finite element in the software. Okay. In the, if you, uh, suppose if you want to the thickness variation uh, yes. in the sheet. Yes, sir. So actually in the uh, software, it is uh, restricted you can see the thickness variation with the shell element only. Okay. You cannot see that variation in the thickness by using the solid elements or the three dimensional. So that's why we have to use the shell element to see the thickness variation. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Sir, do you want to ask something? Your mic was on. Okay, 
any other question okay so i think i should conclude now sir uh, it's time to propose what are formal vote of thanks uh, to sir uh, thank you very much sir for delivering very informative and excellent talk uh, although you are senior scientist working at one of the prestigious research organization of government of india which is well known and pre advanced materials process and research institute uh, where you mainly associated with r and d work but the manner in which you delivered your talk reflected as that you have excellent teaching skill also and you are oh, thank you thank you thank you very much but talk you covered the fundamentals of metal forming processes such as bulk metal process uh, forming sheet metal forming then after you covered basic fundamentals of fem procedure used in fem advantages of fem working uh, work we carried out with mpcsir related to fem problems raised by stress blending process you covered and you, you also covered fem modeling of die and punch simulation of procedure of stress uh, blending process uh, spring back Uh, simulation process analysis etc in very effective manner i am sure that the participants have learned all the topics covered by you and got new ideas to pursue their research work in the field of application of fem in sheet metal forming processes on behalf of technocrates group of institutions and entire organizing team of tit excellence i express my sincere thanks and gratitude to you sir for accepting our invitation and delivering extraordinary uh, talk on application of fpm in sheet metal forming processes uh, you delivered you you accepted our in invitation even after your very hectic schedule so once again thank you thank you very much sir uh, thank you dr devi sir thank you sir thank you sir. thank you for inviting me And in future lecture. also, I think I hope that uh, you will accept our invitation, and our participants, our students will get the benefit. Okay, thank you, Manish sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's an it's an honor to have you here, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, th thank you very much for taking the part in the in such a good event. Yes, yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Okay. Very, very thank. Thank you. Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Manish Joshi, the coordinate co coordinator of this online AICT RGPV. teacher training program on the topic application of fea and cfd uh, using ansys in recent innovations in mechanical engineering uh, being organized at technocrats institute of technology excellence bhopal uh, welcome you all again on this fourth day so it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our next speaker today dr udaira sir who is going to talk to us about the fundamentals of cfd and its application it's a revised topic actually so but before that let me take the privilege to introduce him dr uday das sir has been working as an associate prof assistant professor at the department of mechanical engineering at the iit bilai uh, sir did his btech in mechanical engineering from gb pant engineering college in, in the year 2010 he completed his mtech from nit calicut in the year 2012 and then went on to complete his phd in mechanical engineering from iit delhi in 2017 before joining iit bilai He had worked as a postdoctoral research associate at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, Hong Kong. Uh, Dr. Ras sir has more than 25 research papers in various national, international journals of repute and in conference proceedings. His research areas are computational fluid dynamics, thermal comfort, thermal energy storage and management, continuous casting, personal cooling heating systems, thermal protection and uh, protective clothing, inverse heat transfer, etc. Uh, today he'll be delivering a lecture uh, on the fundamentals of CFD and its and its application. So now, may I very humbly request Dr. Udayra sir to kindly start his session, please. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Manish. So I hope I am audible. Yes, yes, sir. sir you are audible. It's an honor okay. to have you here, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, is is the slide visible now? Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. I think it is not there. Not visible. Ha. Huh. It is visible, no. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, today we are going to discuss uh, fundamentals of uh, computational fluid dynamics and a few of its applications. So, actually, this topic was planned earlier, but somehow it was it got delayed. So, uh, sorry for that. Because I, I guess, uh, meanwhile, a few fundamental aspects of CFT has already been discussed. So uh, probably I will uh, skip those part here and I will focus more on other areas. Okay, so and please feel free to ask questions in between also. You can unmute yourself and ask questions so that uh, things become better effectively. Okay, so uh, let's start this. So, uh, so I hope my full slide is visible, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, including the uh, title also, because somehow it is not visible. Yes, sir. Today. Title is also visible, sir. Okay. 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 So today we are basically going to cover. Uh, just give me a second. There is. Um, Hello, sir. Your voice is not coming. Yeah, please, please hold on. Please, please excuse me. Hold on, please. Yeah. Okay. So, is it audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. So today we are basically going to uh, talk about what is CFD, why CFD is required, so what are its importance and application, and then how to approach uh, various problems uh, with the help of CFD analysis, or how to conduct the CFD analysis for different kind of problems so basically we will be talking about the general framework <clears throat> okay so first of all uh, as we know that uh, in this computational fluid dynamics or sometimes we also call it computational heat transfer so we basically cover problems related to fluid flow and heat transfer right and there are a number of applications where uh, we see fluid flow and heat transfer in general right so it involves various uh, kind of problem, including human health, building, right, human body, irrigation, heat exchangers, civil structure. So propulsion, it is almost everywhere. Similarly, there are n number of uh, heat transfer problem where CFD has been applied and it is being applied. Okay, so wherever you have fluid flow and heat transfer aspect in any physical problem, we can basically think about it uh, in terms of CFD analysis also, or we can analyze it to design uh, our systems more effectively, right? And to understand the physical phenomena as well. So, uh, so as we know that any physical problem can be characterized or can be represented in terms of a mathematical equation or basic uh, basic laws. There are basic laws of mechanics which govern most of the fluid flow and heat transfer problems. Right. So any physical phenomena can be represented in terms of mathematical equations. Right. And we know all these basic law of mechanics, especially the uh, conservation of mass, conservation of linear momentum, and conservation of energy. So from there uh, we get this continuity equation, momentum equation, and energy equation. So basically, CFD is all about solving these mathematical equations, which are representing somehow the fluid flow and the heat transfer phenomena. Okay, so, so, so the CFD actually provides uh, the qualitative as well as quantitative prediction of, of the result of any physical problem which involves fluid flow and heat transfer. Right, so how to obtain these results? By representing the physical problem or the physical phenomena which is happening there in terms of mathematical equation or some partial differential equation. So as I discussed earlier, so we have few laws of mechanics which govern those fluid flow and heat transfer, right? So, so this physical phenomena of fluid flow and heat transfer, first is it is represented in terms of mathematical equation or the partial differential equation. And, and in the CFD analysis, in a typical CFD analysis, we basically somehow try to solve those partial differential equation, so which involves 
lot of steps like we first discretize those equations so that we can solve it numerically with the help of a computer or a program and then we have even in this also we need various inputs like uh, what are the boundary conditions right and how which algorithm should be used to solve those discretized governing equations right and how to then post process the result so with the help of these basic three uh, things like mathematical modeling numerical solution or numerical methods and the programming or the software tool we basically try to solve any physical problem and get the qualitative as well as quantitative prediction of results right and since all these problems are being solved in terms of a uh, mathematical equation with the help of computer or a program so we also call it sometimes as numerical experiment so cfd analysis is, or the cfd results cfd analysis is also called numerical experiment sometimes because we are doing some kind of experiment with the help of computer simulation okay so uh, and see there is always some loss of accuracy which we will be discussing later also but at least there are many problems for which we have obtained results and those results are actually very close to the experimental results so if we we can somehow model the problem or the physical phenomena well and since now we have lot of algorithms with us we have enough computer resources okay so we can solve them these problems very accurately if not the if not the accurate very accurately but at least with some approximation we can solve those problems and now it depends on on the type of problem which we are solving but again means uh, in 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 uh, cfd analysis like depending upon the problem you can have 5% uh, uh, matching compared to the experimental results or sometimes even 20% uh, close to the experimental results is also considered good right you can basically uh, claim that your results are 20% 80% accurate and still you can uh, people will accept it you can publish it okay so it depends on the problem now uh, since we can do the experimentation so why we are basically talking about the cfd simulation or why it is important right so uh, there are various advantages associated with numerical modeling or cfd simulation right some of them are listed here so uh, i will let me talk about few of them so as far as variables are concerned so you know that if there is a vent tunnel okay and you want to measure temperature pressure humidity and so on few parameters so you will have to use different probes okay so let's say you have a temperature humidity probe so you can measure temperature then you have let's say a co2 probe and you want to measure the co2 concentration so you will actually use it again to get the data right so so what i am trying to say is that it is basically one parameter at a time or it is a sequential approach okay the execution is usually sequential whereas when we talk about numerical modeling so at each point in the domain or in the region of interest we get all parameter at all time right so all desired parameter can be obtained for all time right so it's a parallel uh, execution where we can get all the parameter at a time right so and as it is uh, obvious that the experiments require more time more skill compared to the numerical analysis right and a major chunk of problem with experimentation is that uh, you need instrument equipment right so uh, now depending upon the problem you I mean these equipment can be very uh, delicate it can be very costly right and if you want to conduct let's say uh, some experiment at different environmental conditions right again you can make a climate chamber and you can simulate different environmental conditions but let's say if you want to do some experimentation under realistic conditions so you will have to carry your experimental setup from one location to another and it's not only about carrying the experimental setup along with the experimental setup you will have to carry everything like the guy who is 
operating this experimental setup okay all those so portability is an issue as far as experimentation is concerned cost is another concern manpower is another concern right space is another constraint so all these uh, disadvantages associated with experiments are not there when it comes to the cfd simulation or the numerical model it one of the major uh, disadvantage associated with experimentation most of the time is that the scale of experimentation right so if let's say i want to do uh, the aerodynamic analysis of a bigger object right so it it's actually difficult to build that because how you will obtain the drag by doing experimentation in a wind tunnel okay so your object is big enough so imagine the size of the wind tunnel so it's going to be huge so such kind of facility are rare, rarely available in very in most of the places and when it comes to india it's more true right so that is a challenge challenging uh, thing whereas in case of numerical analysis now we have good computational resources available not only locally but we have some uh, uh, pan india uh, uh, setup also available where you can run the simulation you can get get the computational time right uh, and then you can actually run your simulation however big it is obviously there is a limited time available right now and as far as error is concerned right so it it is there in both experiment as well as numerical modeling so there there are different types of error which can uh, occur in experiment simul experimental analysis and and the numerical analysis right so uh, as far as experiments are concerned it depends on the type of measuring equipment it Uh, its accuracy right the resolution and the person who is measuring it how experienced he or she is right and similarly there are different set of errors which can occur in case of numerical analysis those are basically the modeling error right modeling error by modeling error i mean uh, how well you are representing the uh, physical phenomena in terms of equation right as i said earlier any physical phenomena or the fluid flow or heat transfer phenomena can be represented in terms of mathematical equation so how many approximations you are taking there how well you are representing you are able to represent the physical phenomena in terms of mathematical equation that that will govern the accuracy of your solution okay so that is where basically the human minds or the fundamental understanding of the subject like uh, fluid flow and heat transfer comes into the picture right without understanding the fluid mechanics and the heat transfer we cannot actually uh, conduct the cfd analysis well because we will not be able to represent the physical phenomena in terms of equation correctly right so that is one source of error as far as numerical modeling is concerned then you can have discretization errors uh, we'll discuss about it later and probably uh, it is already discussed in the finite volume simulation Uh, uh, finite volume session, and then you can have error associated with iteration also. So that we will discuss later. So these are uh, again the comparison of analytical, computational, and experimental results or the approaches. Right. So uh, as far as analytical solutions are concerned, it is only uh, possible for very simple uh, problems, right, or simplified geometry. and it's not possible for non linear problems and most of the uh, actual problems are non linear in nature so so analytical solution is not possible for most of the uh, actual problems or practical problems okay and computational i think computational versus experimental we have already discussed about it okay so what are the other advantages associated with cfd so apart from these advantages there is one uh, very important advantage associated with cfd is that it it provides you a systematic approach uh, during the design and performance analysis phase so let's say if you have a new idea like there is already a machine or equipment or any instrument right and you want to improve it further okay so whether it will work or not right so one approach could be that you manufacture it the revised version of 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 the tool or whatever it is right or device 
and you manufacture it and then you test it right so and hardly it is uh, possible that in in the first trial and error you will get the optimized uh, device right in terms of any any parameter let's say if you are uh, developing a heat dissipation device right so it is hardly possible that within first iteration you will get the optimized design of the heat sink which is dissipating the maximum energy right so it takes time right you 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 learn after doing something right so it it requires trial and error right not one time but multiple times so and this process of basically thinking something and then manufacturing it and then testing it then again going back to the table and developing your cad model then manufacturing it so it it's a long process so cfd helps you there right without developing or without manufacturing uh, the components or the device you can actually analyze its performance whatever idea however crazy it may be right whatever idea you have you just analyze it numerically with the help of cfd simulation or fe simulation whatever it is and then you check whether it it is giving you better performance or not and with the help of cfd analysis or fe analysis you get the result the qualitative as well as quantitative results right so you get lot of interactive graphs fluid flow how fluid is flowing how heat is transferring so by analyzing those results critically you can it helps you in basically improving it further which is not possible most of the time in the experimental analysis right so if you are analyzing let's say a drag okay so it is hardly uh, the fact that you study how the fluid flow fluid is flowing outside the object right so again you will have to use piv or something else which is again not available most of the time right so that way uh, cfd analysis help helps you in minimizing the experimental trials right and it can basically you can come up with the optimized design of your device or the heat sink as quickly as possible so it saves time time resource money etc right and another advantage associated with uh, with the cfd analysis is that uh, you can actually simulate hazardous and difficult conditions okay so which are very difficult to do practically let's say if you are interested because this is a covid season so let's say if you are interested in how this covid spread right so you cannot actually bring covid and see how it is spreading and then you conduct the pv piv study and uh, other techniques there are many techniques to study that how it is basically transmitting in the air or within a chamber right so it is practically difficult so but such kind of hazardous uh, environment let's say you are interested in how a fire is propagating right so again you will have to basically create the fire environment somehow if you want to do it experimentally so which is again dangerous right so uh, cfd provides you an opportunity to simulate those hazardous conditions right uh, and uh, without any actual hazard okay so similarly if you want to if you want to analyze like how a particular uh, physical phenomena uh, will behave in microgravity environment right so you will have to create a low gravity environment right which is again uh, a tedious task a costly affair right but that can be done very easily uh, in 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 these kind of numerical analysis okay so so it is basically a uh, very uh, friendly in terms of uh, simulating various environment and also in terms of analyzing various new concept which come into your mind okay so this is just an example uh, which shows that how cfd can help you in uh, bringing uh, better products in a lesser amount of time right and with lesser amount of heat and trial so all of us i guess know what is led bulb right so 
there are heat sinks uh, below this to dissipate the heat which is generated by uh, within the pcb or by the leds right so now it requires a lot of uh, it it makes the uh, bulb heavier right and it also increase the cost okay so so considering that someone actually thought that why not uh, do it something differently okay so someone came up with this concept that i will put led like this and instead of giving heat sink which is a metal metallic part so that will significantly reduce the, the cost as well as the weight of the bulb right so someone came up with this uh, this idea that i will just put holes at the top and bottom of the bulb okay so now now you may question this idea that it will not work okay obviously the first time when someone is bringing this kind of idea so you will not be able to appreciate you will say that okay it may not work right the amount of heat which is to be dissipated will not be possible because of the natural convection only right so people may come up with different uh, uh, different uh, questions right so in order to convince people that this will work right you need to show them results right so one uh, one thing is that you basically uh, develop it first make a prototype of it and then test it right but it's not that easy like what should be the location of these holes at the top and bottom how many number of holes should be there at the top and bottom and what should be the size of those holes right so there are n number of possibilities right so 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 how much how many times you will actually make a prototype right so it's, it's a difficult task so that can be done with the help of tfd analysis so basically they did some tfd analysis it's a typical natural convection problem right so fluid is entering from the bottom and it it is getting heated and density is decreasing so when it is rising right it will go outside right for both vertical as well as for horizontal orientation and this will provide you result both uh, qualitative as well as quantitative manner so you can convince people that it is able to dissipate this much amount of heat and if it is not dissipating it you can probably think about increasing the size of the hole or the number of holes so that it matches your requirement right so so basically what i'm trying to say here is that uh, cfd provides you an opportunity or these kind of numerical tools actually provides you an opportunity to work on something new or to basically realize the new concept which comes in your mind okay so apart from this the existing processes uh, which happens or which are there in the market or in the industry these uh, kind of computational tool or the numerical modeling is now everywhere right be it design phase be it analysis phase be it manufacturing phase right so there also the the computational solid mechanics and computational fluid mechanics play a major role nowadays okay and what happens is that uh, with these uh virtual prototyping and with the introduction of these numerical tools at different stages of uh, of the production cycle right it helps us in reducing the time to market okay so uh, which is a very crucial uh, uh which is very crucial parameter right uh, say for example uh, uh you can see here that earlier it used to take many years to uh, bring a new car in the market right now let's say if someone is using these kind of numerical approaches or numerical tools at various design stages there are two companies one is using it one is not using it so now the the one which is using it will obviously have an upper edge okay it will basically capture the market by the time the other guy will launch it in the new product in the market right so it it is very critical in the commercial world so uh, cfd and this fea plays a major role there also and as far as cfd is concerned it has gained lot of importance over the past few decades in the especially in the aerodynamic sector right uh, so there are various uh, aircraft manufacturing companies which have developed it which have helped develop 
various algorithm for cfd and they are actually using it for various component of their aircraft okay so uh, you can see that uh, there is a 10 point increase in efficiency in last 30 years right similarly uh, this boeing so it is using basically uh, so many for so many component they are using uh, taking help of the cfd analysis obviously fea also so uh, so now what happens with the use of or the with the introduction of these numerical tools and with the development of these numerical tools over over last few decades what has happened is that this uh, you can actually achieve the higher fidelity as early as possible during the design process okay so it saves lot of time and it reduces the number of uh, trials and errors okay say for example this right hand side it shows that uh, how many uh, wings boeing was tested in 1980s and in 2000 so you can see here that uh, the it has basically decreased significantly over last few decades and it has mainly happened because of the development of of the of the numeric of the algorithms related to cfd analysis and of to uh, the capability of higher computational resources which has grown over a period of time okay so it has significantly reduced this wind tunnel test right and also the production time or the design time so obviously it will reduce the cost and it will increase the profit of the organization right so here uh, there are various components which are highlighted for airbus and boeing uh, where cfd analysis is being used and even in uh, academics also because um, all of us i think are from academic so these uh, these packages these fea packages cfd packages are being used significantly okay uh, over the last few decades and i guess most of us are from mechanical or civil background so we can see here that a uh, lot of I mean, actually it is highest for mechanical and civil right uh, in terms of hours also in terms of packages also which people are using okay and and i think we should incorporate uh, these in our curriculum also so that our student actually get hands on experience okay rather than just working on excel for rest of their life okay so uh, as far as the growth and uses are concerned so uh, india has a very high potential for the projected growth of of uh, of the cfd sector 40 to 50% right so uh, it is yet to come in a big way now uh, coming to the application of cfd so it has uh, application in a wide uh, domain wide range of domain right and uh, it is also interdisciplinary in nature it requires both software as well as hardware and then obviously there are uh, different type of problem from different domain now i am going to talk about a few of the problem where i have worked okay so uh, it is not limited to this so there are n number of other applications also i'm just pointing out few of them and i i'm quickly going through it so just to give you an idea like uh, in various diverse uh, fields how cfd can be used and it is being used okay so this is the application of uh, the convective drying of food material so we know that uh, in order to preserve the food uh, we dry it right so that we can store it for longer duration right so uh, be it banana or whatever it is potato right so there are so many food materials which are stored in a dried form right so one of the drying technique is basically the convective drying which is used in industry right so uh, now depending upon so what happens is that as so we pass uh, some hot air over the food product and what happens it it, it basically uh, take away the moisture from the uh, food material and Uh, by evaporation and the diffusion within the food element okay 
so so what happens when we pass the hot air over the food material so with time the its moisture content reduces right so basically we are drying it so now how much time it is taking uh, for this drying to take place okay so it basically somehow or the other governs the production as well as the cost of the final product right and what is the rate of this drying the rate at which it is drying it is basically affecting the quality of of the final product also right so there are n number of parameters here which can be controlled which should be controlled for different and and obviously their values are going to be different for different food materials right so what should be the velocity of air which is passing over the food material what should be its temperature what should be its relative humidity right what should be uh, yeah velocity in its flow rate okay so there are many parameters which will govern the production as well as the quality of food material excuse me sir yeah please so you just uh, told us about the uh, the conjugate drying so can you please tell me which parameter is the most important as far as drying is concerned there are a number of parameters as you, as you just uh, yes, stated yes. the velocity yes. of air the humidity uh, the yes. temperature of the bed etc so yes. which find which parameter did you find as the most important parameter see i guess the velocity is is one of the important parameter and also the temperature of of this uh, air hot air okay temperature of the air outside the dryer that is no 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 the temperature of the air which is passing over the food material inside See, there is a heating coil also yes. okay yes yes i got it oh. i got it okay thank you sir yeah so so by conducting this efd analysis you can actually find out the optimum value of these parameter and since you can visualize the results well so you can actually see uh, uh you can actually decide or you can actually basically uh, you will be able to see the results better in a better way and based on and you can analyze them and then you can come up with optimized parameters so uh, two parameters are uh, most important here as far as drying are concerned drying is concerned so one is the heat transfer coefficient another one is the moisture transfer coefficient okay so uh, so basically this is just a contour of of the heat transfer coefficient for different velocities right you can see here that as the velocity is increasing the uh, the heat transfer coefficient is increasing so for 0.5 meter per second the maximum value is 60 watt per meter square kelvin and for for 4 meter per second uh, speed it is 200 watt per meter square kelvin so it depends and and since this is a spatial variation so you can see how the convective coefficient varies so the top view uh, the top front part is basically the front part of the potato so basically this is for the potato similarly this is the moisture content for a uh, different velocity so you can see that as uh, as the uh, velocity is increasing so uh, the moisture content is uh, decreasing at a particular time within the food material so this kind of cfd analysis helps you in uh, in deciding the appropriate parameter or in limiting the time of the drying so it basically uh, helps you in increasing the production as well as reducing the cost another area of application of cfd is, is the steel industry right so uh, again this is a typical uh, very famous manufacturing process uh, the continuous casting right so i hope all of you are aware about it so basically we pour molten steel uh, from the top and then we get a solidified slab so which is a continuous process and during this uh, this from inlet to outlet basically there are different kind of cooling which takes place in the mold and then you have a secondary cooling also right so uh, which helps in uh, solidifying or solidification of the steel and eventually it basically completely solidifies solidifies and then we can uh, get the final product out of it a solidified slab right so now this process although it looks simple but it is actually very uh, complicated so uh, especially the uh, the mold of 
of the continuous casting. So it is considered as the heart of, uh, of the continuous casting process because uh, the amount of pooling which is taking place in the mold will govern whether this process is first of all successful or what is the quality of, and if it is successful, what is the quality of, uh, of the final product, okay? And how much length is required for this solidification to take place? Okay, so basically that will uh, decide also the size of, of the uh, unit. Or in other terms, it will also affect the amount of cooling which is taking place in the mold will also govern what is the casting speed, what, what should be the casting speed, at what speed this entire thing should go, move ahead, right? So that will basically determine the, the production of the steel. And you know that uh, production of steel is considered as one of the important parameters, how much steel is being produced, right? So it's a very critical parameter as far as economy is concerned, right? And so, so basically, so to, to increase the production and to improve the quality of steel, which is coming out of it, right? So it is basically affected significantly by the cooling, which is taking place mostly in the mold and also in the secondary cooling chain, right? So now how the cooling takes place in the mold, because we have some kind of uh, channel towards the outer side of mold through which water flows, okay? Uh, cold water flows and it takes away the heat from the mold. So since it is taking heat away from the mold, so some amount of heat gets transferred from molten metal to the mold, right? And in this process, the molten metal cools down. So you can see here that uh, towards the edge of the mold, some solidification is started, right? Why? Because the temperature has dropped below the melting temperature, right? So it starts solidifying. And because of this solidification only, uh, it supports the remaining amount of, of the molten metal. If this layer is not being formed or if it is not sufficient enough, so it will not be able to hold this molten metal, which is flowing down, downward, right? So what will happen? This molten metal will eventually leak from here and your entire plant will stop functioning, right? And as I said earlier, it also governs the casting speed also. Okay, so this cooling is very proper. Now, what should be the mass flow rate of this water? Okay, what should be the material of mold? What should be its thickness, right? So all these parameters can be analyzed or can be decided based on a simple CFD analysis. Although it's, it's not simple because it involves fluid flow, it involves turbulence, it involves other kind of stuff like magnetic field, etc. right? Yeah, so as far as this is concerned, this is just modeling the uh, the heat flux within within the uh, mold, which is a copper mold in this case, right? And in this simulation or in this analysis, this is an inverse uh, heat transfer problem where how much how much heat is coming to the mold from the molten metal is to be estimated. So. Uh, I'm not going to discuss this because this is more related to uh, inverse heat transfer. So this is the typical profile of, of the heat flux with respect to the distance from the top from the manuscript. Okay, so it, it is something like this. So towards the top, you have the maximum heat flux and towards the bottom, it decreases. Now, uh, now where the CFD comes majorly uh, into picture. So you can see here that uh, as this molten metal enters in this mold region, so you can see here, this is this is the molten metal. So it basically results in the recirculation, right? So there is a turbulence uh, fluid flow which is happening there of the molten metal, right? And it this turbulence flow field also governs the heat transfer coefficient, right? How much heat is going away from the molten metal to the mold, right? So ultimately it affects the cooling process and the solidification process. So you can see the effect of casting speed here, okay? So if your casting speed is too low, right? So what will happen? The solidification is very proper 
right within the mold itself the mold, molten metal is uh, getting solidified but what will happen with low casting speed your pro ultimate production is going to suffer right it is going to be lesser right so as far as uh, production engineer is concerned right they will expect to have more production or higher casting speed right so how much high it can be like what can be the maximum uh, uh, casting speed right so that needs to be fixed for different type of continuous casting process right uh, depending upon your uh, the quality of steel under process right depending upon the other parameters uh, operating parameters right so at higher casting speed you can see that this solidified portion is getting reduced okay but still it is good enough to hold the molten metal which is flowing inside okay otherwise what will happen the leakage will take place so you can base basically come up with a limit of the maximum casting speed right up uh, beyond which production engineer should not go otherwise the entire process will break down because of leakage or some other issues or there are quality issues also defects which comes during the solidification process right and in any cfd analysis obviously the validation is is is, is a very important part you need to validate all your cfd simulations otherwise it is meaningless okay so the next area is uh, where you can apply cfd uh, or which i am going to discuss here is the thermal protection so uh, i guess i am not uh, going to talk about very basic of of this thermal protection but it is basically uh, uh, let's say for example you have firefighters or the furnace operators working in industry right so they are actually exposed to high heat flux uh, environment right hazardous environment so if their clothing is is a normal clothing so what happens uh, it has been observed that the normal clothes which we wear most of them catch fire very easily so they are not fire resistant okay or fire retardant so uh, so what happens so in order to protect them in order to protect those especially the firefighters in order to protect the those uh, who protect others so it requires a special uh, type of clothing and equipment which are called the protective uh, equipment pp right so uh, so normal clothing won't work okay so again this is a physical phenomena where you have you may have you can have fire right and then you have some protective garment then you have some gap which always exists between your skin and clothing right uh, nobody wears uh, too tight uh, clothes right so there is always some amount of air gap which exists between skin and the clothes right? so so this is a physical problem right there is a fire right it can be a convective uh, heat source or a radiative heat source or a combination of both right so heat will basically propagate through protective garment then it will propagate through air gap and then it will reach to skin and when it reaches to skin and the skin temperature goes beyond let's say 44 degree at especially at some uh, some part of some layer which is usually the epidermis layer of this skin so the burning starts okay so skin burn starts so there are different type of burn first degree burn second degree burn uh i hope my slides are visible is it yes sir they are visible okay so i got some pop up uh, because of which uh, there was a doubt okay okay so now there are, there can be different type of uh, and not so this skin burn is uh, classified into various category like first degree burn second degree burn third degree burn right out of this first degree burn is very common right basically it affects only the upper layer of the skin which is the epidermis layer second degree burn and it 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 healing is possible naturally right even sun burn also falls in this category then the second degree burn uh, this epidermis layer and dermis layer are affected and uh, it takes some time for this healing to take place it can take weeks it can take months right and the third degree burn basically the the all three layers are usually affected right and it is the natural healing is not possible in case of third degree burn so 
what we do is we try to restrict the skin burn up to only second degree burn. Okay, because there the natural healing is possible. So, uh, so the protective performance of of the those special type of clothing is basically sometimes determined in terms of the second degree burn time. After how much time you will get second degree burn? Okay, so that is one of the performance parameter. Okay, and uh, this shows the uh, chances of survival with different. Uh, percentage of skin burn and with different age. So I'm not going to talk about all of them, all kind of uh, PP equipment that you can see here that it involves clothing, jacket, trousers, right, helmet, gloves, etc. So right now uh, I'm just focusing on the gloves, right, uh, because uh, the hands are considered to be one of the most frequently burn parts for firefighters and military uh, related applications or military related uh, uh, tasks. Okay, so um, so the primary function of this gloves is to protect the hand from burn, right? So it requires special type of uh, uh, fabric, right? So uh, now. Okay, so in this study, what was done is uh, we tried to develop some test method for Indian conditions. Right, so uh, for analyzing the protective performance of gloves, right? So the task was to develop an experimental setup to analyze the performance of gloves. Okay, for Indian conditions, I mean, Indian condition in the sense for specific to the Indian size, hand size. Okay, so even there is no international standard like this, but this study was focused on uh, for this particular hand size, which is the Indian hand size, 50 percentile. Now, as I said earlier, the objective was to develop the experimental setup, right? So even you can use the CFD analysis, even you can use the CFD analysis to help you with experimentation. Okay, so that is what is done here. In order to design the experimental setup, we have used CFD analysis. Okay, to decide various parameters, what should be the distance between the source and the hand, right? How much heat will reach to the hand, so all those things, right? Again, this is a typical phenomena. Again, so this is a heat transfer and flu flow phenomena because you have a heat source here and you will have some radiation uh, which, which, which will get transferred from this heat source to the hand and then you, you will obviously have natural convection. So basically this problem is involves natural convection as well as radiation. So again, there is a physical phenomena, right? And this physical phenomena can be represented in terms of mathematical equation, which is a coupled convection radiation model. So you can see con, uh, con continuity equation, you can see uh, the momentum equation in X, Y, and Z direction, and then you can see energy equation. So there are certain uh, terms here which are added to take into account the natural convection. So you, you can see here this Fy is basically the term which is added in the Y direction momentum equation to take into account the natural convection, right? So it can, uh, it can be basically come uh, based on uh, the Bosinesque approximation, right? So at least in this case, it was based on the Bosinesque approximation because uh, the temperature difference was not that significant. Okay. And in order to take into account the radiation heat transfer, uh, there is a, a source term is added in the energy equations. Okay. So this is the divergence of radiative heat flux, which is obtained by solving the radiative transfer equation, uh, which is mentioned here, right? Uh, so various terms have different meanings. I'm not going into it. So beta is basically the extension coefficient, kappa uh, is the absorption coefficient, right? Uh, sigma is the scattering coefficient, i is the intensity of radiation, and phi is the phase angle. Uh, uh, okay, so, uh, so, and g is basically the uh, irradiation. Okay, so which is a summation of all the intensity. So basically by solving this radiative transfer equation, 
we get the intensity of radiation and when we integrate it over the entire solid angle 0 to 4 pi so we get the irradiation and once we get the irradiation we can calculate the divergence of radiative heat flux substitute it in the original energy equation and solve this equation we can actually find out how much heat is getting transferred by radiation as well as convection comes close to the hand whether it is allowable or whether it is reaching to the target 8.4 or not. If not, you can actually change the distance between uh, the hand and the soul accordingly. Okay, so that provision can be, prov I mean, that facility can be provisioned in the experimental setup to change this. Okay, so these are uh, some of the results which you can see here with for different temperature of the heat source. So this is the level of uh, of the radiation heat flux which is received or the total heat flux which is received uh, throughout the hand. Okay, and this is the comparison with respect to experimental because you can see here that in experimental it takes more time to reach to the 8.4 or 8 because of the inertia of, of the measuring equipment and also the delay in the starting off of the equipment. Okay. Now, I'm not going to talk about this microclimate stuff, okay, because uh, it is going to take time, but just uh, see here that whenever someone is exposed to fire or any sort of heat, high heat conditions, so this, there always exists some air gap between your clothing and skin, right? And you know that air is considered as a good insulator, right? It has a very low thermal conductivity compared to other materials, most of the other materials. Right, so it offers a thermal resistance. So higher the air gap, higher is going to be the insulating property of the clothing. Okay, so, but whatever may be the heat air gap, some recirculation or the natural convection and the radiation takes place through the air gap and the heat reaches to the skin and it causes the skin burn, right? So now how this heat propagates through the clothing microclimate, which is basically the air gap between uh, fabric and the skin, right? So it can be modeled. So again, you can see here that this is the comparison of experimental versus numerical. So, so the top uh, figure in all all uh, all of these is basically the numerical uh, result showing the streamline, and bottom one is the uh, flow visualization study for different air gap and uh, for different time. So this is matching uh, quite close. Uh, with the uh, flow visualization studies. And then uh, further, the effect of body movement was also analyzed, right? So uh, you know that as, as you move, as you walk, so uh, the air gap between the clothing keep on changing, right? And it, it kind of changes in a, in a sinusoidal fashion on a, on a periodic manner, right? So this is what was simulated here for different frequencies, which is basically denoting how fast a person, how fast or how slow a person is moving. So, so all these things are possible. You can conduct uh, dynamic simulations also. So these are basically the dynamic simulations. So I hope you were able to see the video. Now, uh, the next area is, uh, next application, uh, just I wanted to highlight is the human thermal comfort, which is again one of the area which in which I work. So, uh, so I think most of us know what is thermal comfort, right? It is a condition of mind that expresses satisfaction with thermal environment and is assessed by subjective okay. evaluation as per RCA 55 standard, right? Yeah. So, so this thermal comfort is basically governed by six parameters six main parameters, right? Uh, the uh, temperature, humidity, mean radiant temperature, air velocity, activity, yeah. and clothing. So out of these, these four parameters, which is the temperature, mean radiant temperature, air velocity, and humidity are environmental parameters. So we have lesser control in these parameters, yeah. right? And these two parameters, which are the activity and clothing are generally classified as personal parameters which are affecting the thermal comfort. So if you are not feeling comfortable, or if you are feeling, let's say, hot, 
you can reduce your activity level and you may feel comfortable or if you are wearing heavy clothing you are feeling hot you just reduce the level of insulation cloth insulation you will feel better right similarly in a typical uh, winter day if you are feeling very cold just increase your activity level if you are simply sitting just start walking you will feel better you will increase your metabolic activity and that will in basically balance the heat okay and you will feel comfortable now first of all why comfort is why comfort matters because uh, it not only affects the individual who is being subjected to uh, different climatic conditions or discomfort but it also affects his or her efficiency work efficiency right the amount of mistake a person conducts it it all it is being affected by the environment in which he or she is staying or what is the overall thermal comfort of the subject okay so that is why uh, maintaining thermal comfort is one of the key parameters right uh, and uh, so uh, but since the evol- evolution of the air conditioning system now we have the control over these four parameters also and that is what we do now so uh, during summer also we wear uh, uh, coats tight right and still we try to maintain temperature around 17 degrees so that we feel comfortable okay so uh, thanks to the air conditioning system so uh, right so uh, so we can maintain uh, whatever temperature we want whatever humidity we want and we can still feel comfortable but the problem with this uh, this air conditioning system is that it consumes a lot of energy okay so uh, so it is found that uh, 30% of of the overall energy consumed by a city out of that 30% of it is basically consumed in buildings okay and why it is and major portion of this 30% goes to the air conditioning system okay so which is a problematic because ultimately it results in large energy consumption and also large ghg greenhouse gas emission okay so uh, so there are various methods to tackle this problem or to reduce the energy consumption one is that to reduce uh, or to basically increase the set point temperature so uh, probably you know that uh, the government has now suggested to use temperature around 24 25 for air conditioning system so why it is so because with each 1 degree rise in the set point temperature you save around 6 to 10% of the energy okay so basically if you are maintaining 25 instead of 17 uh, degree celsius so somehow you are uh, maintaining you are saving a lot of energy okay and so this is one part uh, deciding the set point temperature uh, judiciously another approach to reduce this is or to get the thermal comfort with least energy possible is to go for personalized cooling and heating system now this is where uh, this is what i am going to discuss now so one of the personal cooling strategy is basically the air ventilation clothing because uh, see clothing is clothing is uh, a thing which you always carry with you right so uh, whatever you do you are always wearing clothing right uh, so you cannot as far as air conditioning systems or fans are concerned you can always use it when you are inside the building right but when you are outside right so you cannot basically carry a uh, air conditioning system with you right but you always carry this uh, clothing with you right so the clothing microclimate which is the climate around your body and in between clothing and skin it it always moves with you so somehow you can cool that microclimate and you can still feel comfortable right irrespective whether you are sitting inside or whether you are walking outside okay so this is another advantage of personal cooling system or personal cooling clothing because it is a portable thing right so uh, this is one such study uh, such strategy uh, is the utilization of air ventilation clothing so basically uh, it it involves a fan within the clothing so uh, you can circulate 
the air around your body and then you feel comfortable because you basically somehow you are increasing the evaporative heat transfer coefficient as well as the convective heat transfer coefficient so you will it will result in more uh, dissipation of heat from the body and if you are able to dissipate more heat you will feel more comfortable because you will be able to maintain the heat balance of the body right and uh, so based, based on this study what we have found that this air ventilation clothing can be used up to uh, 32 degrees celsius and still people feel comfortable right so now we were earlier thinking or as per our generalized uh, thinking that 26 degrees celsius it is good for human to feel comfortable but just by using this air ventilation clothing which consumes less than 5 watts compared to 1000 watt or 750 watt per individual uh, with, with the help of uh, uh, this air, air, air con. Okay, so it consumes just five watt. So with five watt, you can feel comfortable even up to 32 degrees Celsius also. So right, it saves a hell lot of energy. And, and since it is a portable thing, you can always carry uh, this with you and you can use it outdoor only. Right, so uh, uh, yeah, so coming back to the uh, numerical modeling, so again, the CFD analysis can be used uh, along with other experimental facilities like thermal mannequin to decide the optimum parameter associated with the clothing, right? Where should we, where should we install fan? What should be the uh, air velocity or the mass flow rate of fan, right? Where we should provide opening, right? So all these answers, questions can be answered by analyzing this problem numerically and visualizing the result in a proper way, right? So uh, if you see here, uh, like this is the numerical model associated with the air ventilation clothing. You can see that how this air flows around your body and how the temperature varies and how, what is the heat flux at different body parts, okay? So since in this case, the fan was installed toward the lower back, so you can see that it basically impinges, the air impinges towards the lower body, uh, at the lower body segment, and it results in higher heat transfer coefficient uh, at that particular body segment, and then it reduces. So, so basically you can, uh, there are n number of possibilities, you can uh, analyze different location, different orientation, different flow rates, right, so, so many other things by conducting the numerical analysis. And then there are a few uh, other industrial application of the slossing phenomena of, of the CFD analysis. One is one of them is the uh, slossing phenomena. So, uh, which is uh, which is observed in, uh, in trucks, cargo ships, right? And rockets. And also in stationary storage systems when there is a seismic activity. Right, so, uh, so you can actually analyze the forces and the impact of fluid causes in the container wall. Right, similarly, uh, there are others. So basically, these are multi phase uh, analysis. And then, uh, as I said earlier, aerodynamic is another area where uh, the CFD analysis is used significantly. Right. So uh, these are various uh, configurations used in in the in the aircraft aileron and spoiler, right? Uh, in order to increase or in in order to basically change the amount of drag uh, at different as per the requirement. Okay. Then there are uh, again uh, application in in turbo machinery, right, for different uh, components, for turbines, for pumps, right, all these places, uh, the CFD analysis can be uh, conducted. Then obviously in the environment science also, uh, how the pollutants uh, move from one location to another in, in a typical street canyon, how uh, this dispersion takes place, what is the air quality inside this are inside the street, 
right? So all these questions can be answered with the help of CFD analysis. So there are uh, n number of applications involving heat exchanger, uh, IC engine, right? So uh, so wide domain. Okay, so uh, so these these are the applications which I just wanted to highlight. So is there any question uh, here up to up to now? Participants may ask questions. And if it is too fast, so that also you just let me know. Anybody having any question? Sir, uh, yeah, very good afternoon, sir. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Sir, one question is there that uh, you have told me the application of the CFD in food industry, in food drying process, that is very, very useful. And uh, uh, so, uh, because the food it uh, contains uh, some hydro, hydroscopic type water. Right? So, what about, uh, sir, uh, that? Uh, how we can uh, reduce the hydroscopic water you know, during your drying process because you told uh, you uh, uh, sh uh, have shown a, a, a yeah. graph in which a first in first uh, five hours uh, drying process is linearly variable and next five hours uh, it is i think a parabolic shape and in the last five hours definitely uh, the drying process will be very very slow means it, take, it will take time but what about the hydrogen water uh, how we, uh, this can be removed uh, fastly, sir? Is there any uh, research work? Uh, Thank you. So, uh, I, I, what you meant, hydroscopic? Yes, sir. sir. Basically, the water which uh, which uh, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, occurs on the film uh, in the form of the film. Uh, on the top of the any material, yes, and the, uh, so it's basically high uh, uh, type water. So uh, in sand, uh, it does not have uh, this type of water. It's basically basically this uh, 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 property is related with the civil engineering point of view. But uh, since uh, you are talking about the food, so food is also containing this type of water. Sir. It's a film type water. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so you are saying basically that uh, <clears throat> apart from this moisture which is uh, contained within the food material, there is a layer of water around it, yes, surrounding sir. the uh, yes, surface, sir. Yes, sir. around the surface of the object. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I don't know, means I have not come across uh, any study like that uh, as far as food is concerned. Okay, sir. So probably, but... Uh, but it is possible if 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 you want to do CFD analysis of it, you can do it. Okay, so that is possible. But as far as I am concerned, I have not come across any study. Although uh, my literature in this uh, particular domain is not uh, very wide. Okay, sir. So, uh, Khan sir, actually the the, the process of drying the food items, it is basically a combined process of heat pass, heat transfer, and mass transfer. Yes, sir. So the water which is available at the surface of the uh, the the food items yeah. that is being picked up by the air which is uh, which is drying the food item. No, so it no, is actually the generally this is a different type sir. That is surface water. You are talking about the, the, you know, Dr. Joshi is talking about Joshi, That is yes, the surface sir. water. But uh, some water is contained by the uh, uh, material itself, and uh, it can't be removed easily. So for that I am talking about. Uh -huh. Correct, correct. Okay, you are talking about the moisture which is within the uh, food. Yes, sir, sir, within the food. No, within the food. So, uh, so this particular uh, example which I showed, it is basically like that. So, see what happens. The moisture which is available inside the. Food, no, moisture which, yeah, moisture which is available inside the food is basically goes to the surface of of the food. By diffusion process and then yes. evaporation takes place. Absolutely, sir. Okay, Absolutely sir. Thank, you. thank you very much. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So, probably that is why there is a delay. 
and uh, that is why uh, it's not linear always yes sir yes sir okay so any other uh, concern okay so if there is no further concern so uh, let's go to the last section of of the talk which is how to do uh, the cfd analysis or what is the uh, generalized framework associated with any cfd analysis okay so uh, so these are a few of of the uh, important steps associated with cfd analysis so uh, first is to define the problem and then there are pre processing and uh, processing and then post processing so probably uh, a few of them are already uh, discussed during this uh, program right so let me just quickly go through it and probably i will skip a uh, part of a few parts like digitization where finite volume i guess it is already discussed right and also uh, pre processing techniques are also discussed i guess so uh, uh, it I means people might have covered all those aspects so let me just go through uh, them quickly and please feel free to interrupt me and ask questions if if there is any okay because uh, i may go through uh, this uh, quickly okay so so these are the important step associated with any cfd analysis so the first one is the problem definition so uh, before actually starting uh, with any cfd simulation uh, we should understand the problem in hand first okay so what kind of problem we are uh, going to solve because until unless the problem is not very clear so what will happen uh, just just a second ha huh? ah, okay so uh, until unless this problem is not clear so you will not as i said earlier cfd is all about representing a physical phenomena right in uh, which are taking place in your problem in terms of mathematical equation right so if the phenomena is not clear to you so you will not be able to model it properly or you will not be able to represent it in terms of mathematical equation there will be lot of error associated with that also so understanding the problem and defining the problem is, is a very critical and the first step for any cfd analysis so let's talk about one of one one such simple problem of laminar flow through a pipe okay so this is our problem physical problem that there is a fluid which is flowing through uh, and the fluid is air right and it is flowing through a pipe of diameter uh, 20 uh, 2 cm and length 3 m right and we should also if we want to define the uh, problem properly we should know what, what which fluid is this and with what is the mass flow rate of this fluid so so all these things are given that the velocity is 0.1 meter per second and the fluid is air right so since you know the fluid you know its uh, so you know its density and viscosity so you can actually find out the renold number okay and obviously since i have already told that this is a laminar flow so you will get renold number which is lower than 2000 probably right so it means it's a laminar flow problem so this is you have defined the problem uh, like this so you should know each individual input parameter and the problems well right now now the second uh, important thing is uh, in the pre processing is the geometry modeling so first of all we should model this geometry right so this was our problem in hand right so now the task is to actually develop a geometric model of it okay so now you can actually create a three dimensional uh, pipe okay or alternatively you can just make a 2d symmetric axisymmetric pipe also right so there comes uh, means there comes the role of human mind or your understanding of the basic fluid flow or fluid mechanics right so since we know that uh, for a pipe flow a laminar pipe flow so it is actually 
an axisymmetric problem where say i hope you are able to see this black rectangle right so if you revolve it 360 degree so everywhere you will get the same velocity field right and the objective in this case is to analyze fluid flow or the flow field right so it is going to be same throughout if you rotate it or revolve it 360 degrees also so this is a 2d axisymmetric problem right so instead of making it a 3d model you can actually make it a 2d axisymmetric problem right so now what is the advantage advantage is uh, manifold first of all it simplifies the geometry itself and now since since geometry is very simple and uh, straightforward so it reduces the computational time also because now you will have a lesser number of nodes okay so that we will talk about later when we discuss about the uh, the uh, the meshing okay that by switching from three dimensional uh, analysis to two dimensional axisymmetric analysis it reduces the computational efforts so that is only possible if you know the physics or the fundamental of of your subject well right you you will be able to simplify uh, the problems in hand most of the time not always now the second thing is uh, the governing equation now since we know that there are certain laws of mechanics right which govern the fluid flow and heat transfer process so in this case since it's a laminar flow problem only and it does not involve heat transfer so these two law of mechanics like conservation of mass and conservation of linear momentum are sufficient to define this problem in terms of mathematical equation right so you know the continuity equation right uh, so or the continuity theorem or the conservation of uh, mass theorem so it says that a rate of increase of mass within the control volume is equal to net mass influx or for steady state net mass influx or reflux is zero right so by doing this uh, simple conservation of mass for an element you can actually come up with the differential form and the vector form of of the continuity equation right so the second thing is the momentum equation or which can be converted into navier stokes equation also so which are based on the newton second law of motion or conservation of linear momentum it says that the summation of force in a particular direction is equal to rate of change of momentum right so and these forces the summation of forces in a particular direction x can be obtained with the help of again the same element uh, concept right uh, in terms of stresses so here comes the cauchy's equation of motion right and this cauchy's equation of motion is a generalized form of momentum equation which is uh, valid for uh, solids as well as fluids now as far as fluids are concerned so we employs certain hypothesis called the stokes hypothesis by assuming that the fluid is a newtonian fluid you can you can uh, represent these viscous stresses in terms of velocity or their gradient right and by doing so uh, the entire equation gets converted into uh, in the form of velocity right so it is because our primary parameter in case of fluid flow analysis is velocity not the stress right so the objective is to convert this equation in terms of velocity or velocity components so that is that can be done with the help of stokes hypothesis right so you can see here that stresses are represented in terms of velocity and by doing so you get uh, uh, this momentum equation or the navier stokes equation in x y and z direction right and if you neglect the viscous term here so you get the euler's equation for inviscid flow similarly uh, the energy equation uh, which is uh, nothing but the conservation of uh, energy can also be obtained uh, so governing equation for this can also be obtained from the first law of thermodynamics which uh, basically gives you internal energy terms heat transfer terms and work done term so heat transfer terms again you can take an element and uh, balance the heat uh, in in various direction and you you get basically this change in the q with respect to time right so this is what comes so basically it's nothing but conduction heat transfer 
across this element fluid element then work done term is nothing but the rate of work is equal to force into velocity so uh, so basically you multiply the each force with corresponding uh, corresponding velocity and you get uh, dw by dt which is a work done term and it involves both surface forces as well as the body forces body force may involve gravitational force also and then you have this internal energy term which is nothing but uh, the summation of internal and kinetic energy right and from this you get the total energy equation which involves thermal and mechanical uh, energy uh, terms and since uh, as far as energy equation is concerned it is, it is it is the thermal part of it so it can be obtained by total minus mechanical so you will get thermal energy equation right so sorry yeah so mechanical energy equation can be obtained from this uh, cauchy's equation of motion by multiplying it with respective velocity component u v and w okay so this is mechanical energy equation when it is uh, uh, subtracted from the total energy equation you get the thermal energy equation okay and apply the because here you again have some stress terms so employ the stokes hypothesis and the continuity <coughs> equation and substitute it here you get the uh, the uh, simplified form of of the energy equation okay okay so in summary this is these are the governing equation conservation of mass conservation of linear momentum and conservation of energy right so with this you can actually represent any physical phenomena in terms of mathematical equation obviously now depending upon the problem in hand these equation can change okay say for example if you have a natural convection also okay so you need to modify this momentum equation accordingly okay a body force term associated with density gradient will come into this momentum equation similarly if radiation is also taking place you need to modify this energy equation by involving one force term which which it is nothing but the divergence of radiative heat flux as i discussed earlier right so depending upon the problem in hand uh, these equation will get modified right you need to modify it okay to so that it these equations represent uh, the physical phenomena in the problem which you are trying to solve well okay then uh, comes the next part which is the meshing so uh, what we do in meshing is that we divide the entire computational domain so basically this is the axisymmetric domain we were talking about so what we do here is we basically divide the entire domain into small small elements okay or cells okay so now uh now uh, why we do so because see these equations are valid throughout the domain okay so it is valid everywhere now you cannot actually solve these equations let's say you have uh, you have a three one continuity equation three momentum equation one energy equation so overall five equations right so if you have uh, this much domain right so you cannot actually solve this at infinite number of points right so what i'm trying to say here is that the cfd analysis is not a continuous analysis it is actually a discrete analysis it means that instead of solving the governing equation or instead of solving flow and temperature distribution at throughout the domain in a continuous fashion in cfd analysis we actually solve it in a discrete manner right we solve it at different points so that is why we need certain nodes where we solve these governing equations okay so and that is why we go for meshing we divide the entire domain into small small cells okay or element and then in each element we solve this uh, or each node we solve this uh, five equation now so this is for the laminar flow but 
let's say if you are talking about turbulent flow and if you are using a two equation turbulence model so you will have two additional equations so equation will become seven okay so so it is not possible to solve it at each point in a continuous fashion so we go for discrete uh, solution of these partial differential equation so now the way we divide uh, how we are dividing this entire computational domain into different cells or elements can be different right depending upon that you can have different type of machine right so one simple uh, way is to use the quadrilateral cell okay uh, so it is defined here so you can see here that the edges the nodes or uh, the points at the edge of this cell are called nodes right and the uh, the line which connects these two nodes is called face and the point which is at the center of this cell is called cell center okay so now different uh, software uh, are available for meshing right and they uh, employ different techniques for uh, meshing right so few of the software adopt the blocking technique for generating the uh, mesh in the computational domain right so you can see here that these are this is a very simple mesh right which is uniform kind of uniform element you have everywhere so this type of mesh is called the structural mesh and this kind of element rectangular element is called the quadrilateral element so this is a two dimensional element right so similarly you can have a, a triangular element also for a two dimensional problem and for three dimensional problem you can have tetrahedron hexahedron prism and pyramid kind of cell okay so and you can also have an structured mesh so you can see here that this is a structured mesh okay well defined uh, cell whereas this is unstructured mesh okay so which involves all all these kind of elements right in an unstructured fashion so this is called the unstructured mesh this is called the structured mesh now when we use the structured mesh and when we use for the unstructured mesh so structured mesh is generally used for simple problems right uh, because for if if the problem is not very complicated it is possible to go for structured meshing otherwise it is difficult to uh, adopt the structured mesh because you know you can still go for structured mesh but there are various issues associated with aspect ratio and all which will come into picture so if the problems are very complicated like you can see here this is a complicated problem so you can adopt the unstructured mesh in this case okay Yeah. now why we go for a structured mesh for a complicated geometry because as i said earlier you can go for structured mesh also but the quality of element will be so low that it will affect your accuracy badly okay so ultimately you will end up getting bad results okay so sometimes for very complicated geometry structured mesh will result in lesser accuracy compared to unstructured mesh so that is why we go for unstructured mesh mostly uh, when we are dealing with uh, complicated geometry right and as i as i was pointing out earlier there are uh, various softwares available to generate mesh from for the uh, geometric for any geometry model okay and uh, one more point related to meshing which is uh, important to understand is that uh, the uh, say both both of these left and right is basically the structured mesh okay now but the difference here is that this mesh the size of the cell is uniform everywhere from top to bottom from left to right okay the size of element is uniform across the domain whereas if you see this right hand side figure you you can see that the size of element is uh, or the cell is decreasing as you are moving from left to right similarly size of element is decreasing as you are moving from bottom to top okay so 
this kind of mesh is again a structured mesh but it is a non uniform mesh so this is a structured uniform mesh this is a structured non uniform mesh now the point is why we bother about non uniform mesh right or why uh, why we go for this non uniform mesh because if you understand the fluid mechanics well so you should know that uh, that the gradient of velocity right is is significant at the wall right there is a significant gradient of velocity which exists at the wall right and the drag force okay uh, or the skin friction coefficient cf is basically what tau divided by half rho u u infinity square right so now tau w is what u do u by do y what tau means uh, the wall shear stress is mu do u by do y at y is equal to 0 or at wall right so if you want to find out the drag or the skin friction coefficient properly which is most of the time the ultimate aim of any drag analysis or any aerodynamic analysis is to find out the drag value accurately now what is the drag it depends on the gradient of velocity at the ball right so it is if you want to capture or if you want to find out the drag force properly you should actually be able to find out the gradient of velocity which is do u by do y at y is equal to 0 properly right and in order to capture this gradient properly you should have sufficient number of cells close to the wall okay your mesh should be very fine near the wall okay so let's say this is your wall right so if you want to have very fine mesh near the wall right so you can have two approaches either you make this kind of mesh where mesh is fine near the wall and pores are away from the wall or you make the fine mesh through of the domain so what will happen so in this case where you are keeping the fine mesh near the wall and uniform it making it uniform throughout the domain what it will end up you will end up with large number of cells or large number of nodes and if you remember at each node you are solving five equations or if you are only interested in fluid flow you are solving four equation at each node okay so in this case you may have 10 million points so 10 million nodes 10 million multiplied by 4 number of equations means 40 million so you will have to solve 40 million equation in this case whereas in this case since you are keeping the mesh fine only near the wall right and pores are away from the wall so instead of 10 million you may end up with just 2 million uh uh nodes just a typical example i am giving you okay 2 million nodes multiplied by four equation 8 million so here you had to solve 40 million equation here you have to solve just 8 million equation right so five times lower so what 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 will happen your computational resource and computational time required for this analysis will reduce significantly if not five times at least it will reduce three time or four time right so that is the greatest advantage or the benefit when we go for non uniform mesh compared to uniform meshing okay so that is why this is very much preferred uh in case of most of the fluid flow and heat transfer analysis similarly in the heat transfer also we go for non uniform mesh because in most of the heat transfer analysis the objective is to find out the heat transfer coefficient okay and you know that heat transfer coefficient is related to but so you can obtain heat transfer related uh, coefficient from the gradient of temperature dot e by dou y at at the wall again the same same fundamental uh, will come here instead of velocity gradient here we are talking about temperature gradient so gradients of velocity and temperature near the wall are the most important parameter in most of the fluid flow and heat transfer analysis and in order to capture it with least possible computational resource and time we go for non uniform mesh okay and if the problem involves turbulent fluid flow 
then there comes another parameter which is the y plus okay uh, we adopt uh, this is the turbulent velocity profile so in order to capture uh, the velocity near the wall we go for various turbulence model two equation models uh, one equation model and so on right uh, and for each model there is a different requirement as far as y plus is concerned okay there are few software nowadays which also talk about y star instead of y plus okay so but that is another subject so y plus uh, is a non dimensional uh, kind of an all number okay probably you might have studied this in in the fluid mechanics and uh, yeah so so we so we were talking about meshing now uh, now whether we should go for 2 million mesh or 1 million or 4 million how to decide it okay so because it is going to ultimately affect your accuracy of the results so for that it is very important to conduct a grid independent study for any cfd analysis right so you basically what we do here is uh, in in a in a grid independent study is that we increase the number of nodes gradually right say from here 7 lakh to 10 lakh then 10 lakh to 12 lakh and 12 lakh to 14 lakh it, the number of nodes are increased so you can see that as you are increasing it from 7 lakh to 10 lakh there is a significant change which is taking place in the heat flux but when you are increasing it from 10 to 12 per uh, 12 lakh so the changes are basically uh, reducing and it reduces further and there is no change uh, in between this right so then you can say that now your results are insensitive or very less sensitive to the change in the grid size okay so then you can say that after this particular number of nodes my solution become grid independent or it is the number of nodes are, are not going to affect my solution more after this this number of nodes so that is what we call it as grid independent solution similarly if if the problem is a, a transient problem or an unstudied problem which involves time also then you need to conduct time step independent study as well okay so uh, yeah and for transient problem there is another uh, very important uh, parameter called uh, the current current number which comes into picture so uh, which basically uh, helps in stabilizing the solution and its accuracy right so uh, this is the current number which is uh, plays an important role in the advection term so it is defined as uh, the u delta t by delta x where u is the it can be any dependent variable let's say velocity and delta t is the time step size and delta t delta x is the uh, grid size or the distance between two nodes okay so uh, yeah this this is your delta x okay now uh, uh if so so there should be uh, there is a limit of this current number uh which should be taken into consideration while uh, solving any unstudied problem or transient problem <clears throat> so basically this current number is uh, if you see here it is u multiplied by delta t so it is nothing but the distance right velocity multiplied by time so it is the distance distance a fluid particle is going to travel in delta t amount of time okay so let's say uh, in a delta t amount of time this particle has traveled all the way to from here to here right so this is the distance it has traveled okay so that is the upper part and this delta x is basically the distance between two nodes right this distance so for this particular problem with a particular value of delta x and delta t this particle has actually traveled two times of the delta x okay it means your current number is around 2 or more than 2 okay so current number is basically denoting how fast a particle is moving or how many cells a particle is crossing if current number is 2 means it is crossing two delta x distance within delta t time okay so you can see it from here so uh these are the two examples so in this case the the u value is is higher right so this car is traveling at a higher speed so 
if you consider replace this car by a fluid particle and keep a fixed distance of delta x let's say from here to here right so it means this case your coherent number is more because this car is traveling at a higher speed or this particle is traveling at a higher speed and it will will cross more distance in a given amount of time delta t okay so coherent number for this problem is higher compared to coherent number of this problem now what happens is if your coherent number is higher or if your car speed is very high okay so you just blink your eye okay just let's say you are uh, facing towards a road right and only a portion of road is visible to you right uh, left side also there are row of houses right side also there are rows of houses and you can only see a part of the road okay and let's say you are i mean you are blinking your eyes okay and the duration or the uh, the time duration between two blinks is let's say delta t okay so if you are blinking your eyes uh, in a delta t amount of time okay and if there is a car which is passing through this road if the car speed is too large okay so it is possible that the moment you blink your eyes the car will disappear right you will not be able to see it okay so so that is exactly what happens in case of cfd analysis also right if the particle speed is large if the fluid is flowing at a higher speed so what will happen the numerical solution or the algorithms will get confused whether there was any particle or not because because within delta t amount of time this particle has actually crossed many uh, control volumes or many uh cell okay so so the solution will uh, will be confused the algorithms will uh, become confused and this your solution will diverge means i am trying to explain it in a very layman's term okay so that uh, things become clear okay so so that is what exactly happens so so in order to ensure that there is no such divergence taking place or there is no such confusion or there is no such uh thing is happening like uh, a particle is crossing so many uh, cells is in a given delta t time so what we do is we try to control the value of coherent number how by maintaining the delta t value appro appropriate so if my fluid speed is very large what i will do i will increase my delta i will decrease my delta t accordingly so that particles are not traveling so many number of cell okay or alternatively for a given speed if i am i have to ensure that things are not getting diverged i will set my value of delta x and delta t both accordingly if my mesh is fine cell size is small i will keep my delta t also as small right so that is that way we try to control this very important parameter called the coherent number in order to stabilize our solution i hope uh, it's clear i tried to explain it, it in a very simplified layman's term yes sir it is clear okay so uh, please let me know if i have more time uh, or i have actually crossed yes sir i mean sorry please sir yes sir i think i have crossed i have taken yes, more time yes, also yes sir <laughs> but it is so interesting sir it it needs one more lecture i think <laughs> no it's so really i'll just quickly go through it i'll just quickly go through it can can we yes, have 5 yes, minutes yes sir 5 5 minutes so then people can ask questions after that okay so the next uh, important part is the discretization so i'm not going to talk about it uh, as i said earlier we are uh, we divide the entire computational domain uh, into number of uh, elements or cell and at each node we solve it so the the partial differential equations needs to be converted into set of linear algebraic equations which are valid at each node okay and then only we can solve it so this is what is done in the discretization and i think there are methods like finite volume finite difference one of the technique is i think already discussed which is the finite volume method so i i hope uh, uh, there is no need to discuss it so i'll skip that part 
okay so the next thing is the boundary conditions and initial condition right so just uh, briefly so if you have a one dimensional heat conduction problem right so you need uh, you can integrate it you can get two constants so in order to get the value of c1 and c2 you need two boundary conditions so for a two dimensional problem uh, you need two boundary conditions but in this case it is unstudy also so one initial condition and two boundary conditions are required because it is second order in space and first order in time so one condition in time two condition in space so two boundary condition one initial condition right so in order to get solve these partial differential equation we we anyway require boundary conditions so so for any uh, cfd analysis it is uh, imperative to give initial condition and specify initial condition and boundary condition now uh, you can have different type of initial con uh, inlet conditions uh, boundary conditions like inlet condition outlet conditions wall conditions heat flux condition temperature conditions etc right and all of us know different type of boundary conditions which we have bresslet newman robin conditions mixed conditions right and then comes the solution so once we have the set of algebraic equations we use the iterative uh, methods and different algorithms to to solve these equation and obtain the value of uh, t1 t2 t3 and so on okay so that we get the temperature at each node and that way we can actually find out temperature distribution throughout the domain right so now again you can have explicit and implicit approach uh, to solve it and uh, in order to uh, get this uh, solve these diffusive terms we have the schemes like upwind scheme which uh, takes into account the flow field uh, just in the previous up, upwind side okay and uh, yeah so this is an iterative procedure and in order to uh, ensure the stability of the solution we basically rely on something called relaxation factor okay so this relaxation factor can be under relaxation and over relaxation and if your solution is very much diverging so you can so in order to stabilize the iterative procedure you can actually provide the value of relaxation factor less than 1 0 to 1 so that is called the under relaxation and if your if your problem is simple enough right so you need to uh, uh, when uh, so there is no convergence issue so in order to speed up the iterative procedure you can actually uh, give the value of relaxation factor more than 1 also if it is not very unstable uh, situation so it will end up you will end up getting the result at a lower Uh, time or computational uh, resource now uh, then you have these uh, now whatever we have discussed so the overall framework so for that we have uh, different approaches right uh, either we can use commercial software or we can develop our own computer uh, computer program uh, to do this kind of cfd analysis uh, since uh, the writing code and bugging debugging thing is, is time taking and strain is process so uh, people have come up with lot of commercial softwares even nowadays we have free uh, source open uh, like open form and all which can be used uh, which are free of cost available right and uh, and it has good flexibility also but over and above uh, just one disclaimer that uh, you in order to do any cfd analysis we should understand our problem well we should have a good knowledge of fundamental subjects like fluid mechanics heat transfer and all we should also have good understanding of the theory of computational fluid dynamics and then only uh, uh, we should go for any software or any other thing because uh, these are just software you give any input you will get some output right so uh you know garbage in garbage out so uh, so so you should understand your problem well you should be able to uh, represent your physical phenomena into in terms of uh, mathematical equation well and then you should uh, know which algorithm to use right all those things and also there are n number of things which needs to be taken into account like uh verification validation of the result grid independence time independence current number and so on okay so i will not uh, go to this turbulence uh, flow now what about the qsr is 
just i will talk about uh, the validation part so it is very critical uh, to have uh, to analyze see whatever you provide input you will get some output now whether this output is reliable or not so it is very important to check so and this requires comparison of your model result with the experimental result so you cannot straight away neglect that i won't do experiments but i will only do the numerical analysis so that that is not going to work because ultimately whatever numerical your results you are getting you need to actually prove that these results are correct for that you need help of the experimental results right and that is what we do in this validation part so it should actually uh, you should actually validate your numerical result with the either if analytical solutions are available you should do uh the validation with analytical solution if not then you should conduct your own experiments or you should go for the experimental results available in the literature right but this validation is is must for any cfd analysis be it for any numerical analysis be it cfd analysis or be it fea analysis right okay thank you so uh if you have any question please feel free to ask Uh, I'm not able to uh, hear properly. So, is there any question? So, can you explain the implicit and explicit approaches? Okay. That is what uh, Dr. Devedi sir is asking. Okay. Yeah. See, suppose. Uh, suppose we have a, a generalized transport equation like this uh, right so it can be continuity it can be momentum it can be energy equation right so uh, in this case what we do is we convert this partial differential equation into algebraic equation now when it involves time so this is basically nothing but a time tau is basically time so this transient term this rho uh, do phi by do tau can be discretized like this okay uh, it, it's a backward differentiation uh, phi p at a particular point okay point under interest point of the interest like self center right so at time tau plus del tau which is uh, the current time step minus the phi p at the previous time step divided by delta t right so since this phi p at the previous time step is known we can actually calculate phi p at the current time step which is tau plus del tau right so this is about the transient term now coming to this this term which is uh, the, uh, the this divergence of uh, phi so you can see here that phi e now again e or p is written just uh, for upwind scheme like in which direction is fluid is flowing whether it is flowing in Uh, from left to right or right to left so you can ignore this p e or p right only one is valid now now which so the value of this phi at a point p at which time step whether you are talking about time step previous time step or at the current time step now depending upon which time step you are taking uh, or at which time step you are taking this phi e you can actually use explicit method or implicit method so if you are going for explicit method you are utilizing this value phi e at the previous time step tau okay so it means this value and this values are already known because it is at term time tau right which is the previous time step so it is by default known in the current time step tau plus delta tau so this approach where you are using uh, the the phi value or the value of the unknown parameter from the previous time step tau is called the explicit method explicit. whereas in the fully implicit method we use this as uh, these values are at tau plus delta tau delta tau right so both are at the current time step so these two values are also unknown along with this so this is the implicit method so implicit. obviously you have more number of unknown in this case so it requires the iterative procedure otherwise 
if you are going for explicit method so it means this value is also at the previous time step tau this is also at tau this is also at tau so all are at tau so only one is unknown at the current time step tau plus delta tau right so it is simple you can actually because all other things are known only one is unknown so you can simply get the value of pi p at the current time step but when you go for the implicit method these all are unknown so you will have to use Uh, algorithms like triangular matrix algorithm and so on, along with iterative procedure, to get this value of phi at different nodes in the current time step. Yes, got it, sir. Thank you. So, participants, do you have any questions? Uh, sir, can we have a graph uh, from uh, through NCS only? Can we get the graphs? Yes. Any result if you want. Yes, you can. You can, but uh, the quality uh, may not be that appropriate. Okay, but you can get it. So uh, I can get this kind of graph from NCS also, but uh, with. Doing all these things like uh, may not be uh, possible. I mean, it it doesn't look more professional. Otherwise, it's possible. What are you talking about? Chairman. Oh, please. Okay. Any other? Uh, so uh thank you very much sir sir you explain the fundamentals of computational fluid dynamics and its applications in food industries uh, steel industries thermal protection human thermal comfort automobile turbo machines etc etc and also the steps involved in applying safety with a with the help of a few problems in a very simpler yet very effective manner and i hope every participant must have been benefited immensely by your systematic presentation sir i on behalf of the entire organizing team of this uh, program and on behalf of the entire technocrats family would like to thank you for accepting our invitation and taking part in this program so we all are fortunate <coughs> enough to hear from you on this occasion and we would like to invite you in future as well for such programs i again would like to express our sincere thanks and gratitude to you for sparing your precious time on this occasion thank you sir yeah thanks indeed for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you very much sir thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I leave now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Once again, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It was really very interactive session, sir. Very informative. Thank you, sir. Thank you a lot, sir. Okay, Dr. Diviji and Dr. Joshi ji, thank you very much, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Nice presentation. Thank you so much. Knowledge will for presentation also, Dr. Joshi. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Thank you, sir. It was really very, very nice interaction. and uh, very good thanks. support from all of no, no, thank you, you very much party friends also i am getting an opportunity to attend such type of program it's yes, because sir, of you thank you very much we are honored sir we are honored this thank you sir was really great you had a okay <laughs> mathematical skill was excellent sir okay thank you sir okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you.